What is up, YouTube? Welcome in to another edition of Bucky and BK, live on Texas Sports Unfiltered and on the free Texas Sports Unfiltered app. Today is Thursday, April 11th, 2024, and the Buck and I are with you for the next two hours on today's show. An indefinite suspension for the Texas football program, plus another loss for Longhorn Baseball. We'll talk some Masters, a delayed start this morning at Augusta. I'm going to ask the Buck what he would give up for the chance to play in the most coveted tournament in all of golf. We've got the latest Mel Kuyper Jr. mock draft, an update on the crazy Shohei Otani gambling situation, of course, another classic TBT video, and a lot more to get into over the next couple of hours on a Buck Off Thursday. What's going on this morning, Buck? It is a beautiful morning here in, uh, of course, Dripping Springs. This tiny little hamlet here. It's it's gorgeous out. You know, the sun is shining. You know, we had some rain, obviously, uh, the day before yesterday. Not much yesterday. Lots of wind yesterday. Tons of wind. Very windy. But the weather was warm enough, so it dried it out. This place dries out pretty quick. You can rain all you want to, but around here, you give it about 24 hours, and it's going to be dry the next day if you don't get any more rain on top of it. But much needed rain. Beautiful day today, you know, getting ready to go into a master's weekend. So I'm excited. I'm I'm this is it. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, nap time for me, brother. Four straight days of naps. Yeah, four. There's doubly a nap in each and one of those. As long as the mattress is on, as I said, if I can hear Jim Nance's voice, I'm falling asleep. There you go. Yeah, it's a good napping weekend. Oh, for sure. It is. Sure. As our guy Ruse says, please smash the like button. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. And please share this video to friends and family. Of course, Texas Sports Unfiltered live all day long, talking the biggest stories on the 40 acres and all throughout the wide world of sports. So the Masters was supposed to start at 8 Eastern time, so 7 Central. But they announced this yesterday due to inclement weather in the Augusta, Georgia area. They pushed back the start of the first round till 1030 Eastern time. So once again, 930 Central time. And so nobody called on me. Nobody asked me for a forecast. How about well, that? Nobody that needs to good. call on you. Your job as a quote unquote meteorologist is to just give the people the forecast. Right. Like I don't I don't call Chicago every night and say, Hey, can you go on the news and give us the weather? No, she just gives us the weather. So your job, if you're trying to be a professional weather guesser, like I know you are, you just have to bring the news to the people every day. Yeah, it's it's tough for me. That that Atlanta, you know, that that part of the country's weather is a little little difficult for me. So, you know, because I, I'm I'm hoping that it doesn't happen. So my 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 vibes aren't quite the same when I'm you know, what I'm feeling and what is supposed to happen. You know, I, I thought they would overnight get some rain. I thought truly they were going to get drenched out this morning. And it looks like they've kind of dodged it. But now that they've made the decision on on delaying it a little bit, I mean, as long as the guys know, you know, they've, they've got now they've just changed their schedule. They just move right along. And if it doesn't rain, that's good. I mean, so you're just two more hours, two and a half hours. That's all. No big deal. They've done it before. You know, some of those young guys, you know, they get used to this kind of stuff. Old dude like Tiger Woods is thinking, damn, do I, am I only going to get nine in? I'm playing at like four o'clock today. Do I get nine in? And then I have to play 27 the next day. That's not cool for him. Yeah, better to err on the side of caution, right? You don't yeah. want to keep starting and stopping during no. any golf tournament, but especially a tournament as big as the Masters. So, yeah, the good news is no rain in the forecast tomorrow through Sunday. So right. it feels like today is the only day that's going to be affected by the weather. And hopefully, uh, yeah, they don't get much rain out there at Augusta even Yeah, today. they were getting some sun. They were getting a little bit of – they were getting sun this morning, you know, you know, partly cloudy, but sun was, was shining through. So they may get they may get it in, you know. Yeah, that's the hope, right? You don't want them playing 27 holes, even oh, 21 no. holes on uh, a certain day. You want this to be as normal of a tournament as possible. And hopefully that two-and-a-half-hour delay is all that they need today and over the next four days so we can get the Masters in because there are so many compelling storylines leading up oh, to this yeah. tournament. And every golf fan in the world is excited. We're always excited about the Masters, but this one has so many 
once again, cool stories to get into and to look out for. That uh, this one feels a little bit more special than most. So. It really does. It does feel kind of special. This one is this one is big. You know, the second year with the Lib Tour guys coming back, the defending champ is a Lib Tour guy now, and you know, Rory trying to get trying to figure, finish his Grand Slam and has to have this one in order to get it. You know, it would be it would be nice. Tiger Woods. I mean, him just is he going to be able to make the cut? Phil Mickelson back on the course. Just guys back there at the match. It's just, it's just the one that it gets you every single year. Like you said, this is the one I anticipate every year for, for a long, long time since I've been following golf. You know, yeah. I love, I like the Open too. I like, you know, the different spots that it's played at. But, dude, you can say what you want. I don't like those. I don't like the old fashioned course. I don't like all that bull crap and weeds and and shitty, you know, fairways and the ball runs off into the traps that are eight feet deep. I'm, I'm not into all that stuff. You I'm know, a fan of Lynx golf. I'm not a Lynx guy. Mm. Although I like to hit it and watch it run and roll because that's all I need because I can't hit it far enough to do anything else. But no, I I just I like it. I like what I see at Augusta every year. I mean, that that just and the beauty of that. I mean, I've seen it over and over and over and I've been in gardens before. I, you know, but just to see that place is just amazing how, how pristine it is. I mean, all around the place. It's like there's some guy sitting there with a little pair of clippers if he sees something he's got to go over and clip the grass it's just a little longer than the other parts there i mean i, I love it mm -hmm. but you know of, of the venues still if i could be one place pebble beach is the place i still would like to go to over augusta over augusta yes okay interesting i would, I would love to go to pebble beach and play around there because yeah. my ass ain't ever getting to, on augusta's course it's just not of Oh, oh, because you're you know, well, no, just because I can't afford it. I don't know a member there. You can play at Pebble Beach if you have the cash. You can get on and play at Pebble Beach if you want to pay like the greens fee of like seven hundred bucks. That's on you. When you say play around, what exactly do you mean? Play eighteen holes. All right. Whoa, you're I gonna was, bring the other day. By the way, I was very careful in how I presented my doctor, and you know myself and my wife having the same doctor to have this, you know, hyperparathyroidism. And I almost said, you know, the doctor did my wife too. And I was afraid I may have said, if I said that around you, you would take that. Not only did he do me, he did my wife. Oh my gosh. He got both of y'all. <laughs> he put you on anesthesia and then did both of you. No, oh my God. No, dude. And we got to arrest this guy. I've been trying to figure out with this guy too. I'm thinking, all the nice things I said about them, but I'm thinking still when I went into this surgery with all these teamwork and all this talk about everything's that you're in good hands. I wonder if they lifted up the gown and took the, the team photo. Hey, check this out, y'all. And people are doing the hook them, you know, the, the gator, you know, Florida man down there. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I was wondering, when does that come to TMZ? You know what oh, I mean? They Someday. do that with every patient that they get. Oh, my God. They've got a wall of fame somewhere in the oh, hospital, and it's in some section that only the people on that team can see, you know? That is a terrifying thought right oh, there. Oh, no, they wouldn't do that. People mm -hmm. always tell me, yeah, they'll do that to you. I'm like, no, they don't. Well, if they did you and your wife, there's definitely a chance they're doing that. <laughs> oh, God. My gosh. All right, before we – dive into your golf round from yesterday. Yeah. And I want to show you a video that's going to make you feel really bad about your golf game and also ask you a few questions about what you would be willing to sacrifice in your life to get to play the Masters. Not just play at Augusta, but actually to be in the Masters. But before we get to that, how about the, some love to our soldiers this morning, Buck? Good morning to the soldiers at Fort Cavazos, Texas, soldiers in the state of Texas, and all those that fight for us each and every day, folks. Thank you so very much for what you do for us. We do appreciate it to you and your families. Thank you to our families also for sharing you with us too, but do be careful out there. Amen. All right, Buck, you played your first round of golf since your surgery yes. yesterday. Uh, curious, how'd it go? How'd you play? How you feel? I feel fantastic. I, I still stink, but yesterday was, by the way, yesterday was windy as a son of a gun. It was not the optimal day to go out there and play golf, but that was the first round I've played. You know, I tried to hit this epic driver that I went out to the PGA store and got because it's time for a new driver. Only had the stealth driver for uh, two years, but tried to hit this epic driver, a new driver, turned it right to left, you know, with the wind. It was okay. I'm going back to my old driver again, though. 
Mm. I, I'm not going to do this, but I'll, I'll just say this. For the big man, glad I put on five pounds because there were times when I got on that tee box and stuck that peg in the ground and, and lost my balance a little bit on the swing. And I was thinking, oh, no. This big, this big thing of wind hit me. I was like, ready to fall back. I'm like, I'm going to fall down. How awful is this going to be? Oh, you get I knocked over by the wind? It was, I'm telling you, it was windy yesterday. You know where that place is. It's wide ass open there. There's nothing to stop the wind. Mm-hmm. And you know, you, you, you bend over for a putt, pick the ball out of the hole. So every move I made, I was over cautious not to have somebody say, dude, you need to put on some more weight. This is not good. You're going to read like a tumbleweed going down the fairway. But it was it was okay, you know. I'm I'm the new my new deal is don't play unless it's 62 or above, which it was yesterday. It got in the 70s, but the win yesterday was something. So was I happy with my game for the conditions? Yes, I was, and I feel good today. You know, I made it through, and I'm telling you, ever since I've got this thing out of my neck, um, I'm good. I'm good to go. I can tell the difference. My calcium level, my bone density. I'm gonna have to. I need. I just need to keep on. Keep on eating that bacon and ham and eggs in the morning and not miss the meals. Stay away from, you know, I've, I'm, I'm on a roll now. I'm not going to say I haven't had any sweets because Lent is over with. The lentil season is done. So I went back to, you know, I'm, I'll get a couple of Reese's bars every once in a while but and, and, and a piece of cheesecake. But I haven't gone out and out straight up candy and no soda. I, I've been on the no soda. I have not gone to a, a dead up sugar in my bloodstream, Coca-Cola or, or, or Fanta, any of that stuff. I've, I've been good with that. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to stick with the Ollie pop, you know, the, um, the big hat, non-alcohol drink. I'm going to stick with stuff. That's got some good stuff in there for me. I'm not going to go to the straight poison. I'm just not, I'm not going to do that. That's a good I'm gonna try to make, Yeah. I'm going to try to make that like the alcohol stuff, but I'll tell you what I I've, I've over, I'm overindulging in Gatorade and water now. And dude, I, I got up to use the bathroom four times last night. Yo, four. You know what that is? That's not a great night's sleep. But once again, I'm the guy who once my head almost gets ready to hit the pillow when I get back in bed, my head before it hits the pillow, I'm out and knocked out. I go right to sleep. I don't know how I know people that can't do that. If they get up, they're up for an hour, watch TV, go back to bed. They can't get back to sleep. But I fall right back asleep. But four times last night because I'm over drinking, you know, and I drink all day long. Now I drink water, just go buy it. Here's some more water. Here's some, more. but I, I won't do the soda. And I'm, I feel fantastic. And once again, thanks for all the prayers. You know, I'm very fortunate to have people that, that care and those prayers, that stuff, that stuff works. That, that is not, that's not some fantasy where you think, no, you can feel it. You, you can feel it all around you. So I do appreciate it. Just like I appreciate the eclipse this week. Buck on to the eclipse. Oh, yeah, man, yeah big buck on. rant, and then you ended it by bringing the eclipse into it. Yes, that, no, thank buck you. Buck off to the eclipse. What a colossal waste of time that was. Wow. Buck <laughs> on to the power of prayer. Buck off to the eclipse. I prayed for something better than that, and that shit sucked. <laughs> you prayed for some bread, better glasses. That's what you needed to have. Yeah. Still, I, those things are still hanging around. I just want to remind people. How much of a crock of crap these glasses are. Uh, these were supposed to help me see the other day. And You've instead, got 20 years to think of how we can make money off the next one. You know, I, I saw this for about seven hours last night. Did you? I was, I was asleep. And that's oh. what I got. Might as well yeah. use these as an eye mask next time I'm on a flight. It's just, yeah, really. You can just put those on. People won't, I guarantee you, nobody will bother you. If you stick those on your face, no one's going to ask you one thing. Hey, how you doing today? They're going to know that you just don't want to be bothered. Yeah, indeed. Jason asked if the wind got to you yesterday. He's still uh, calling you Scarecrow. I don't think so. I thought you were supposed to be the big man after this surgery, but big are you still the Scarecrow? You. If the wind is knocking you over on the course, then you're still Scarecrow to me. One one shot that I took a swing, it was like, uh oh, <laughs> look out there, look, look out there, you're gonna fall off your stick there, Scarecrow. Other than that, I was I was in solid ground. Okay, like I said, I, I felt I felt good, and I just need I need one of those 85 degree days, you yeah. know. And, and the thing about this this whole thing about this surgery is, I'm now getting to the point of of you know what? Now the summertime, you know, I won't play if it's 62 or less. Don't get out there. 
I'm going to have to be careful, BK, if it's 100 or more in the summertime. That it, you got to be careful with that, too. You can die out there. Now, I've, yeah. had, I've, had, I've had that happen to me, that heat deal. You've that died one, out on the golf course? No, no. The heat exhaustion, you, you can't play with that. No. That will flat out kill you. Yeah, if you're planning on wind. playing around at golf in the summer here in Austin, you better be hydrating like three days in advance oh, yeah. to have yeah. a chance to finish 18. I mean, it it is that bad. And that's what the Texas cheaters, we play when it's 1 o'clock, 12 o'clock, where we can get out there cheap at places. You know what I'm saying? Where people say, yeah, come out now because there's you always be the only idiots out there. <laughs> yeah, you can play at a nice course for like 30 bucks. Oh, yeah, yeah. But they want you out there when it's 110 at like 1 p.m. Oh, we got a nice spot for you at 1. Get on out there. It's only 112 degrees. Go ahead. But we're not coming to get you when you're laid out there on, on the fairway somewhere. Uh-uh. So I'm going to have to be careful of that now. All these things you have to be careful with. Getting old is not easy. Uh, it, it really it really isn't. I'm happy to be getting old, but it ain't all that easy. I feel you, man. I There's some you. things that I may have neglected along the way. You know what I'm saying? There are there are things that there are things that all the fun times of some of the alcohol fun fun laden times that I had that eat into your bones and cause other things to happen to you later on down. Line. Nobody ever thinks about later on. You know what I'm saying? Because every day you lived it. I, I mean, I lived it like every day was the last day. I mean, that's I mean, I think that's the way you you should live your life, whether it's good or bad. Uh, every day could be the last day, and most likely every day every day is kind of the, uh, the last day for you. You don't get to. You don't get to do it over again because I, I'm truly of the belief that I'm not coming back as a duck or a camel or you know what I'm saying. Would you want to? I don't think so. I don't yeah. think so. I just, I just, I think this is it. You get one shot at it. So I mean, just give it the best shot you can give. So boy, that'd be tough if you came back as an animal, pretty low on the food chain, right? And you had your memories of being a human. It's one thing if you just come back and you have no idea that you're coming back. But if you return to this planet as another life form that isn't as powerful as a human being, Whoa. that's got to suck. How do you live that way, man? It sounds like hell to me. It's like my yeah. ass. If I'm a duck after knowing I was a human, I'm running into the street and getting hit by the first car. Getting it over with? That drives by. I can't deal with that. Come on, man. People throwing people throwing bread out there to you. You mm. over at the pond taking a shit and eating bread. Didn't that sound fun? What if you come back as a baked potato? Oh, that would be horrible. No. Oh no. No, no, no. I'm all right. I'm going, I'm from ash I came and ash I shall return. There so there you go. Well, I'm here to make you feel bad about your golf game. It, it sounds like yesterday's round wasn't your best round of golf, anyways. But I got to play. You. Yeah, it's great that you're back on the course on a week removed from having surgery. It's great that you're feeling great regardless, but especially after playing a round of golf. I'm here to make you and every golfer feel horrible about their game. And when I say I'm here to make you feel that way, Bubba Watson's daughter, Dakota, is here to make you feel terrible about I your golf that. game. This is from yesterday, the par three contest at the Masters. We've got three putts here, back to back to back, from young Dakota Watson. I don't know exactly how old she is. I'll ask P. Diddy for that information. But she's at Augusta. This is the hardest place to putt in the world. These greens are out of control difficult. And in these putts, three in a row, she's draining over 100 combined feet with these three putts. She buries. Look, these are getting further and further away. She's playing the breaks. She's got the pace. She just buries three of these in a row. The hardest place to putt in the world. I would three putt all of those. That kid's got five greens in her backyard. She's been putting all her life. All her this, eight years old, probably. Look at this little secret handshake with her brother after burying the last one. What in the heck? How cute is that? It's awesome. Three putts, three long putts at Augusta for some eight-year-old girl. Well, no, and the only thing about that, the old man humiliating plays, the, old man plays on the, the worst thing is the old man plays on the live tour. Oh, the worst thing is he's making extra money to support his family. <laughs> that's what you're saying? Yeah, to be home with the kids. That's why she can putt so well. He's home with her all the time. Yeah, that's the beautiful thing about the live tour. They don't play as often, so dad gets to be at home with the kids more. On the putting green in the yard. Look how happy she is. Look how happy he is. 
She's got look a brand. How, and here's the look of me watching this yesterday. I'm pissed. Look at that. Burying them. She's got a brand new Lamborghini now for that. those three. <laughs> what That's does she suspect. need a Lambo for? She's eight. <laughs> yeah. Or ten. I don't know. I, I have no idea. I got to believe mean, she's eight. You think eight is the? Yeah, I think she's around eight. Look at that. Is that what you and the Texas? <laughs> yeah, that's how we celebrate. That's how we <laughs> celebrate. Like but Polly comes over and lifts you up. Uh, yeah, he does. He can lift me right over his head. Come here, Scarecrow. Oh, my God. Now, what a place. That, that, that place, I'm telling you, we need to get there next year. We need to be on, we need to be on site at that place just to, I mean, just to, to go around and to watch it. As my son said, it's, it's, it's something to be there in person. You know, yeah. just to think of what you see on TV and double the size of the hills that you see. You know, they're like straight up and down. He said it's incredible. A little TSU field trip to Augusta next Absolutely. year. Absolutely. I'm not opposed. And I don't have any interest in playing that course. No. Right? Like if someone I mean, is like, hey, you could play that course for free and I'll fly you out there, then I'm not going to say no. But like I would do that course such a disservice. And I'm already bad at munis around austin I, you go ahead and add 15 to 20 strokes to your score if you're playing at that place i don't have any interest in playing there but yeah just walking the grounds and obviously being there for the masters yeah you're taking a pee behind the pine trees is not going to be cool at augusta probably oh, oh well sorry i'm doing that even if i'm not <laughs> I'm taking a leak somewhere on the sorry ground about, sorry about this augusta if it's got to be in the parking lot in between two oh, cars yeah. i don't yeah. care but I am leaving my mark. I am marking my territory. You've got to go there somewhere on the side of the green, in the sand trap, like a cat or something. Oh. Come on, man. <laughs> That's how Texas Sports Unfiltered leaves their mark. That's absolutely, man. That's yeah. I I I'd like to see the event. I would not like to play. I, that's not one place that I'd like. To, I would be too nervous to put the tee in the ground that I've screwed up the tee box somehow. You know. Oh, dude, I'd, I'd leave one giant divot on the first oh. tee and it'd be game over right there. Yeah, it's, it, looked gorgeous. it looked gorgeous yesterday. And I'll tell you what, it's going to be this is going to be quite the weekend, especially when Rory wins. You're still calling a Rory McElroy victory. Yes. Going for his first ever green jacket. That's the one awesome. major he has not won. Mentioned it yesterday. It's been 10 years since Rory won a major of any kind. He got to go back to 2014 the last time he won one of the four biggest tournaments in golf. He has the second best odds behind only the lifetime Longhorn Scotty Scheffler. And Rory played pretty well last week. He's played pretty well to this point in the season. We'll see if he can uh, finally spend some time in Butler Cabin on Sunday at Augusta. Yeah, I think uh, it's still the main storyline that Scheffler, you know, three in a row, Tiger Woods. I mean, that, there's a lot of storylines of this whole deal. John Rahm, the defending champ, is back, not playing that great, but, you know, and of course, Kepka, that that dude, nobody cares how he plays. They know he's in a major and he's just going to buckle down. And so that, that'll, it's going to be interesting for me to, to see what's up with that dude, you know? Yeah, 100%. I'm going to go a little bit off the beaten path with my master's prediction this year. Like Scotty Scheffler. Take go ahead and take Shoffley. I'm gonna go with Scotty Scheffler. No, I'm I'm not gonna go with Scotty Scheffler, although he should be the favorite. He's the best player in the world. He's played very well at this course in his career. He's obviously won at Augusta once before. I'm gonna go with a liver. Of course, you're gonna go with a liver. The real tour. I've got to stand by my with, guys. You're not going with Neiman Marcus. I'm going with Waco Neiman Marcus. Come on, man. Yeah. I've watched that guy win a couple of live tournaments this year. He's playing the best golf of his life. He's yeah, there's no stand. music. Tell him there won't be any sounds when he's coming down the fairway. They won't be thumping and bumping. Hey, you know what? I'll fly to Augusta and just play some music from my phone if I have to. That All right. Is I've got to carry him over the finish line. I am worried because he's only used to playing three rounds of golf in a weekend. Yes. <laughs> now he's got to play four days in a row. I'm a little bit nervous what Sunday might look like. Rain uh, delay may really hurt his game. The rain delay could uh, be problematic for those livers out there. But I'm going to go with uh, Waco Neiman to hoist the trophy and win the green jacket this year. Interesting, yeah. interesting choice. He's playing the best out of all of those dudes. He's playing great. He's playing great. And 
he doesn't have the longest odds in the world. I think he's like 2,600, 2,800. So he's in the 10 to 15 range in terms of Vegas odds to win this thing. So not going with the favorite, but not going with the longest of long shots either. I'll go with the middle of the road candidate with Joaquin Neiman. Yeah, he's Mark. like Shoffley, close but no cigar guy. Yeah, you will see. All right, before we uh, get to this next story, because I want to ask you, I keep teasing this, I promise we'll get to this, and I, I uh, ran down this article with Rodney during the midday show yesterday, and it made for some pretty entertaining conversation, so I want to get your thoughts on what you would sacrifice to play at the Masters. But uh, before that, how about some sponsor shout-outs this morning? Our good friends over at Clean Cause, they really do make a difference, folks. 50% of their profits support individuals in recovery from drugs and alcohol addiction. Half, half of their profits do incredible things in the Austin area and around this country. They're organic, sparkling, yerba mate drinks and flavors like cherry lime and orange ginger that'll get your day, with a, get your day started with 160 milligrams of better caffeine. Not jittery caffeine, but better caffeine for you. So if you need that energy boost during the course of the morning or afternoon, try Clean Cost. They're everywhere. They're at HEB. You'll find them at 7-Elevens. You know, 34 Wine and Spirits are soon going to be carrying them. Clean Cost. Here's the new one. Blue Berry. Yeah, Blue man. Berry from Clean Cost. And, you know, my house is filled with these things right here. BK, my wife loves these Clean Cost drinks. And I'll tell you what, the, the 50%... Uh, of their profits going back into recovery is a big deal. So that means every sip really matters when you're taking a sip of the drink that's clean cost. They've got uh, the blueberry now. They also have this one out here. How about this lemonade and tea mixer? Oh. The old mixer right here, the lemonade, little tea mixed together. So we've got both the new flavors that are out. And of course, she has those at 7-Eleven. You'll find those all over 7-Elevens. They're right there just about when you come through the door, you'll find that clean cost. And it is a wonderful cause, and thank the folks at Clean Cause for what they do for us. A wonderful cause and a wonderful drink. Absolutely. Well, shout out to our friends at Circuit of the Americas. Coming up yeah. this weekend out at Coda, it's MotoGP, the Red Bull Grand Prix of the Americas, coming to Circuit of the Americas. I think they call it the Grand Prix. Is it, it spelled P incorrectly? It's a, it says P R I X. I believe that is pricks. Okay. What are you a fan of tree cereal and tree yogurt? I, I like it tricks. Is, I believe it's tricks. So I believe this is pricks. Okay. Just want to make sure we've got that clear. Go to circuit of the Americas.com and get your tickets to all of the happenings at Coda. I might try to get out there on Sunday. I've actually never been to MotoGP before. Oh, yeah, you'll love MotoGP. I've been to NASCAR out there. I've been to F1 four or five times out there. I mean, any excuse I can find to get to Circuit of the Americas, I'm going to find it. I might try to head out there this Sunday for the big MotoGP race. Uh, I'll get my tickets at CircuitoftheAmericas.com. You can get your tickets at Circuit of the Americas.com if you want to be there. They've got stuff happening tomorrow, Saturday, and Sunday. Yes, out indeed. At Coda. Shout out to them. And also shout out to our friends at Picks Sports Gear. If you are a pickleball fan, if you are a pickleball player, if you are trying to become a pickleball player, then you've got to head over to PicksSportsGear.com. It's not P Sports Gear because it's P I X, it's PicksSportsGear.com. They've got the best selection of pickleball paddles, equipment, gear, apparel, you name it. You can find it all online. If you use the promo code RADIO10, you're going to get 10% off your order. And speaking of Sunday, at Bolden Acres, the South Lamar location, they're going to be having a demo day to where you can try out their paddles for free in person at Bolden Acres. Once again, South Lamar, 12 to 5 p.m. on Sunday. You can uh, test out their line of top-notch paddles. You can see if it works for you and your game, and then you can make a purchase right there so once again pick sportsgear.com if you're ready to buy right now or if you want to test out the equipment before you buy head over to bolden acres on south lamar this sunday from 12 to 5 p.m very nice i need to give me some pickleball glasses i bet you they have some nice eyewear a little rec spec yeah why don't you why don't you give them yours why don't you hand back over here your glasses to them and see what you can get back for those. Yeah. If you want to be the worst pickleball player of all time, just bring out your eclipse glasses and you won't be able to see the ball. <laughs> you'll run into the net. You'll fall over on the court. The ball is going to hit you. It's really? 
a disaster if you try to play with these medical kings. Yeah, I'm bringing mine back to the corner store again and getting nice, another Gatorade today. Mm. Oh, yeah, you're still owed a few cases of free yes. Gatorade. Yes, I am. By your non-7-11 convenience store. That's your bad by not going to the Sorry great about, sorry about that, Ashish. I should have yeah. gone to your place instead of Chevron. Oh. Disaster. Yep. All right. What would you be willing to give up to play the Masters, Buck? So there was a fan survey done by VegasInsider.com. They reached out to more than 2,000 golf fans and asked them various questions about the Masters. And the one that I think is the most interesting and will lead to the most compelling conversation, what would you give up to play the Masters? So they had a, a variety of different topics, okay. and they basically asked these golf fans, like, what would you be willing to sacrifice in your life to not just play a round at Augusta, but literally to be in the field to start the Masters just one time, not every year, like one time, boom, today you are in a group, you're playing with two professional golfers, and you're the third guy in that trio. So I'm going to ask you one by one, and you tell me if you would be willing to give these things up to be a part of this tournament, all right? Okay. First one, live in isolation for a month. Would you be willing to live in isolation? So we'll just describe that as you're in your house, but like your wife is gone, she's on vacation, no dogs, no cats. It's just you at your place. Uh, you know, people will bring you food. You're not going to starve right. to death or anything right. like that. But you're by yourself at home in isolation for one month. Would you be yes. willing to do that? Yes. 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 Okay. All right. 36% of respondents agreed with you that they would be willing to okay. do that for one month. This one, I think, is an easy yes for you because, well, actually, I don't know. You do use this thing a lot. Would you be willing to live without your phone for a year? No. Okay. Not a chance. I mean, you are on your phone all the time. Yeah, no, not a chance. Okay. Yeah, I was like, I was going to say, you know, you can have a flip, flip, flip phone, but all you need is the calls. That's all you do on your phone. You don't do yeah. emails. You don't do many of the apps. You're literally just calling people all the time. Right. Now, if you said computer, I would say, okay, not a problem. Mm -hmm. But yeah, not you can't. Problem. Could you do a phone for a month? Uh, that's, that's cutting it close. God, That's cutting it close with me. I know I can't be without my phone for a month. Okay. 21% of respondents said they could go a year without their phone. That'd be tough. I don't, I don't think I believe, I could, yeah, that's kind of high. Yeah. I don't think I could do that one. No. Uh, never eat your favorite food again for the rest of your life. Whatever your favorite food is, you can never have it again. No nope. sacrifice to play the masters. I'm getting my lasagna sometime within my lifetime again. No, I would say no to that. I got to have lasagna. That's your favorite. Yes. I'll have to have lasagna at some time. Yes. Who's got your favorite lasagna. Is it your my wife? wife my, yeah. She's a, she cooks wonderful lasagna. I mm. put it in the freezer and I have it for, a, you know, different times. I can go the whole month with the lasagna meal, you know, in between. So yes, lasagna is my favorite. So can't, can't give it up. No, not going to give it up. No. All right, fifteen percent of folks said that they would be willing to give up their favorite food for the rest for of their life. The rest of your life? Yeah, I guess their thought is it's only one food. Like you get all the other foods in the world. I but, wouldn't even give up my ice cream for that. Uh, my favorite food is fried chicken. I, I can't give up fried chicken. For, no, not happening. Not happening. Uh, the next one: never go on holiday again in your life. So I read that as like you have to work every Christmas. You got to work every Thanksgiving. You got to work every Good Friday. I'll give you the weekends off so you don't have to work like Easter Sunday. You still get your weekends, but you don't get any of the holidays. New Year's, if that's on a weekday. Well, MLK work. Day, I just got off the, this one for the first time ever. I was gonna say, no more of those. You're used to working at MLK on MLK Day because our last place was filled with a bunch of racists. <laughs> no, 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 I can't do it. You need MLK Day off? Got to have it off. Yeah. I gotta, no, I can't do that without – no holiday? What are you, nope. out of your mind? I know. That's no. tough for me because I, I get the Jewish holidays too. I get double I holidays. I double them up anyway, yes. So I'm sacrificing uh, twice as many holidays as you people. 
There you go. You are you are a sacrificer. I am. Always have been, always will be. Longhorn Bear says, I can pick a different favorite food. So Longhorn Bear is in that uh, group of people, the 15% that says they'd be willing to give it up. up. Yep. Uh, All right. What about this one? Your marriage. Would you be willing to give up your marriage? I'm not sure if your lovely wife is tuned in this morning. Give up your marriage to play the Masters one year. No. Wouldn't do it. How great is this? 10% of folks seriously that's <laughs> one in 10 said that they would be willing to give up their marriage to play the masters one time they were never happy in their marriage so no yeah. that's that they, they shouldn't have got married so you might hear that and think that's low i hear that or excuse me you might hear that and think that's high i hear that and think that's low because 50 yeah. percent of marriage ends in divorce right so i feel like close to 50 percent of people should want to give up on their marriage already well, they and, shouldn't get married. That's what they, don't now you do get it. the incentive of getting to play the Masters on top of that. No, no, come on, man. Ten percent, way too low. We too low. Way too low. No, not giving that up for that for a, a, a round of golf at the Masters. No. Mm-hmm. And then the last one we'll get to. This was, you know, we we I've said no to most of these. Hell, both of us have said no to most of these already. But this one is the easiest no for me. Would you never watch sports again to play the Masters? No. No chance. Even if it was just never yes. watching golf yes. again. They want to ask an easy one like, which one of your kids would you give up so that you could play the Masters? Give up to another family. I mean, come on. Make it a simple one. Well, that that would be like 50%. Somebody would say, yeah, I got one I'd give up. Oh, play. yeah. Would you give up no. a kid to play yeah. the Masters? Oh, yeah. I got I got four. I'd give up one of them. Which one? I have one in particular that I'd probably give up. I just don't want to say it out loud. Oh, come on. <laughs> no. That's no. no fun. One out of four. Come on. That's a pretty good deal. Keeping you three. Give, giving up one. You give up 25% of your offspring to play. Play a- the Masters. That sounds like a good deal. Better than giving up my phone or my favorite <laughs> food. Are you kidding me? Uh, now I'm sitting here thinking, all right, well, I've got five other people in my immediate family. Somebody's but I, gone. But I get yeah. rid of one of them to play yeah. the Masters. Somebody's gone. Nah, I wouldn't do it. I said yeah. it earlier. Like, I, I'd, I'd ruin that course, and it'd be so embarrassing. I guess I could be like an American folk hero for how bad I am, right? You know, it's like I, I think of like American Idol, right? And like the I worst singers. More. Yeah, those are the singers that people remember, like the guys who just absolutely went out there and bombed. So if I was on TV, I probably wouldn't show me on TV ever no. because I'm so bad. But if I was on TV and I was just like this casual hacking all over the place, then maybe I'd be famous. Maybe that'd be good pub for TSU. So no, good pub would you would be you versus Bubba Watson's daughter in those three putts. That would have been great TV. But as your ball goes off the end and into the water, off the green and down the slope and into the water, that would be that would be hilarious. Dude, oh, you shit. gave it just a little too much juice there. It's into the water. Yeah, your ball. As she just barely touched it, you would hammer that thing down that hill. I cannot believe she made one of those three putts. She made all three of these with the gallery, too. Look at all those people watching her. And look at this pace. It's a perfect putt. BK, until you told me that, I thought it was just one putt. Center cup. You said all she made three of these. Three in a row? Yeah, this would be imp- – dude, she, like, there are pro golfers who can't make all three of oh, these. Oh, I guarantee you there's, they are. Scotty's going to miss one of these putts this weekend. No, only from seven feet will he miss. And look, she left the pin in on that one and still buried it. God. Here comes the handshake. Here's what I got to do with you next time we're playing golf together. Here it is. Here's our secret handshake. Put the club down. Couple of high fives, the dap, the fist pumps, the spin, the fadeaway shot, and then <laughs> pick me up, bro. <laughs> uh, yeah, that would be entertaining TV. Like an eight-year-old Dakota Watson going up against hell. Forget me going up against a pro golfer on that putting contest. It's amazing. Oh, that's amazing. All right, so there you go. There's your. Masters conversation. The last question from this survey we'll get to. We got a bunch of other things to get into this morning. They asked these golf fans, which celebrity would you like to see play the Masters? 
So I'll ask you that, Buck. Hmm. Which celebrity would you like to see play the Masters? I got to think about that. And that's an, that's an interesting one. Which celebrity I'd see play with those play with the pros like in the Masters? Yep. Huh. The number one response: the former president Donald Trump. He cheats. He cheats on his scores. Can you cheat at the Masters? I feel like there's so many people watching you that you're not going to get away with that. You think he would leave the ball underneath the tree where he didn't have a swing? You don't think that would be foot wedged out there somewhere? He would call a rules official, and the rules official would be like, no, you got to play it as it lies. And then he'd be like, I'm going to have Secret Service murder you if you don't let me move this ball. <laughs> and then the guy would be like, he would just be like, oh, oh, I accidentally kicked the ball. It's in the fairway again. What are the odds? That's oh, what, that's that's pretty interesting to see. That's what hmm. the Don would do. I don't know. Number two on the list, Happy Gilmore, a.k.a. Adam, Adam Sandler, the Sandman. That'd be fun. I'd probably vote for that to see if he'd go with the Happy Gilmore bit off the tee. Oh, you know he would. He'd be out yeah. there with a hockey stick. Yeah, he'd be out there on the greens with a hockey stick. Yep. That one makes some sense. You got Steph Curry, Snoop Dogg, and Tom Brady rounding out the top five for the people. You got one? You know, I need somebody more obscure than those people. I, 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 need, I need a band member. I know who you would pick. Diddy. <laughs> Which one? Caitlin Clark or the co or my girl there? Oh, I Kim Mulkey for sure. No. My my round of golf would be who I've never played a round with. Where every time I see her, she gives me the I get the stink eye from her is Jody Conrad. Wow. Why does she give you the stink eye? Because all these years I've never played a round of golf with her. I played with most coaches, you know, golf on, on the 40 acres at some time. You know, I've never ever, and I've always wanted to play around with her. I've never got the chance to play around with Jody Conrad. Easy. All right. You're married, and she might. Oh, here we go. Talking about playing around with women. That's disrespectful here. (laughs) It's a sensitivity sensitivity training Thursday once again on TSU. A round of golf. What? Did she ever ask you to play? Well, we've just, you know, we've been at golf tournaments together at times. And I'm like, coach, we've never played. We've got to, we've got to play together. We just, it just has never happened. And I want to do that. Yeah. I'm I sure she make would. Why don't you ask her? You're right. I don't know. I think she's still in Austin. She is. She's 82 years young. I think I, I like can take her. her. I think I can take her now. Boy, if you, if you can't, then you got to get oh. a refund on your surgery. Cause that <laughs> shit did not work. <laughs> I don't know if Jody, she might be a great golfer. So I, I, I might have to apologize for that coach, but um, yeah, come on. That'd be great. I'll get that done. I wonder how she's doing these days. Uh, okay. Jody Conrad, not the answer I was expecting there. Uh, Charles Barkley did not make this list, which was a little bit surprising. Dude, I don't want to play and watch that swing and all that madness. It would just be fun, right? Like, I guess you don't mic up these golfers at the Masters, really, so you wouldn't get the comedic relief from Chuck that you get, you know, when he's broadcasting. No. Um, Yeah, I mean, Joe Biden's on this list, Barack Obama, Elon Musk. You got Samuel Jackson. LeBron is there. Shohei. How about Dennis Rodman getting some response? Gosh. Those are some of the most – popular answers there all right so there's your master's conversation and i believe at least they should no 9 30 what am i talking about 9 30 yeah. is when uh so we'll give some scoreboard updates before we get out of here we'll do that uh, throughout the day on texas sports unfiltered as well okay buck uh before we shift gears and get to some texas football conversation about some more shout outs to some more of our great sponsors. All right, good friends over at Leaf Landscape Supply Services in Monterey Oaks at 290 down south and Pond Springs Road up north. All of your needs for a healthy garden and healthy landscape. Call the folks over at Leaf Landscaping and Service, of course, supplies. I love the folks over there. I'm going to get out in the garden a little bit today, BK. I got some, I got a couple plants in before the rain came. So I want to see what they're looking like, you know, and I got them from Leaf. I mean, I get all my plants from Leaf. And, you know, every once in a while, I may cheat on them and head over to Lowe's or Home Depot. But I need the ones that are going to last the longest. And they they really do last long because they tell me exactly 
where to plant them, how to plant them, what kind of fertilizer I need to use. And I'm about not throwing my money away anymore. I've done that for years and years and years, but at least they're going to give me the opportunity to put it in the plants that can survive in certain parts of Texas. And I did just that. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting out there tomorrow. My vegetable garden is looking good. I'm going to take a picture so we can see the, yes, the prog, the progress that my garden has made here after the rain. So I'm looking forward to showing people. And of course, don't forget my next uh, naked event, gardening event is when I throw the blue bonnets out next spring. Well, no, it'll be in the fall when I have to throw out the seeds. So when I frolic around my yard naked, I mean, I, I don't think I can do naked. I think I got to go loin, loincloth at least. Yeah. Tarzan look. You know what I'm saying? As long as I'm not there. You know, big man will be. Urgh, urgh. Don't hurt yourself. Oh, my back. <laughs> <laughs> Where you're going to pull a muscle just by flexing. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. And thank the folks at Leaf once again for, for their support with us. But with their helping me out and, and the, the different types of uh, landscape that I've been doing over the course of all these years, being in, in Texas over 30 years, I, I just love going to those folks. As I said, if, if, if you don't want to do it yourself, they have contractors there that will come out and do it for you. But if you're interested in, in gardening and you want to, you know, get a, get a, get a hand in mother earth, like I do, mm. then go see the folks over there. So you can do it right. You don't want to screw that up because you can spend an awful lot of money for a bunch of dead plants and waste a lot of money on fertilizing stuff that it's just not going to work. So go to the folks at leaf and, and get the professionals uh, point of view on, on your landscape. Absolutely. Shout out to leaf landscape supply. Also shout out to our friends at autograph, download that free autograph app yeah. in the app store or Google play. If you're watching on YouTube, there's actually a link in the uh, video description below. It's a free app that rewards you for listening to Texas Sports Unfiltered. Seriously, the autograph app co-founded by Tom Brady. You heard of that I, guy? I know that guy. Yeah, he's in, on, he's in on this thing, too. Once again, the best place to find all of your favorite Texas Longhorn coverage is on the autograph app. And how about this? Next week, a week from today, that's how next week works, April 18th. You, um, they're going to be dropping a pair of tickets for the Texas Michigan football game. Awesome. For $8. You can get a pair of tickets to that Texas Michigan game for $8. But you have to do a couple of things for your chance to get in on that great deal. You've got to download the app. You got to use the promo code TSU when you download the app. And you have to invite a friend once you download the app. It's that simple. Everything's free. It's easy to do. If you do all of those things, you are going to uh, have the opportunity to purchase a pair of tickets for eight dollars next week. They're going to do their own randomizer. They got their own randomizer going. They got their own randomizer going nice. there. Tom Brady's got some money. You know, they can make some stuff happen. Yeah, they can make things happen for sure. That is that sounds like a great deal, man. It really is. Free autograph app. And how about now a word from our buddy Tom McKay over at Audio Visual Consultations. Hi, this is Tom McKay with Audiovisual Consultations. Today's home electronics can be a bit daunting. My company has spent the last 36 years making sure they are not. For those of you who have not experienced our services yet, we'd like to invite you to give us a try for all your home electronics needs. We carry all the major brands of televisions and stereo equipment at prices you can't find in stores. And we come to you. There's no need to leave your home to find great pricing and incomparable service. No traffic, inexperienced sales geeks, or pushy showroom tactics. We believe in having some fun and dreaming big. Do you have a dream for your home entertainment? Let us know. We can make it come true. And we are always there to help after the job is done. We cultivate clients for a lifetime by treating everyone like their family. No, not those family members. I'm talking about the ones you actually like. So relax, hug your kids, make love to your wife, and smile. Then, when you have a moment, give us a call at 255-8678. That's 512-255-8678. Or online at avconsultations.com. Yeah, and that's why I love this. I'm going to tell you something. I can watch sports on a small screen TV all the rest of the year, but the Masters, this 85-inch, it doesn't look any better than that. I mean, that thing mm -hmm. is – that place looks beautiful. It's talking about landscape and the way they have a place groomed. That is gorgeous, and it looks fantastic on one of Tom's big screen TVs. It looks fabulous. Absolutely. Shout out to our guy Kalai, former coworker of ours, tuned in this morning. Too many Very days nice. are texting the buck, and I had to leave for a second during that spot to go grab. Yeah, the cream the, soda. The cream pie. Nope, the cream soda. This yeah. 
<laughs> the greatness of Olipop, a great tasting soda that's actually good for me. It's not just good for me. It's good for you, too. If you haven't tried Olipop, you are missing out. The buck is like me. He has now sworn off soda. But you don't have to swear off soda because Olipop is a different kind of soda. It's a soda that's actually good for you. So I'm looking at the back right now. I see two grams of sugar in this can. Very good. A can of Coke is like 40 grams of sugar. You got two grams here, only 40 calories, zero fat. No, by the way, nine grams of fiber in every can of Olipop. I'm going to take a sip so you guys don't think I'm just pulling your leg here. Good stuff, huh? <sighs> nice. Got to do that right into the microphone. Yep, love Olipop. They've got it at HEB. They've got it at Walmart. They've got it at Target, Costco, Whole Foods, wherever you get your groceries. A new kind of soda. It is Ollie Hop. Okay, Buck, some Texas football news to get into. Uh, we'll start with an update on a story we spent a lot of time talking about yesterday. Former five-star recruit Bear Alexander. Uh, there were reports yesterday saying that he was going to enter the transfer portal to leave USC. And we spent a lot of time talking about whether or not Texas could be in the market for Bear Alexander. He's a defensive tackle, 6'2", 6'3", about 300 pounds. The Longhorns may be a little bit short at defensive tackle this year after losing to Vondre Sweat and Byron Murphy to the NFL. Uh, Bear Alexander from the Metroplex felt like maybe uh, there could be a fit here with the Longhorns. Well, a lot of rumors, a lot of rumblings. A lot of discussion throughout the day yesterday about where Bear, Bear Alexander was going to go next. And according to him, he's not going anywhere. A tweet that he sent out at 1.28 p.m., so after we got off the air, quote, I'm not crystal clear on all of the noise or what any of this portal mess is about. I'm here to finish what I started, and that's chasing a natty here at USC with my teammates. Hashtag fight on. And yeah, cool. hey, good luck with that natty there. Yeah, but, Lincoln, hey, Lincoln Riley and natty in the same sentence. That, that feels a little weird, doesn't it? In that baggie that you just picked up yesterday, that's what you meant. That I'm nice here to natty. pick up that baggie. That's what you're not that natty. They've got that baggie. That's what they picked up. Somebody said, we need that guy to stick around. Can somebody donate just a little bit more here to keep this guy around? He's a pain in the ass, but guess what? We need him. When you say he needs that baggie, it sounds like he's looking for drugs or something. No, okay, that bag. How's that? There you go. That baguette. He got that baguette yesterday. Was he looking for French bread? What is that going to do for him? He's, he's just like, you know what? I want a lifetime supply of baguettes and I'll stay. Yeah, I'm staying at least for a year to to hunker down here and try to get a natty. Okay. Yeah. No, that's I, good. That's good. He. There was, there was too much confusion on what that kid was all about anyway. You don't need the confusion. Texas seems to have enough confusion right now at the presence. They don't need another problem. So uh, that's that's a that, – that kid would end up being – I don't know. I, I can't say. that that That's that's just speculation on my part that he'd be a pain. So I don't know. He's better suited where he is. I'll just say he'd, that. He'd be a pain. He'd be a pain. He literally floated his name out to the transfer portal. He got a bunch of people to report that he was about to enter the portal in an effort to get more money from yeah, the school. He he's, calls, at. Yes. he's a pain in the ass, dude. And he's been at six different schools in the last six years, right? He was at four different high schools. And then he started his college career at Georgia, transferred to USC after one year, and then floated out the idea of transferring somewhere else. So he was thinking about being at seven schools in seven mm -hmm. years. And, yeah, he, he knew what he was doing and looked good for him. It worked. I mean, I don't want guys like that on my team. I really don't. And I don't think Steve Sarkeesian was going to want a guy like that on his team. We'll never know whether or not Texas was going to be interested in Bear Alexander in the portal. Maybe they would have been. Maybe they would have said, hey, we feel good about our culture and we need a defensive tackle, so we're willing to take a little bit of a risk and we're willing to raise a little bit of money to get this guy on campus but hell, I, I don't. There are enough talented players in the world to not deal with headaches. Like, yes, yes, that you're right. If you listen to yesterday's show, this is what I said yesterday before this tweet came out. This is not a ah, he doesn't want to come here, so now we're going to talk bad about the kid. No, I, I I said this all yesterday. I don't want to deal with guys like this because no. he's going to be here for a year, and it might be a tumultuous year at that. Yeah, and you can't afford that. You can't afford it if if it's in game two or game twelve. 
You just don't want that on your team. And you definitely don't want it when you're when you're playing at a level that Texas is playing at. And you'll get to a, a point where a playoff may be involved. You don't want a guy to bail out on you then. You know, not no. be involved, not be all in. You just can't have it. Yeah, this NIL deal was for the regular season. But, oh, we're in the conference championship game? I'm going to need a little more money. Oh, we're in the college football play. It's 12 teams, not just four? Yeah. That means I might have three more games? Oh, no. I, I need, gonna I need another bag. I need I need a car. I need a bag. I need a baggie with some drugs. I need some baguettes. You know what? Give me give me uh some focaccia bread too. Yeah, if you're doing all that bread, bring me some more bread. G- give me some more bread here. Give me some wheat, some white, some toast, some yeah. rice, some pumpernickel. I want the whole bakery, dude. You know, with the head coach talking about um, you know, spending a lot of time talking about his culture, this this just didn't seem like the, the the one that would fit right now. You don't want to be doing that because this is this is the culture time. This is the culture time of the year where you talk about after winter workouts, people start talking about about your culture again, you know. And there's a reason why coaches bring up cultures that generally they bring it up when things aren't going exactly as smooth as people think it's going. That's when that word starts to pop up again. You want to make sure that you always have it. You want to make sure that the kids understand it's – Every day, it's just not one year and then the next year you lose part of your culture that it's there with you all the time. You know, I mean, even Georgia has a culture, but they do. They've had kids in, that have some problems over the last couple of years that involve people dying. So yeah. it, let's not think that because Georgia wins national championship, they don't have a culture problem at times. So it's uh, kids are kids are kids. These aren't all they may look like adults. But mentally, they're not totally all there yet. They're still growing mentally. So they may be big bodied and 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 collect a lot of money and do a lot of fantastic things as athletes. But mentally, they're not always all the way grown yet. They're just not. It takes mm-hmm. a little bit of time. So and they need their experiences that are needed through these young men and young women. So that's why coaches constantly hit the culture button and they don't hit it. They don't hit it a lot when things are going good. They hit it when there's things that suspect can happen or there's something going on in my in my program right now that I need to get a hold of right now and let everybody know that we're not changing for you or you or you. We're not changing for any of these individuals. It is what it is, and it's that way every day. Yeah, that's well said, Buck. And let's hear from Steve Sarkeesian. We did not play this cut yesterday, but he did have immediate availability earlier this week, and he spent a ton of time talking about culture and we'll get to the update we have on the Tavondre Sweat car accident and DWI in a second. And that might be why Sark was hounding on culture as much as he did earlier in the week. Somebody asked Sark about, you know, do you have to enforce culture as much now? And coming off of a great season, it kind of feels like you've got this program where you want it and it's in the best spot it's been in more than a dozen years. Someone asked Sark if he needs to enforce culture as much this year and well, here's kind of what he had to say i want to i want to i want to think that but i don't want to take anything for granted and i know sometimes maybe for older players um they've heard they've heard some of this stuff now for three straight years and it's like here we go again maybe uh, maybe it's like i get one of them like oh that's why we do x y or z and so um you know, I, I just don't I just don't look at it that way. I look at the same way we install our schemes on offense, defense, and special teams. When we go to day one installation, you know, um, a guy for like David Benda, you know, and, and we're putting in quarters coverage, how many times has he sat in that meeting and gone through the, the, the just the pure fundamentals of that coverage? Well, culture is the same way. We have to teach it. We have to install it the same way. And so for him, now he can be a real conduit for me in that locker room or in that linebacker room to really overemphasize the things that he knows are going to be important down the road. Yeah. I mean, coaches, as I said, coaches like to talk about culture, but they understand that their upperclassmen are the ones that build that culture and have built it over the last three years. You have to teach, you got to keep talking to young kids about it. The ones that come in the spring, the ones that come in the portal from other programs, that this is the way we do things here. You know, I know you may have had success where you were before, but this is just the way we do things here. You don't we don't skip around this or skip around that. And we're going to let you know about it. And generally, they don't talk about it until something starts to slip a little bit. You, 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 You say you talk about it every day, but people 
people really talk about it when things start to slide. When you can, have, when a coach has that feeling that things are sliding a certain way, and you're getting away from your culture, or one or two guys maybe getting away from it, you don't want that to permeate through the rest of the team. You know, one guy slip up can screw up a bunch of guys depending on how long he's been here. You get a you get a guy who's a junior or you know been around here for two or three years, BK, and then he starts to slip. Now you've got another young guy. Now you got an older guy who's got to talk to that guy who hasn't talked to that guy. You just want to you want to keep you want to keep the they're young. You got to keep the pressure on them. Don't take it for granted that they understand what you mean. Reinforce it all the time, you know. But yep. people don't want to hear that. People just think of it as no, they reinforce it when something's going bad. No, you have to reinforce it all the time. You know, it doesn't have to necessarily be bad, but a lot of coaches understand that cert certain things start to slip. And I don't want to let it get away. I just don't. Why do I if I have a if, if I talk about it, they understand that it's still on my mind, which should still be on their minds, too. Yeah. You know? culture, culture matters. And every yeah. coach talks about culture, but not every coach can instill a good culture. And Steve Sarkeesian at this point has done a great job instilling a great culture here at the University of Texas. But he wants to make sure that that doesn't go anywhere right. anytime soon. And he's talking about a place like Georgia, who's won back to back national championships that will be in the thick of it for the next 20 years. Mm -hmm. They have, they've got a winning culture, but guess what? They have, they've had problems on their football team out of some of their best players. Yeah. Some okay. things are inevitable, right? Like it's college kids. Like you said, right. I mean, guys are going to make bad decisions. Guys are going Absolutely. to get in trouble. And that, that doesn't necessarily mean you have some horrible culture, right. but you got to make sure those stories are few and far between. And you got to make right. sure that when those stories happen, you can respond. Like that they don't fracture your locker room, that they don't split your program, that they don't impact your culture in a negative way. You got to make sure you can uh, respond to that. And Georgia obviously has done so. Uh, and now like uh, Texas has had a couple of tests of culture throughout Steve Sarkeesian's three years going on four in Austin. Now they've got another test with the Tavondre Sweat situation. And, you know, with T Sweat, uh, all, all we heard over the weekend was T Sweat was arrested and booked for DWI. But the further we get away from the weekend, the more details we have emerging from what actually went down. So at first it's like, well, it's Devondre Sweat. I know he was a Texas football player. I know he was here last year, but he's not a part of the program anymore. So maybe that's not something Steve Sarkeesian really has to deal with. It's it's not a great look. It's not ideal, obviously, for him or for Texas. But it's like, okay, well, he's he's not with the program, so we don't have to worry about that impacting our locker room. Well, some of the details that we've got, and this stuff came out yesterday from the car accident that took place early morning on Sunday here in Austin, Texas, USA, America. Turns out that Texas redshirt freshman linebacker Samaje Burrell was the other driver in that two-car accident. Remember, we said yesterday that there was a car crash. Tavondre Sweat's car flipped, and Tavondre Sweat was on scene when police officers arrived, but the driver of the other vehicle had fled on foot. Turns out the driver of the other vehicle was Samaje who, once again, is a redshirt freshman linebacker on this Texas team. He has been suspended indefinitely from the program. The initial report yesterday said he had been kicked off the team. Uh, now it seems like it's just an indefinite suspension. Steve Sarkeesian actually released a statement saying that Samaje Burrell had been suspended indefinitely from the program. So we'll see what happens next. Uh, but, yeah, that's, uh, that's the next detail from this story. So it turns out, Buck, it wasn't just – a former Texas player involved in that incident, uh, a guy who is a current Texas player was also involved, which once again, I think Sark knew this before yesterday. Sure. And I think that's why at his press conference earlier this week, he was harping on that word culture as much as he was. Yeah. And that, that no, you don't think that bothers him about sweat being involved in that okay. a guy, who, a guy who's been on his, on his football team for the last couple of years, a, a, a team leader on that. Now, once again, people make mistakes. Young people make mistakes. Old people make mistakes. People are just going to make mistakes. But, dude, you cannot run from an accident. If you're involved in an accident, you can't take off and leave your, your boy whose car is flipped over. You can't get out and run away. You can't. That's You're talking about dodging responsibility. And I don't know if they were racing. I, to me, it sounds like something at that time of the morning. Somebody's racing. Somebody's up behind on somebody. And somebody's not paying attention, you know, because you've been drinking or under your influence. But – it's it's a it's a bad look. 
but you don't leave. You don't leave one of your friends. You don't know what happened to that guy in front of you. I mean, that you may have crashed into. You don't know if, if that guy may need some help. So you don't bail on him and take off. You don't do that. You stick around for your responsibility. You're a part of what just went on. You know, whether you're the guy who crashed from behind or you're the guy who caused it, you don't leave your teammate. You don't leave anybody, by the way, that you don't know is okay or not. You don't take off. Look, Samaj Burrell is a young kid, but he's yeah. an idiot. He's an idiot. You, you, you need to be smarter than that at that age. Like, you make mistakes. People make mistakes. Sure. Look what just happened with Rasheed Rice. Like, he's getting in a crap ton of trouble because he got in a car crash and fled the scene. This was a couple of weeks ago. And I know Samaj Burrell knows that story. And I know Tavondre Sweat knows that story. That may be why T. Sweat was smart enough to stay. You, you're not going to avoid trouble. They're going to find you. Yes. You you can't flee the scene of a crime like that and expect to get away with it. They are going to find you. So I'm not sitting here saying Samaj Burrell wouldn't have gotten this indefinite suspension, you know, if he stayed, but he's going to get in more trouble. And obviously he's in more trouble with the Texas football program because he decided to make that decision. Like that is dumb, dude. You made yeah. a bad decision. Don't double down by making an even dumber decision. Yeah, dude, you're too dumb to play for me. That's my my deal would be him. You're too dumb to be playing for me. You know, by the way, Samaje's dad is a police officer in Fort Worth, too. He actually turned his son in, according to this report. He called the APD about the collision on Sunday night. So I guess Samaje had, you know, it felt bad. He had second thoughts and he told his dad what happened. And his dad was the one who's like, he called the APD and said, here's here's what went down, and here's my son's involvement in this deal. Wow. So, yeah, bad bit right there. Here's here's uh, some of the actual details from the arrest affidavit and statements provided to LoneStarLive.com. I want to give them credit here. Texas redshirt freshman linebacker Samaj Burrell was driving a blue 2020 Dodge sports car that rear-ended a 2023 orange Ford Bronco driven by Sweat causing the Bronco to lose control and land on its side on the service road in the 13600 block of North Interstate 35 shortly before 5 a.m. Central on Sunday. A statement from the Austin Police Department said that Burrell left the scene of the accident on foot. Burrell's father, Lorenzo, a Fort Worth Police Department officer, called the APD about the collision on Sunday evening, more than 12 hours after the incident occurred. Burrell has not been arrested or charged with the crime. When police officers arrived on the scene, Sweat admitted to driving the Bronco, which had an odor of burnt marijuana. He had glassy eyes, poor balance, and smelled of alcohol. Sweat told police that he drank two or three shots of tequila before driving. After Sweat failed field sobriety tests, a breath sample tested at .105 above the legal limit of .08, and a blood sample was also taken. Sweat was released from custody on Sunday on a $3,000 bond. So... There's uh, maybe we have more details, but it, it feels like that's just about everything we need. Yeah, well, to you'd have had a lot of details if, if those two cars would have hit somebody who'd have been on the side of the road and killed somebody. Yeah. But then somebody's going to jail. Yeah, thankfully everyone's okay. Right. And nobody got hurt in this deal, but obviously, well, I, just, it, I, mean, I can't. I can't imagine leaving my teammate. I can't believe. Imagine leaving a friend that you know I'm racing around with. I've got a buzz on. We crack up. I can't imagine taking off and leaving that person. That dude may have been pinned in the car. My it's friend not, may have needed me. That, my friend may have need, needed me. Yeah. I've done. I've already done something stupid. I'm not going to double it up by running away from it. Hey Samaj, um, Tavondre Sweat is not your fall guy. You're his fall guy, dude. Yeah, that's that's uh, not, not sitting here saying Tavondre should have left. He did the right thing. Like obviously, they both screwed up. They both made a made a mistake. Sure. I don't know if Samaj was drunk or not. Uh, maybe we'll find that out at some point. Once again, at this point, he hasn't been arrested or charged with anything, but I, I assume he will be because you can't just flee the scene of an accident. Well, there's a lot like of that. stupid people, just stupid. They don't have to be drunk to get arrested all the time. They're just dumb. Right. That's right. dumb. It's dumb. You could be dumb at any age. Yes. So I, I hope this is a learning experience for both of them. Not saying close the book on Samaj as a person for doing this, but that that is incredibly dumb to do both of those things. And it, it cost him a spot on the Texas team potentially, and uh, you know, yeah. Now it's now the next. coach has now started talking about reinforcing his his culture. This is not acceptable. This is this is this isn't what we do. We're by the way, we're in the middle of, we're in the middle of spring ball, and you're out getting jammed up five o'clock in the morning on the weekend, and you know, 
could have killed yourself, could have killed somebody else, you know, could have could have done some really serious harm. And then you ran away. I mean, you actually ran away from the scene instead of just sucking it up, taking it, taking what you're getting ready to get. You're going to get it here on this campus. We're, you're going you're gonna to pay a price on this campus as it is. Yeah. But, dude, you can't do it. Somebody could have been seriously hurt, and you left them there. Left them there. Yep. I guess this Samaj Burrell's time as a Texas football player is done. My guess it's is. coming. It's, it's sure, it sure didn't help his cause. I know that. And my guess is he's, his time as a student at the University of Texas is probably coming to an end in the not-too-distant future as well. So, And his dad's a cop. His dad's a cop, yeah, in Fort Worth. And he basically turned his son in. So, uh, yeah, yeah, mess, messy situation there. Uh, bad look. I think, um, you know, trying to find some humor in a serious situation. That's well, just who that's, I am. That's what I do. The funny part is, Puck. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Hold on, hold on, hold on. The funny part is, Tavondre Sweat's driver's license had him listed at 322 pounds. What? <laughs> when do you think? When do you think that was reported? That's eighth what, grade. Eighth grade. <laughs> he wasn't that big coming into Texas, believe it or not. But uh, yeah, I mean, he he was what three sixty something at the combine. Yeah, three sixty six around, around that weight at his pro day a couple of weeks ago too. So that's that's the humorous part for me is that that's wow. the weight that he had listed on the uh, on that old driver's license there. But yeah, and that guy is not without blame either. That no, grown he, man getting ready to go into the NFL, that's dumb. He was, he was drunk driving. Like, of course he's with blame. That is just that's, – that's, that's, a, that's a crime. Even if you don't get in that car accident, like that right. is a crime in itself. So, Yeah, yeah. Now, now the coach has to talk about his culture and make sure that everybody that's involved in that football team and anybody within shouting distance because, remember, that's a coach himself who's had an alcohol issue. Yeah. So much less that he wants to make sure that these kids understand the severity of what, what's what's going on when you drink. Period. I mean, you got to you got you be responsible. Get a cab. Be responsible. Get an Uber. But you can't get behind the wheel of a car, and you damn sure can't run. They're going to find you. Going to find you. You're not right. going to get away. You're, somebody else was driving that car. They're going to find the somebody else that was driving the other car. Yeah, I, you know, Tavondre sweats big, but he's not big enough to drive two cars. All right. No. No. Someone else was driving that car. It got in a wreck. They were going to figure out who, and and I guess credit to Vondre Sweat for being a good friend. He not rat out, like not rat out his boy. It doesn't sound like he gave up his boy in that spot, which some people might criticize him for that. I'll, I'll say that's uh, that's being no, a good movie right there. I'm not going to criticize him for that. Your boy got to turn himself in. I'm not the one that needs to turn him in. Yeah. He got to turn himself in on that one. We'll need to snitch on that. There's deal. no reason. There's no reason to. He's 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 over 15. He's old enough to turn himself in for doing something stupid. Yeah. And the first person he should have called was probably the head coach. Or if I'd have been around at that time, I would have got that phone call. You would have. What would you have done if you got that call at five in the morning on Sunday? I would have had to go down to the police station. I'd had first of all, I had to go pick up the kid and take him to the police station and turn him in before his dad got to me and said, "You didn't do this for my son." You what? You knew this, and I'm getting the call. No, Dad, I took him down and turned him in. That's what I would have had to do. That's that'd have been my job. Mm. I've I've been involved in those deals where do I or don't I? Do I call the head coach or do I do it myself? And there have been, I I always told him if it goes to the head coach, it's a problem. If it goes to me and I can take care of it, you're still going to have a problem. But if I have to make the call to the head man and say. Uh, we got such and such in jail. You need to be the one to make the call to the to the police chief. Then that certainly is a problem. If I couldn't handle it, and I got and I I was and I I had the authority to say when the head man said and he let me know, hey, you know if it gets to me, what happens? And I like, yeah, because I've been borderline in the University of Illinois with the head man of Sam and 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 Howard Griffin, and a lot of these guys know the Chicago kids knew that if it got to me. And I had to pass it on. It was lights. It was done. It was a done deal then. So I would get the first phone call. And then if I had to make, the, I had to make the adjustment. Do I need to call that guy? Or can I go handle this? I handle plenty of them, but I've also made the call to that guy where I knew, uh-oh, there's nothing I can do when it's out of my hands now.
I feel like in this situation, you would have had to have called the head coach. Oh, there's no doubt. There's a, a car accident, yeah. a flip over on its side, yes. Yeah. Whether it, was, whether it, it didn't matter whether it was another player or not. If it was just been a pedestrian or just a regular student on campus that was involved with them, I'd have had to make the call. That would That's past me right there. Yep. But that's why it's – that's why you can't run. You can't hide. You can't leave somebody behind like that. You don't know what you could have done, even with your drunk ass. If you were drunk, how you could have helped somebody out who could have died, maybe. Yeah. You know? Maybe it's turnabout is fair play because Samaj Burrell left Tavondre Sweat behind, and it feels like Texas football is about to leave Samaj Burrell behind. That, yeah. 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 And for Tavondre Sweat, like, the NFL draft starts two weeks from today. Tavondre Sweat was never going to be drafted two weeks from today because he's not a first-round pick. But I do wonder how this impacts his draft status. And Dane Brugler of The Athletic, who's one of the best draft guys out there, he's one of my favorite draft guys, he released this thing called The Beast. It is just this ginormous draft guide with information about every draft prospect. I mean, even guys you've never heard of guys who probably won't even get drafted is in this list. I mean, you've got thousands of players that he does scouting reports for, and he goes in depth and gives tons of details about every single player who has a chance to get selected in the NFL draft every single year. It's an awesome read. And I'll probably be spending a lot of time this weekend reading that while watching the masters. I looked yeah. at, uh, I looked at his Tavondre sweat grade buck. That's why I bring this up. And I, I, this came out like, a couple of days ago. So after the news of Tavondre Sweat's arrest and DUI booking or DWI booking, excuse me, had come out. Dane Brugler has Tavondre Sweat as his 10th ranked defensive tackle. And he's got a fourth round grade on him. And here are some of the things that Dane Brugler says in his write-up about Tavondre Sweat. NFL scout said he was labeled a party animal and class clown during his time at Texas. They also say that NFL scouts believe that he was playing at 380-ish pounds. Oh, I think I mentioned him being in the 380s. This past season. Then they got into some of the other issues. He plays tall. There's questions about whether or not he can be a good, consistent pass rusher at the next level. But party animal class clown and 380 pounds and fourth round grade. That is not what you want NFL scouts to be saying about you two no. weeks away from the draft. So sometimes people he, like the jolly fat man and sometimes NFL teams got to pay him a lot of money. They don't want it. If Tavondre sweat already had those monikers, you know, the class clown party animal superlatives before this car crash, that shit ain't going to help. No. So I'm sitting here thinking, like, I think a lot of Longhorn fans are like, oh, Tavondre Sweat's going to be a second-round pick. Now he might not go on day two. He might be a fourth or fifth-round pick at this point. And it only takes one team to fall in love with you. So there might be a team that does love T-Sweat enough to take him in the second round. If I still had to pick, I would say third round for Tavondre Sweat right well, now. This, this but this is, ain't going to help at all, Buck. Well, it's not going to help at the present, but this may be his, his wake-up call to reality of the jolly fat guy. You know what I mean? The funny, funny, jolly fat guy that this is real serious. This is what he's wanted to do. You know, he wanted to be in the NFL. Well, he, he's going to get a rude awakening possibly. And this may be the awakening that, that a guy needs. You know what I'm saying? There are lessons to be learned from all this. There's a lesson to a guy who may lose his scholarship. There's a lesson to, to the head coach who consistently got to make sure that everybody understands what their culture, what his culture is. And it's not going to change because of you, you, or you. Mm -hmm. uh, because I'm going to keep this message going. And if we win a national championship or we're playing in a, in a championship game in the SEC, what, guess what? The following year, I'm going to talk about my culture again. I'm not just going to let it sit by. It's just, it's just a wake up call for, for all of them, you know? And, yeah. and, you, and it's, and the, the real one is you don't leave somebody behind. You, no. you just, you, you can't, you, you don't do that. You don't leave your friends. You don't leave your teammates. You don't leave your siblings. You don't leave it up to, Oh, I saw everything look to be okay. I got to take off now. I'm going to, I'm going to run. I'm going to get out of my responsibility. And in your mind, think that you're going to get away with that. I well, mean, like you said, he's not 15 years old. This is a guy who's a second year in college. This it's not a, this is not a, this is not a kid. Now, as I said, they, they're big body and they still, they will still mentally do kid things, but dude, you just, you, you got to shake yourself there. And 
that that may be that may be the wake up call for his life. That may not just be the wake up call because you may not be at this university, but that may be the wake up call for both of those guys yeah. in their lives. They may not get a you know some of the other ones that don't get up get to be wake up calls. You die from you know what I'm saying you don't come back. You don't get to go play football again. You don't get to live or somebody or you cause the death of somebody else. This is a true wake up call for two people right here. Second chance for both of these young men. And yeah. I hope they make the most of it. Like I, yeah. I hope they, they made bad decisions. You're going to get a second chance at this university. Not everybody, yeah. not everybody gets a second chance. There are people who get second and third chances, but not everybody gets a second chance. Right, right, right. You right. Know? Yep. And uh, look, I hope they learn from these. I think everybody hopes they learn from these mistakes, but these are undoubtedly mistakes. And God, well, Uber, that's going to understand because that head coach is going to let them all know. Yeah, Uber or Lyft or man, tell me if I'm off base here, Buck. But I feel like you can call your position coach if you're in that situation, Absolutely. and they're going to pick you up at four or five in the morning and, Dude, and I take raised, care. I raised four kids, and I, I, I and I've told them. I said it doesn't matter what time you call me. Yep. If you've had too much to drink, and 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 you and you're the one who had the car, and you can't find a way out, you can't find an Uber. If it's three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning, call me. I'll come get you. I will I will deal with you later, but yeah. at that present time that you call me, I'll get you I'll get you back home safely, back to your apartment safely, and I'll deal with the other stuff later because I will deal with the other stuff later about even being like that. But do call me, don't hesitate. I've always told my kids, don't even hesitate. Yep. To, to, I remember. Just wake me up. My just folks said the up. same thing. It's my folks said the same thing back when I was in high school. Right. I'll, and, I'll get up now. Yeah. Now there's going to be a problem later on. Sure. I'm not, not going to tell you how great you were to get me up at three o'clock in the morning and come and get you. I'm not going to, I, I will, I will say, Hey, that's a smart move, but I will deal with it later. Hey, I'll pick you up at three in the morning. Guess what? At six in the morning, you're mowing oh. the lawn, you're painting the fence. Oh yeah. You're doing all kinds of shit. Cause I'm going to be in your ear for the next 25 days and yeah. I won't get off of you about this. So yeah. yeah. And, and, and I've, I've, that just, that has always been that I've not had a, you know, I've not had, and I've not had a problem with with a kid that's done that. I, I, a player. Now I know there's tons of them who haven't called me and just kept on going. Well, shit, I'm talking about myself. I'm an alcoholic. I'm trying to talk about what the kids do. You don't think I've ever gotten behind the wheel after a couple of drinks? Of course I have. I've just been lucky. It's called luck. That's all. It's called God taking care of you and other people at that time. They don't want you to be involved. God, God doesn't want you involved in that. But that's all it is. It's not because. I got to be more focused as I had another drink. I'm focused on how to get around. It's just luck. Yeah. You're not any better off when you're drinking and you're not more focused driving a car and or holding a gun. You're not you're you're not more focused at that time. You're you're but I know one thing. I don't I don't I don't leave people behind. I, I just don't do that. I'm I'm not that person. I never would. I've been in I, I've been in accidents before where, my, where, you know, I came home from Boston College as a player and was out drinking with a bunch of guys that the car flipped over and I ended up, that's where my back injuries kind of started where the car slid and hit a telephone pole. I never thought about getting out of the car and leaving guys behind and taking off and running. Yeah. I went to the hospital with them. I was making sure everybody was okay. And I suffered the consequences when I got back to, got back to college. So you didn't even do anything wrong in that spot, right? And you were just a passenger in a car a that got in a wreck. I mean, I was drinking you, beyond repair. I mean, yeah. It was, it was, I, I should have known better to, to, to say whoever was driving that car, one of my friends at home, dude, there is just no way. It was like the guy put the gas on and never let up off the gas for miles and miles and miles. And we went and, and flew airborne, went through a stop sign and went airborne and landed sideways and were pinned inside the car and got out. And it was just, I never, th but I never thought about running. Right. I never thought about, Hey, let me leave these guys behind and save my own ass. I, I would never think about that. Sure. Yep. He'll learn. They'll learn. And it's, uh, just sucks. And it's a test of this program's culture. And, uh, we'll see what happens with Tavondre sweat in the NFL draft. We'll see what happens with Samaj Burrell. As of now, it's an indefinite suspension from the Texas football program, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's, uh, an entrance. Whether, in a he's, good, whether he's good or not. I mean, yeah, it, 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 there, there are some things that you can't get away with like Samaj Burrell, a, th a three-star redshirt freshman. I don't know how much he was going to play this year. I don't know if he was going to play a ton during his Texas career at all, but it, it almost doesn't matter when you do stuff like this, no. right? You're a five-star kid and you 
do this, then you're suspended from the program indefinitely, and you might be having to go play football somewhere else. So well, it's not, and it's not. You know, you know, we we talked about the Aggies over the last couple of years, how they've struggled, and and you know all the stuff about them guys, guys smoking weed behind the bus before they'd go in for games and and stuff like that. I mean, dude, smoking weed and leaving your guy behind are totally different to me. That's you know, n- neither one is good. But I'm never gonna leave it. I'm never. I'm never gonna leave a friend behind. I just. I don't even know how that even gets into your mind to take off and go. Yes. And like I said, I've been. I've been. I've been in, in accidents. I've been. I've. I'm an alcoholic. I've been drunk before, but mm-hmm. never. I'm never leaving anybody behind. I just can't do that. I. Just, I, I just don't feel that. Even in, even in my drunkest moment, it's not about saving my own ass. You know. Sure. It just. Mm-hmm. It just can't be that way. And I'm guarantee you that. The head coach is more pissed about the fact that that guy took off than anything, you know? Yeah. Did you really, you really left the guy behind? Or, did, you or, know was, if you, did you know he was okay? Did you see him get up and walk around? Or did you just, first thing you did was jump out of the car and take off? This is a brotherhood here. Like You're supposed to be your brother's keeper in this locker room. You're supposed to have your teammates back. And I know Tavondre Sweat you're is. You're supposed to have your fellow student. You're supposed to have your. Yeah, you know, just human nature. Don't, oh, you know, these guys are friends. Like that's why they're hanging out, and they're probably out drinking together. Like uh, it's not just like a random student. Look, like, you're supposed to have anybody's back in that situation. Like right. you get into a wreck with a stranger, you don't jump out the car and run away. But this is your teammate. This is your friend, and you did that. Yeah, yeah that's I don't know. We'll move. We'll 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 move on. We'll take your thoughts. Five one two 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 nine three two eight. That's the go to text line. Keep the YouTube comments coming as well. But uh, yeah, a, a disappointing story for sure, and and it's more and it's disappointing for the for the older dude too. I mean, come on, of course, one jolly jolly guy. Yeah, I mean, two that, weeks, that's what's two coming weeks out before the draft. That's, that shit's coming out about you as being the class clown. I know everybody, you know, he's the funny guy because you know, but really, that's now getting to the pros where he's the class clown. Yeah, well, that that happened before this incident, so. Sure. You know, NFL scouts, they do a lot of talk and they do a lot of research. Oh, they, yes, they do. Believe me, they do. As I said, they'll go to the trainers. They'll ask guys to tape your ankles. What kind of what kind of guy is he? What what happens when things aren't going? What, what happens after a loss? What kind of guy is he in the training room after a loss? You know what I mean? Is he the guy who's upbeat and ready to go for the next week and can't wait? Or is he the guy looking around saying, oh, you know what? It's not a big deal. We'll win this week. I mean, they, they ask those questions. And they want to get it from just the normal person that's around them every day, every day life, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Uh, I forgot to check some of these texts earlier, but we asked the folks, if there's a celebrity you could watch play the masters, who would you pick? Got to vote for Bill Murray. There you go. Got to vote for Michael Jordan. Got to vote for Charles Barkley. Got to vote for Christopher McDonald, AKA Shooter McGavin. Shoot him a Gavin, yeah. Now, that'd be fun. If we could get Adam Sandler and Chris McDonald in Part a group. Oh, my God. In a group at the Masters. Like, sorry, Tiger. The biggest no. gallery ain't following you. It's following those two guys. Oh, Shooter. Oh, my God. Shooter. Great movie. Great movie. All right, Buck. Before we um, switch topics here, let's see. Let's see. Texas baseball we still have to get into. Uh, we've got a Mel Kuyper mock draft to get into. And, oh, a TBT video as well for the people oh, yeah. this Thursday. After all, let's give a few more shout-outs to a few more sponsors. Dear friends at Texas Orthopedics, folks, if you're seeking that specialized patient-focused orthopedic care, contact the experts and our friends at Texas Orthopedics. Their physicians offer comprehensive surgical and non-surgical orthopedic care for children and adults. Spinal care, sports medicine, joint replacement, rheumatology, and, of course, trauma care. Christopher Danny and Christopher Stockton, they are dedicated orthopedic surgeons. They are former UT stars, and their goal is to get you right back into good health and the great quality of life that you deserve. Visit TXOrtho.com for more information. Texas Orthopedics is the largest independent orthopedic practice in the state of Texas. Once again, more information. Find out if you need that. If you do have to be the last stop on the bus stop for knee injury or getting that uh, knee replacement, go to TXOrtho.com. Absolutely. Much love to them and much love to our friends out at Covert Bee Cave. Hi, I'm Dan Covert with my wife, Hayden. Welcome to Covert Bee Cave. 
Our newest location in the gorgeous Hill Country includes Buick, GMC, Cadillac, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram, and hundreds of pre-owned and certified vehicles for you to choose from. We have three service departments that are ready to take care of your car, truck, or SUV with 86 service bays to accommodate any repair and get you in and out quickly. Come visit us today to select the vehicle you've been dreaming about. Covert, born and raised in Austin. Oh, yeah. Love the Covert family. Love the Covert Auto Group. And you will, too. Just go in there and see them. Shout out to Cover 3 as well. I'll be having lunch at Cover 3 a little you bit go. later today. Watching some golf. Oh, yeah. It's the best sports bar in all of Central Texas. TVs everywhere. And they've got what you want on TV, too. You're not going to have to ask them, hey, can you put the game on? they got the games on. All right. And they'll have the Masters on all weekend long the great food the full bar the happy hour every day fantastic service it's the best sports bar in the city if you haven't been there yet you're missing out if you've been there you know what we're talking about shout out to cover three dining spirits and sports and also shout out to zentex tickets.com if you're not at cover three watching the games uh well you can be at the games with zentex tickets.com you want to see the rangers in person this year up in arlington they got tickets for you if you want to see the Astros lose again, in what first, again? They are four and nine right now. They got pummeled by the lowly Royals yesterday. Wow. They'll turn it around. If you want to watch the Astros in Houston at any point this season, you can get tickets at SyntexTickets.com. Sporting events, concerts, Broadway shows, you name it, they've got seats for you. All you have to do is log on your phone or computer to SyntexTickets.com. Um, love the folks at Syntex Tickets. Love Shelby and the gang. Great people over there for sure. Um, uh, we got to talk some Texas baseball here, Buck. How they do uh, that? How do we finish up the game? We know that we had another inning to go. Did we get? Did we get that in? Please don't tell me there was a comeback. It was nine to one, I believe, at that time. So you're not even going to tell me that the Bobcats get them, cats. They did not do it. They did not come back. Please don't say that. Texas State did not eat them up in the first of two games that were played yesterday. I guess it's technically a doubleheader, even though eight innings of the first game were played the night before in a different city. Oof. But I think, you know, in the record book, it might show up as a doubleheader. Texas won the first game. They were up 9-1 to one going into the ninth inning. They won 9-1. They to one. The lead. They kept the yeah. lead. They didn't cut the lead. They were able to hold on and preserve that eight-run victory. Good. But they did play a full game last night. Uh -oh. And that one did not go very well for Texas baseball. Seven to three, the final score. Texas State gets the win. Uh, the Longhorns gave up six runs in the fourth. Man. And Texas State just ran away and hid last night. So the second time in three meetings where the Longhorns played the Bobcats and Texas trailed six to nothing. They were down six nothing in that game in Houston. Actually came back and took a couple of leads before ultimately giving up a lead in the ninth inning and losing that matchup at Minute Maid Park uh, last night. Not as feverish of a comeback for Texas. They lose seven to three to make matters worse. Let me see if I can pull this up just to add a visual aid for what I'm talking about here. So the Texas baseball Twitter account, you know, they provide all sorts of updates. Sure. Uh, they live tweet the games. They tweet out highlights. They tweet out scores. They always let you know what's going on. And usually, win or lose, Texas baseball will tweet out a final score tweet. Well, the last tweet we have from the at Texas baseball Twitter account reads, to the bottom of the eighth we go, Horns trail seven to three. So no final score tweet after the loss last night. Uh, that's how embarrassing it was, and I guess that's how embarrassed even the social media team for Texas baseball is with this program right now. They didn't even give you a finale, huh? They didn't even give you a final score, which is code for we suck. You know, we don't want to get dunked on on Twitter, so we're not going to post a final score. And then people see that you don't post a final score, and then hey, they don't. You got a split. Anymore. Come on, you got a split. They did get a split, but they did lose two of three. And this is not like – I know Texas State's been a good team in the last decade or so. Yeah, Texas State is 17 and 17 on the season. They're not good this year. Yeah, I mean, and I'm talking about for the year. They're not that good. 
No, 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 no. And you're done playing them, so it's over. Like, you, you lost your season series to Texas State. You played three times at three different places, and you lost two of those three games to a 500 team in a small, not very good conference. So that that's where Texas baseball is right now. Like, they're bad. They are bad. Uh, they'll win some games. They're still in the mix. They're a game out of first place in the Big 12 because nobody's that good in the Big 12, it seems. You've got like six teams within one game of each other for first place in the Big 12. Well, the Longhorns could mess around and actually win this league, but yeah. I don't think you can possibly expect that to happen with the fact that they keep losing games to teams like Texas State. Well, they can't get on a winning streak. They can't get things going. They can't get something going in a direction where they just don't stumble and fall right now. You know, like you said, you're expecting them to come off of that K-State weekend of let's now win seven in a row. Let's not win a series and then come back and lose a Tuesday game. Let's let's get something going. They, they can't seem to mount anything, and especially with the pitching. They're giving up a lot of runs in these single innings, yep. you know, with their starters. That's what bad teams do, Buck. Like, I, I keep seeing Texas baseball fans on Twitter, and I keep hearing Texas baseball fans be like, well, look how good they are. Like, they, they play really well at times, and – well, that means they still have a chance to put it all together. It's like, no, like every team is going to play well at times. Right. Right. The worst teams in base, the Astros have played. Nah, I'm kidding. The worst teams in the, any sport can play well at times and win games. That they, They're college baseball players. They're all on scholarship. They can find yes. a way to play they well. Play a lot of games. Yes. Yeah, they can on any given game. night, they can play well. The good teams play well a lot. The good teams are consistent. And don't take you on this roller coaster ride that Texas baseball has taken this fan base on through the first now 34 games of the year. This is not a very good team. They're not horrible. They're six games over 500. They're not awful, but they are not good. They are not making it to Omaha this year. I don't think they're making a super regional this year. If they keep losing to teams like Texas State, they might not even make the postseason this year. I don't think it's going to get that bad. That's I've not got, good for I've got, years. I've got enough faith that they can at least make it to the tournament. But as it stands, they wouldn't be hosting a regional. And I don't know how you could have any faith that they would be winning a regional, let alone a super regional, letting, letting alone having a shot at a College World Series championship this season with what we've seen for 34 games. We're not three or four games in or 34 games in, and we're still having all sorts of conversations about how the pitching's just not good enough, how the offense is too inconsistent, how the bullpen ain't there. It's the same stuff we worried about at the start of the year. We're still worrying about it right now, which guess what? That means we're going to continue to worry about it all season long. Yeah, and that, and for the head coach, I mean, he is the tip of the spear right now because he's the guy who put himself in a situation to be the pitching coach and make sure these things, some of these problems didn't happen. Some of the main problems that are crushing them are happening because they can't be consistent. And he was taking that position so that they could be consistent at pitching, and it's not. And that's that's not good for him going into the SEC. It's just not. And especially with some of these outcomes that you've outlined that, that could possibly happen. you got to be in the big – I mean, I don't care if you're a game and a half out, you need to win the Big 12 championship. That will give you – that will buy you a year. Yep. Yeah, it will. Um, it definitely will. And look, I, like if Texas does do what I said they just wouldn't and they do win a regional and make it to a super regional, then that that keeps David Pierce around. But I, I just don't know. I know what David Pierce has done. I'm a David Pierce fan, especially as a person, but I think yeah. he's done a good job, a very good job as the head coach of Texas baseball. If anyone tells you he's a horrible coach and he sucks and he hasn't done anything right, you should stop listening to them because they don't know what they're talking about. But we know what the expectations are for Texas yes. baseball. And we know what the expectations are for CDC. He always talks about his teams competing in the top 10. And if his teams are not competing in the top 10, he's going to do what he needs to do to make sure his teams are competing in the top 10. This, this program is nowhere close to top 10 right now. And going into a harder conference next year, I don't know how you can feel good about them being closer to the top 10 in 2025. So right, yeah, this, I think this isn't just about this year. This isn't I, just about this year. Yeah, I think there's a very real chance that if David Pierce can't turn it around, he, he's fired after this season. I really believe that. I, I don't want that to be the case. I want them to turn it around this year and prove me wrong so we can go back and say, how dumb was BK on April 11th? He stuck a fork in this Texas baseball team and said they had no chance to do anything, and here yeah, we are I don't in Omaha. You're sticking a fork in, but you're looking for some consistent play, and it doesn't. you don't see anything on the horizon that it looks like it's going to happen. I'm sticking a fork in him, dude. Like, I'm going to watch and root. And hope I'm wrong, but like they're not 
They're not getting to Omaha. They're not getting where they got last year. It's just not happening. Can they, win this, can they win this conference? Is this conference, you said, is so scattered. It's hard no, to say that they can't just based on the standings, but I don't think they're going to win this conference. So, and they're a game back to sit here and say they can't feels naive, but shoot, I'll, I'll sit here and say they can't. Whatever. They can't win it. Because they're lo- they're losing series to teams like BYU and Texas State and Washington, yeah. like you got to play a lot better teams in the second half of your conference slate. Take Washington out of there because you know that is just not happening for anybody that plays them at Texas. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It's cursed up there. I was terrified being in Seattle. My sister is like, "Do you want to go to a Washington baseball game? They're in town this weekend." I said, "No, no, I don't." I'm, I'm scared. <laughs> I don't want to go to there. I'll be scared in the stands. I don't want to see them play anything. I don't want any part of that, man. If I saw a guy wearing a Washington shirt when I was up there, I was just like cowering. And yeah, I don't even like to see that purple uni. I don't like to see any of that stuff anymore. No, no. I, I just um, they they've got to find a way, BK. To as you said, you're not buying it. They're going to find a way. You're just seeing so many inconsistencies. And I, can they just get on a roll? Can the starter? Get to where he needs to be in the in the day two star to get it going. I mean, I it starts know. with their pitching, doesn't it? It starts with the position that the head coach is coaching. Yep. Yeah. I mean, Ace Whitehead, the number two guy, has actually been their best pitcher. But LeBaron Johnson, who is supposed to be the ace of this staff, has not pitched like that this year. He's had a couple of really good starts, but once again, when you're inconsistent, you're not good. His ERA is over five this season. That is not good for your number one Friday night guy. Um, Max Grubbs has been really good on Sunday, but his last start was not good. Like, I'm done with him. I'll watch him. I'll root for him. I have no faith anymore. A- April 11th is the day that BK buried the Longhorn baseball team. I've seen enough. I've now seen you're stuck watching softball. Enough. Yeah, softball is great. Coach softball White, is great. They're the number one team in the country. Of course, I'll believe in Texas softball. They just won two games in a row against Oklahoma. And you know what Texas softball did last night, Buck? What did they do with somebody that they should be? What did they, they do? To- they beat Texas State last night. You know, and Texas State is ranked in softball. I think they were like 21 or 22. And Texas base- Texas softball beat them. So they can beat Texas State. Texas baseball cannot beat a 500 nowhere close to ranked. Nowhere close. Nowhere close to ranked Texas State team. Hmm. So I'm a believer in Mike White's softball program, not a believer in David Pierce's baseball program right now. And he's got to figure it out. Otherwise, he will be coaching somewhere else next year. So there you go. Texas Damn. baseball. Good times. Uh, they're back at it this weekend. By the way, the weird thing with this baseball team, they are 5-2 and two on the road this year. They won a series in Lubbock. They won a series in Manhattan. Maybe they're two most impressive series wins this year have been away from home. So maybe that's what Texas baseball needs. They're at Houston this weekend for three games starting tomorrow. Maybe they, just need to, maybe they just need to, Houston's not very good. If they can't win that series, then a bunch of people will be joining me in burying Texas baseball, but maybe they're the undertaker. Maybe they rise from the grave. There you go. But, I ain't but you need it. a couple, you need a couple weekends in a row and you can't, you don't need a Tuesday loss. You need weekends. You need about two weekend series and a Tuesday, don't you? Their next eight games, three at Houston. They okay. got U- UT Rio Grande Valley next Tuesday. Yeah, okay. And then three against TCU here in Austin. Oof. And then a UT Arlington game the following Tuesday on April 23rd. They need two series wins, a Tuesday win, and the UT Arlington. That's what they need. I need, I need six and two minimum. Yes. For me to consider buying back in. Are you maybe, maybe a little buy-in on that if it's six and two? I didn't say I said to consider it. I won't be buying in, but I'll be I'll be you know, I'll be driving by and I'll look at the store in my in my car window. Like right now, I'm just driving by. I'm driving by the dish. I'm not even looking over there because I'm so mad and I have that little faith. Wow. If they go six and two, next time I drive by, I'll I'll take a look. I'm take not getting out of my car. Nice. I'll take a look over there and say, all right, let's see what you got in store next. But I got TCU on the horizon, huh? Yeah, the the horny toads who were picked to win the Big 12 this year 
You win a series against them? Okay. Uh, I will uh, I will look out my car window at you, Texas you baseball. One more time. All right. So there's that. Texas. We started State. any golf. Did the golf start at all? Are we are we have we hit the course yet? Let's take a look. Let's take a look at uh, the best website in all of pro sports, masters.com. It appears we've got some action, Buck. We've got some action. Maybe just the first group is out there. I try to pull About up the lead. Minutes in, yeah, the first group. We've got two scores posted so far. So, yeah, the first group is finishing up hole one. You've got uh, Van Royen and Knapp, who are both even par. So they parred the first hole. Good job, I guess, boys. I, I guess the third guy they're playing with is still putting. <laughs> they they, he's going for triple right now. Or they haven't updated. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, he doubled or tripled one, which is the worst possible way to start off oh, any round of golf. So, yes, yeah, so we are underway at Augusta National. Uh, we'll be doing a lot of couch time today. Absolutely, man. With uh, that tournament getting going. All right, before we get to our TBT video of the day, how about another sponsor shout out? Yeah, I got to say hello to our good friends at Relax the Back. You know, for years and years, I've been needing some real help with my back, my thoracic back. I had reconstruction of my thoracic back. And then I met the folks over at Relax the Back. Folks, they've got incredible gravity recliners, tempur mattresses, and pillows. But what they have are these incredible office chairs. And I've been in the same chair here for about 20 years. I love this chair. I love the support it gives me in my lumbar region and my thoracic back. Because without this chair, I'd be sitting in a beach chair like BK has been sitting in for the last eight months or so. And my back would be a piece of shat. I mean, it would be awful. No matter what, or no matter the great surgeons that I've had, no matter what I've done with getting calcium out of my neck, my back would be awful without this relaxing back chair. And folks, you can too have that same kind of support you need just sitting around. Now, I do have that couch over there that I'm going to be spending some time in, BK, the one that will engulf me like a taco, you know, here. I'm going to spend some time here. I'm not going to sit in the relaxed the back chair in the entire time because I'm going to be sleeping on that terrible couch of mine. But, folks, when you've got an opportunity and you're going to spend hours in front of a desk or in front of your computer, Go over to Relax the Back, and there are two great locations at the Hill Country Gallery across from Whole Foods and in North Austin, of course, at the Gateway Shopping Center across from the Container Store. You get an opportunity to live pain-free like the buck. Do so at Relax the Back. Yes, indeed. Shout out to them. Shout out to Altstadt Beer as well, the best beer that you can find in the world. I'll be drinking a lot of Altstadt watching golf this weekend. Hell, I'll be at Cover 3 for lunch. They've got Altstadt Beer there. Probably have a couple of Altstats. With my lunch, and then my fridge at home is stocked with Altstat. Hopefully, yours is as well. If it's not, get to H-E-B. Get to 34 Wine and Spirits. I was out there yesterday. Get the specs. Get the twin liquors. Wherever you buy your beer and get you a six-pack, maybe a couple of six-packs of Altstat beer. They've got a bunch of different brews, too. Something for every beer drinker out there. I promise there's going to be one or two or three different types of Altstats that you absolutely love. One sip, and you won't go back to the other beers that you have been drinking in the past. It is the official beer of BK. It should be the official beer of you as well. It's all stat beer. No impurities. No regrets. And we will be out at Sue Patrick next week. We'll be next over there. Day. Yes, Back sir. There again, yes. Back at Sue Patrick. They've got those new volleyball hats. I saw uh, Jay post it on social media last night. The five-time national championship Texas volleyball hats are now in stock in store and available Looking online. Looking for a three-peat now, right? Looking for a three-peat. Yep. They've won Sweet. five total titles. They've won back-to-back -back championships. And, yeah, they are uh, like UConn men's basketball, going for a three-peat next season. Uh, Shout-out to Sue Patrick, 5222 Burnett Road. Love also, some love to Woods Comfort Systems as well, 512-842-5066. The best HVAC and plumbing services that you can find all throughout Central Texas, and they've been in business in Central Texas for almost 70 years. Not 17, 70. 70. Nobody does it better. The Buck talks about his Woods Comfort System all the time. Uh, they've got you covered. The best AC, best heaters, best insulation, and the best plumbing services you can find, woodscomfortsystems.com. And make sure if you go by, if you, if you want to talk to the folks at Woods about a generator, make sure you're getting the best generator you can get. They will hook you up. 
with the right folks and they'll tell you exactly what you need to do. If you've already got a Woods Comfort Systems in your home, they'll let you know which generator fits the fit the system that they have too. So if you're thinking about that, which I'm I'm into, I got one. I finally got one. That was the number one thing I had to do for uh, the, uh, the, 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 the upcoming spring BK. I was given that demand by my wife. You get a generator. Things could go sideways here. You know, we got the summer coming up and all these storms that are coming by lately. You want you don't want to be left with your meat not frozen. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you want to? I don't want my meat frozen. What are you talking about? <laughs> you got to have you got to have it, and the ladies have to have that water pumped up. No, they're not bringing buckets of water, or they're not going and bringing gallons upon gallons of water to the house. They want it pumped up from the well. So if you need a generator, talk to the folks at Woods Comfort System. Have them tell you about what's the best generator that'll fit their system. For sure. Yep. Yep. Uh, we've got some breaking news, Buck, before we get to our TBT video. Okay. Um, well, this is a sad day for me. A legendary football figure has reportedly passed away at the age of 76. Uh, one of the greatest college football players of all time, one of the greatest NFL players of all time, uh, a legendary running back, a guy who meant a lot to a lot of people out there, is apparently no longer with us and passed away at the age of 76 after dealing with cancer, according to his family. Orenthal James Simpson has passed away. O.J. Simpson. O.J. Simpson. The uh, reports are starting to come out. These are from very reputable sources. So this thing seems legit. That's uh, O.J. Simpson, one of my favorite athletes and really a role oh. model and inspiration of mine on and off the field, is uh, no longer with us, Buck. Sad day. That dude could go. That guy could get it. We, I saw the car chase. I know yeah, he could I mean, and he could go through those airports and jump over when he's doing the Hertz commercials. But he was a special, special player at uh, USC. I mean, I followed his career at USC into the Buffalo Bills, and uh, and and when they were when he was running the break the two thousand yard uh, rushing record, I was right there every Sunday, mm -hmm. Sunday just waiting to see who the Buffalo Bills are going to play and watch that guy run in the snow and watch his offensive line, big Reggie McKenzie. It was it was a pleasure to watch that guy play. You know, and and I never really stuck him in my top couple of running backs for some odd reason. I don't know what it was when I when I was thinking of Gale Sayers and, and the likes. But O.J. Simpson was a great, great running back in the NFL. Yeah. Not a good running back, but a great running back. The glove didn't fit for you, for O.J.? I just didn't. I don't – I mean, he had everything. He had track speed. He had the ability to make you miss. He had power. But I don't know why I never got him into my my top four or five with the, the likes of Earl Campbell and Gail Sayers and Jim Brown, you know? What do you think he ranks in uh, Nicole Brown Simpson's running back rankings all time? <laughs> at a time, at one time, she it was his, she her all-time favorite, but... I just hate end, that. Not I so hate, much. I hate that someone got her, man. I hate that. Like, he had to lose his wife. That is devastating. Hey, Twitter world, this is yours truly. R.I.P. to George Truly. 76. George Truly, 76. It, this one hurts me, man. This, once again, an inspiration for what he did on and off the field. That is uh, that is a tough loss, and I do not want to talk to anybody for the rest of the day because of this news. So you'll just go watch the Masters. I, I guess so. And I got, I'm doing the midday Bye. show with Rodney today, too. So I guess we'll I will have to talk to people, but I'll be sad. All right. Uh, really sick. I mean, he, I mean, he had – started to live that kind of quiet life unless you got him on Twitter where he wanted to say something about everything, but I didn't realize he had cancer. Hey, he no longer has to live in fear because he was always worried that he was going to run into the real killer. And now he no longer has to worry about that. So it's in a better place now in a better place well, he may All right. where he's going. He may run into that killer in that spot. They don't have mirrors there. What are you saying? <laughs> I love Allegedly. <laughs> oh, man. All right, our TVT video. Save this towards the end. Um, yeah, I had to get the the OJ news. That's uh, obviously big breaking news. That's one of the more well-known figures in the world, for better or for worse, uh, passing away at the age of 76.
We go back to 2017 for this week's Throwback Thursday viral video. This is a good one. I don't know if you've seen this before, Buck. Um, this was hilarious at the time. This feels like a 2020 COVID video because in 2020, when we were all quarantining, like we had to take a bunch of Zoom calls, right? Everyone was working from yes. home. Zoom was such a big deal. I was wearing and, a jock for a face mask. Yep. You were wearing a jock for a face mask. You were the only one in the world doing that, thankfully. Um, but this goes, this is before COVID. BC, as I like to say. 2017, this guy is on BBC and he's doing a pretty serious interview talking about something serious. Boy, I sound really serious, don't I? And just look at the background. His kids come barging in while he's on live television and all hell breaks loose. Scandals happen all the time. The question is, how do democracies respond to those scandals? Uh, and what will it mean for uh, for the wider region? I think one of your children has just walked in. I mean, shift it, shifting... Shifting sands in the region, do you think relations with the North may change? Um, I would be surprised if they do. The, um, pardon me. Pardon me. My apologies. What is this going to be for the region? My apologies. North, uh, sorry. Um, North Korea, North uh, South Korea's policy choices on North Korea. I love the mom trying to get the groups crawling in there. Oh my God, I can't even imagine what my mom would have done. My mom would have snatched the kid right out of the seat of that deal. Oh, Unbelievable. Dude, Come on, that... Dad, be a professional. Go ahead and just do the broadcast with the kids here. Take a lick from the lollipop and let's move on, you know? Oh, there's just all sorts of noise going on right there, oh. though. Like, impossible to focus. I Let love me, uh, the one in the stroller. That's the best one. Yeah, you Come got in. that little baby just barging in the door <laughs> with the uh okay. Let me let me do this real quick. I should have done this beforehand. Let me let me chop this up and get it to where we can play this without sound so we can talk while this thing's going on. Cause I want to give a little play by play for what actually happens here. But yeah, this was live television back in 2017, and this guy's trying to do an interview. He's talking about North and South Korea, and right. it clearly so something important going on in the world that definitely affected us here in America. And yeah, you got the first kid barging in. All right, we're almost done here. Pardon my naivete and my laziness on this deal. Loading, loading, loading. Still loading. I love it. Did you I ever have it. a moment like that? Oh, when a, when a kid came in on me? On a video call or something? No, I always took my business with my ex-wife out into the garage in the minivan if I couldn't find a place to get it done. You know what I'm saying? In the house with all the yeah, kids. Okay. All right, here we go. Here it is with no sound. So here's the play-by-play. -play. Little kid barges in the door. Look at this dance she does with her elbows. Uh, 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 hey, Dad, here. Doing her little dancey dance. The dad tries to, like, just shove the kid back. Like and the then, uh-oh, uh in the... In the because corner of the screen. <laughs> the sitting baby. on his papers. And then mom comes sliding in. I mean, like ninja style. There goes a book falling off the table. And she's grabbing both kids somehow, like one hand with one kid, the other kid with the other hand. I love when she, she reaches back solo. Dragging them out. And then at the last second, yeah, she's like on her knees. She goes and closes the door. The first little girl should have definitely said, hey, daddy. Betty Lou just shit herself. It smells. Betty you Lou? To, yeah. It's a baby, not a 110-year-old. Betty yeah. Lou. That's the baby's name is Betty Lou. The little girl should said, Daddy, Betty Lou just shit all over the place. Can you come and change this diaper and get off the TV, please? Oh, my God. Oh, the mom, she slides in the first. Slides in safe. All right, I'll play with the sound one more time so you can just hear the chaos scandals again. Scandals happen all the time. The question is, how do democracies respond to those scandals? Uh, and what will it mean for uh, for the wider region? I think one of your children has just walked in. I mean, shift, shifting, shifting sands in the region. Do you think relations with the North may change? Um, I would be surprised if they do. <laughs> the um, there goes me. a book. <laughs> Another <apologies>. book. <laughs> What is this going to be for the region? My apologies. North, uh, sorry. 
Um, North Korea, North uh, South Korea's policy choices. He forgot which Korea he was talking about. He's he's lost. Dude, he's like Brett Yormark at the Big 12 championship game when he's getting booed mercilessly by all those Texas fans, and he's like just struggling to speak English at all. That's uh, that's what's happening there. So just scurry them out. Say, excuse me for one second. It'll take me two minutes to open up this door and shove these two kids out the door yeah. as they go flying down the steps. Hey, you know, Bob, at one job, keep the kids out while dad's doing the important call with BBC. Don't nah. let that happen, Ma. Nah, those little creatures get loose, man. They find ways out of you. You can't put them away. You yeah. can't. You, they're just just too hard. Like I said, I got used to get. I used to have, I used to have to get busy because I couldn't find a spot to get a little action. I go in the minivan in the garage. Hey, I'll meet you in the minivan here in about fifteen minutes. They will have no clue where we are, yeah. and just let's just get it on. That's that's where y'all did your business. I do, I've done it before there. Oh yeah, the you can't hide in the minivan. closet. They'll, they'll find you in the dude. They'll find you in the closet. You can, there's no extra rooms in the house to do it. There's no bathroom. If you go to a bathroom and try to get it on with your wife in a bathroom, those little son of a guns know how to pick the lock of a bathroom door and find their way in. So we used to have to go out to the minivan, Rodney. We'd go out to the minivan, shut that garage, lock that minivan. You wouldn't leave the car running, but man, if I had to get well, me something, I'd get me a little something in that minivan in the garage to get away from them kids. Well, and pets aren't any better. Because I can tell you one thing. Whenever uh, one, my little girl dog over here pets, if pets. those things uh are, are tending to happen man yes she's pissed oh they get mad huh oh man yeah, yeah i'm a little weird I'm, about that too i won't do business with the dog looking at me or nothing the dog's got to be out the door i don't care about that dog oh man i can't i, I can't do that man they'll be looking at me try to sniff all kinds of crazy stuff hey, i ain't got time put, for it just put socks on that dog's paws Let's no, go. No. I, oh, no. So, so it's like I, I've got a I've got a sleep the pillow. dog up and you inviting the dog to have a fun time too. Dude, if I gotta have me some fun, I'll just put socks on the dog. Are you kidding me? Man, let's I've go. Got a, I've got a sleep pillow. You, you know, just you know, in case I roll the other way, kind of hold on to my sleep pillow. So uh if if those shenanigans are going on, that little girl right there gets a hold of that sleep pillow and starts chewing on that thing, and it's like uh you need to quit your shit. I mean, yeah, I mean, BK, you don't know, man. When it when you get to having kids and you want a little something, there's no place to hide. No, I mean, I've tried closets. I've had I've had a damn kid almost knock the damn closet door. Hey, what are you doing in there? I'm looking for a sweater. Hey, you, why I'm is mom kid. looking for a sweater too? Why does mom need to be in there? Lock the kids in the minivan. Lock the kids in the minivan yeah, crack, and then get it on. You'll be fine. I agree with you know, that. Like it's a great babysitter. It's a great babysitter. Put some tunes on there. You know, yeah. um, leave the car they running. Radio, they'll they fall leave, in. The car, they leave the car doors, running. Garage door yeah. slightly open. Leave the yeah. car running. Oh, my no. I'm a he he knows it all the way. He's, got, he's on to something. He doesn't even door. have a kid, and he is on to something. He is pioneering the way we parent. No, you're not. You can't take a chance on leaving the garage slightly open with the car running and the kids in the car. They'll be fine. Hey, hey. They'll be fine. They did worse in the 50s. They'll be fine. They were oh running God. around with lead paint yeah. in the 50s. What's yeah. going to hurt? Just make sure your car still has the catalytic converter, and you'll be fine. And, and you'll be fine. <laughs> hey, we're making more kids, all right? Like, uh, you, no. we don't need you. Y'all are expendable. My goodness. We're, you, guys were, you guys were the first batch of baby batter. Now we got it all figured out. <laughs> I love yeah. that little that little sliding glass and that little minivan, little soccer van. That was great. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. nice. we, um, when we first got to Austin, right out of the Marine Corps, man, we were in a little bit, like a little itty-bitty condo when we first got up here, right? So there was really no room at all and reed was about five four or five maybe but he came busting in the the bedroom one day and he saw me under the covers and katie's first reaction first initial reaction was oh it's okay buddy he's just checking for a bug bite you know what I'm <laughs> <laughs> really that, that's lie, that was the first lie yeah, instead of traumatizing the guy that's that's really the only thing that you can go with there so uh well, anyways, so yeah man out. bk you got to come up you got to be creative you got to come up with some stories uh, i'm just saying hey this is part of wwe here this match that right. you see up here this wrestling match come on now hey i thought y'all's uh so i thought the throwback thursday video might be the uh infamous bronco chase with the breaking news that we they oh, like yeah. broke, they broke into the masters to report that wow what? Right. Only fitting. That's the second time a major sporting event has that been he, broken yeah. into That's by right. 
Something involving O.J. Simpson, huh? Houston if the Rockets glove don't the fit, y'all full of shit. Well, um, now we're never going to know who did it. So that sucks. That's a tough one. Yeah, they know now. now the person, they'll come it, forward now. Because he's been looking. Like he's been I looking thought it was Kardashian that actually did it. Like Eric Kardashian. Ooh. Interesting. Eric? Wasn't he the lawyer? Rob Kardashian? Rob. Wait, no. Rob, Rob Kardashian. No, I'm, I'm, no. Just gonna, I'm just throwing names out there. You're Is thinking of Eric Estrada. That's chips. <laughs> <laughs> International House of Hair, Eric Estrada. <laughs> Oh, boy. All right, boys. I am going to get out in the yard and get some yard work done before I bed down here to the Masters for Mother hours Earth. on end. It's going to be sleep time. Yeah, I get my hands in Mother's Day. Hey, is you still feeling Shoffley? Uh, who do you think is going to be excelling on the first day, Buck? I'm going I'm going Rory. The Rory needs to have better than – you know, his first round generally he's been in the 70s. Yeah. I'm saying he's shooting 68 today, 67, 68 today for Rory. Yep. Yeah. I'm going to yep. go cry for the next two hours, guys, because my favorite athlete of all time has just passed away. So he gone. It, it's tough. It's tough. Uh, a lot of people sleep on OJ, and I wonder if it's just because he played at Buffalo. Like, didn't really get much limelight or, or headlines at, at Buffalo. Dude, but I mean, he hell, plenty, I, he had plenty of headlines. 2,000 yard rusher with, yeah. with like 15 or what, 14, 14 uh, games? 14 games 14 2,000 games. yards? That's crazy. Yeah. Yes. And he had, a, he had plenty of limelight when he was, uh, Playing at USC, or you oh, know, sure. that was running back university for a while. Track athlete. Well, and then when he was uh, when he worked for Hertz, remember when he that's would right. fly through the airport? Yeah, that's right, jumping all over the jumping over the top of those the the, the couches there in the airport. That's right. That's you guys right. are selling OJ short. He was a fantastic oh, actor. Not, um, I don't know if you guys have seen. Player. Uh, what was it? Um, was he in what, a dirty, what's the damn thing with uh, with Leslie Nielsen? Nielsen? What's the what's the movie with naked Leslie Gun. Wilson? The Naked, naked Gun. Gun. Yeah, naked he's in a naked, naked Nordberg. Gun. He's Nordberg in a Naked Gun. He's fantastic. That's where yeah. you know what. Oh, as a matter actor. of fact, they trained him for the trial. His what acting career trained him for the trial. He looked cool, calm, and collected under the pressure. Was he in one of those half a half a dozen, half a dirty dozens, or something like that? <laughs> he might have been. Hey, man, I don't know. I'm, if I'm too if the glove don't movie. fit, you must have quit. No, it's you're right? all full of shit. <laughs> I'm going to go take a stab at writing this obituary for OJ. Oh, yeah, right. Nice. Yeah, nice. All right, boys, well have a played, great one. Well played. Get the gloves, <laughs> my guy. Get the gloves. Killer Welcome deal, Chaos man. Theory. Killer we are deal. off and at it already. Firing on all cylinders on this Thursday. Throwback Thursday, as Bucky and BK likes to claim. But, yes, it is Chaos Theory. You can hit us up on Twitter, not the fake wags. You can hit Rodney up on Twitter at the Rodney R, and then on the Instagram at the underscore Rodney R, and then I'm on there at the Wagner Wire. If you are mobile around the town and around the city, make sure you hit us up on that Coda text line, 512-222-9328. And remember, if you are in this YouTube channel, smash that subscribe button if you haven't done so already, and tell all of your friends, Rodney. Yeah, man, uh, rest in peace to O.J. Simpson. Uh, I just saw the news, too. Um, it is out there on ESPN if anybody hasn't seen it. But, yeah, apparently he had cancer. I didn't even realize he was sick or or, or ill with cancer. You know, I noticed him on the on the Twitter uh, a few different times. Hey, Twitter he, world, because yeah, because he would always say it's yours truly. And, yeah, he's uh, taking my job. He was taking my fantasy sports stuff away from me. Yeah, he he kind of seemed like he was he was struggling there a little bit. But uh, you know, it's one of those things to where I, I've always said wags and 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 with this and again, we're not we're not sitting here making light of anything that that happened there. But I've always said, whenever that dude was going to pass away, if it was like on his deathbed. Um, if he did it, if he did it, you know, that he would confess or like leave a note or, and it would be like the biggest heist heist ever pulled off. Do you think he, he did, did that? Do you think he did it? Man, it's hard. It's hard I'm, to say. One hundred percent. It's it's hard to say. He one hundred percent think he did it, man. It was right after, and I think that he got off because it was right after the Rodney King trial yeah. or whatnot, where we. Uh, where you know the five white cops beat the hell out of yep. uh, Rodney King, um, the you know the black civilian or whatnot, and yep. hell, I was I was like in my teens, I can hardly remember that. But that's what I was gonna ask you, like, what, where were you at on the day of O.J. Simpson getting in that big car chase in the Bronco, man? And then you just said that the Masters were on. I hell, I wasn't even watching the Masters you at that point. You I really think I was know. digging around with my own club. Here's here's a great story. So so what was actually on that night? It was I think game one of the uh, of the Rockets and the Knicks in the NBA Finals. I and some buddies. Uh, 1994. 1994. 1994. 
I and some buddies had gone to Expose on South Congress, right next to where where uh, Clear Channel is now. And we were over there enjoying, you know, we were going to watch a game. They had the game on, you know, and uh, we're sitting there and the and the ladies are entertaining us or whatever. And the game starts. And then it is, all it's of, a Saturday afternoon, is it not? Or it's, it's it was, a weekend. I remember it was it was a night. Uh, I think it was a Friday night. Or, or I thought it was a I thought it was a Friday night or a Thursday. I, night. I remember I remember a weekend because I remember the daylight. I remember like the sun with the, yeah. the sun bla- glaring off of the white Bronco as the yeah. white Bronco. Yeah. It, it drove into the night. Yeah. So, so we're at the, we're at the strip joint and I, I mean, this is all going on and you know, all, all the TVs are on the Rockets game and then boom, here it starts, it starts. And like at that moment I had paid like the $20 for the, the personal dance or whatever. Very young back then guys, very young. I don't frequent these places anymore. <laughs> and, and I remember too, he's this got, was, he, so, he's got so, stakeholders in half of them. This, this thing is going on. And like the girl like stops and sits on my lap and is like, oh my God. Oh, she just said she just she stopped. She just parked it. She just she parked stopped. it. Okay. Okay. She stopped. Okay. And I was like, uh, what what's going on? Uh, but yeah, so okay. that yeah, that that's where I was. Um God, what's, that the, was... Best, what's the best gentleman's club in Austin? I'm, oh, I'm I don't curious. know. I, I've I never been to, I've, uh, I've only been to Sal, one. Actually. I am not lying, Sal. I am not lying, my man. Uh I, I tell some tall tales sometimes and I forget things. That I don't forget for a lot of reasons. That really happened. <laughs> <laughs> that really happened. I will find one of the fucking guys. I well, shit. Sorry, try not to say that word. I will find one of the guys that was with me that can collaborate that story. That's that's what we were doing because of the basketball. Uh, because of the basketball game that was going on, and yeah, like like BK said, interrupted a, a yet another sporting event. But you, you know, you you can't take away when you talk about all time great running backs. I mean, dude was amazing. Yeah, was I just amazing. usually like I'm I'm very reluctant to put him in my top five for some reason, especially like for all time or or old school running backs. Game and five, I, okay, okay, game I, five. I think it's because I just I usually forget him. Uh, and I don't know how you forget about a two thousand yard runner. Of course, when when anyone's you know approaching that uh, that milestone in a single season, you know the, the list comes up and you see OJ Simpson, and you're just like Buffalo, Bu- OJ Simpson for Buffalo. It's just like I think it, I think it honestly is because of Buffalo back in that era um, that you just really kind of lose track and lose thought of OJ Simpson, or at least that's that's my excuse or, or yeah. Yep, and he ended up with the 49ers right at the end, but he was all broken down and beat up by that. Yeah, one. a wash, you know, washed yeah. out. Okay. Yeah, that's and, that's and like Jason, Emmett, that's like seeing Emmett Smith on the Cardinals uh, with the Cardinals. Yeah, and Jason makes a great point to what you were saying, Wags. You had had all of that uh, racial discontent that had happened right before that, and you can go and watch documentaries of the OJ thing, and it's like that was the reason why that this was a situation to where he was acquitted. I mean, you can figure out it, it weighed in. It it weighed in a lot. It did. It did. There was a lot that was going on. We needed, uh, it, we needed to simmer some stuff down, and uh, from what I remember, we needed to simmer some stuff down in on the West Coast. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, and Jake, yeah, yeah, two thousand yards, two thousand three. As a matter of fact, in fourteen games, insane, right there, what he did. And then you know when Dickerson breaks that record, we're talking about C- Caitlin Clark's record, and it's like, well, you know this uh, the the previous record from Pistol Pete Maravich, you know they didn't have three point lines and all that should have an asterisk. I mean, the all the rushing records that have been broken post OJ should probably have asterisks because he did that. And like you said, that those Buffalo teams were not very good. And they I'm, were I'm, not I'm trying, very like, good at all. Do you do you put the asterisks on it? I mean, it's 14 games. Like that's insane. That is absolutely insane. Crazy. Um, hell, I don't even know if they had a bye week back then. No, honestly. no, I don't think they. I did. mean, that would have even been been more impressive because that would have been 13 games. But I think they played. I think they just played 14 straight. Um, so yeah, I'm you get. What you get two? Do you get three full games now? With eighteen mm-hmm. weeks, you get three full games. Yeah. No, I mean you got no. Well, you get the buy. You got the buy too. So all right, remove remove one. So you get two full games. Two full games, right? So what? Av- people running backs average maybe a century, may- maybe yeah. a buck. Uh, you know, a buck ten or something like that. I mean, hell, not not they don't even average over a century, man. Running backs are averaging under the century mark for for yards per game rushing yeah. yards per game like it, it nobody's just averaging 100 yards like when you get to 100 yards in a game that's a milestone like that's a good day for a running back 
especially yeah. in a in a passing league these days. But back then, I mean, sure, I guess you could you could you know warrant or cater to the league of being a a running league instead of a you know aerial attack you know wow the crowd high high paralysis offense and and high scoring games. So yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I guess you could sit there and say that you know OJ was fed pretty much a lot more than all other running backs moving forward. But I don't know if I can put the asterisks on it. Um, yeah, well. I mean, listen, listen to the, this stat. I mean, 1973, so that was the year that that happened, uh, that OJ did that. 332 carries for 2,003 yards, 12 touchdowns in 14 games. That's Jeez. pretty damn good, man. That's, <laughs> that is, that, um, that that is, is outrageous, a, man. Yeah, man. Um, yeah. Um, the rushing for 200 yards um, that season. Um, you can watch, yeah, yeah. Well, you, so, gotta, yeah. you have to figure he's got to have, you know, a, a few games close to, to 200 yards if he's, you know, eclipse in four or eclipse in 2000 yards in 14 games, man. Yeah. That, yeah. Just kind of looking right here. Started the season with 200 in game one, then ran for 219, dipped to 137, 124, 120, 157, 160. 137. Yeah. He dipped down yeah. to 137. Yeah. 171. Um, and then in the final game, in the final game, um, 916, 1973, wags, 250 yards. That's it. That's oh, now. Um, if you got it pulled up, can you can you pull up his receiving stats by any chance? I'm curious. Yeah. Like I, I've never delved into OJ Simpson's career. Yeah, let's take a look. As here. weirdly as that sounds, oh, like rushing. you know, we're talking about the immaculate and, and crazy season that he had. Um, but I I never even delved into it and looked. You know, dissected it, man. Which is weird. Me being a data guy and whatnot, I never you you would have think that I would actually pull some pull some stuff in like this. Well, no, man. And, um, yeah, fascinating news. You know, I'd come on here. I came on here and planned uh, to talk about you know Mel Kiper's uh, draft. That's why I, I tried to elude you from it yesterday, man. I wanted to talk about it. I had it all set up to talk about it today, man. I, oh, that's okay. That's good. I need to start being better about that and telling you my plan. My my. Oh, that's okay. Plan that's of the week. Right. Hey, dude. So I, I so, talk about I talk about the plan all the time, but I never tell you the plan. So so back to OJ in that 1973 season. Three games he caught passes. Um, one. Game three for 22 yards. Later in the season for 33 yards. The so next game, 15 yards. Back. Yeah, they, yeah, they were using they were using his legs, man. He was he was he was hauling the mail, and he definitely did. So, and then all the other stuff. I, I mean that that was, yeah, man. I just hope somewhere that there's he did. I, I know he basically could, has confessed to this, but just so somewhere. I don't remember him as the running back. I remember him as Nordberg from. The Naked Gun, like that's where Those I. Those movies first, are great, dude. That's Those where I first great. had a recollection of of OJ. I think I yeah. was in second grade, nineteen eighty nine, mm -hmm. um, is when I first saw uh, the Naked Gun, and uh, someone my my grandfather was just like, "That's OJ Simpson." I'm like, "Well, I don't know who the, who the hell OJ Simpson is," you know? Yeah, I mean? yeah. And and here where Jason talks about, I mean, it really is um, in that book. If you haven't read this, I I would uh, I highly recommend it, especially now. Um, yeah, if I did it. Yes, I did. It. And the details are like juice. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, yeah, dude. Pretty vivid details. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I, I used to have a I used to have a, a hillbilly buddy that would always tell me, don't bullshit a bullshitter. I read that book and I said, Don't bullshit a bullshitter. And so you guys remember Ryan, Nordberg, really though. You guys are I see puppet Matt. Puppet Master, no, you know damn well that you remember yeah, Nordberg. That's man. my man, John Molise, right there. He, hey, he's, he knows who Nordberg then, is. Nordberg, good to see you. And he hits Nordberg on the back. Goes Nordberg rolling goes down. down the stadium, <laughs> over. And you had the Queen. You had Reggie. Reggie Jackson. Yeah. I, see, see, I remember base. I must um, kill I, I started the watching The Naked Gun. Like, I wasn't going to watch it because it was a cop movie, right? And then yeah. my granddad gets me to watch it, and he goes, it's a baseball movie. They they talk that they have a baseball scene in here. I was like, yeah. okay, I'll watch it. Because I was, big, you know, I I, I I I don't like the Yankees, but I was a fan of Reggie Jackson. And my, well, that was actually because of my grandma. My grandma was a Reggie Jackson fan. Of all yeah. people, my grandma really loved Reggie Jackson just because of what he did in the World Series, of course. Um, but yeah, well, he was that, handsome. That, he was handsome man. He's a handsome. He was a good looking man. dude. A good looking dude. My grand, I think my grandma was into him. That's for sure. <laughs> so, <laughs> my, anyways, my grandma uh, was into Tom Landry. So I'm like, okay, whatever. I think everybody. I, I think my grandma was kind of into the Tom Landry as well. Um, yeah. Yeah. The, it's kind of hard to not be in the man with the hat if you were a lady back in those days, right? For anyway, sure. yeah. Um, yeah, it got me to sit down and, and watch, you know, the Naked Gun, and then all of a sudden, of course, if 
if you're a, a fan of Naked Gun one, you're going to be a fan of Naked Gun two and what is it? Two and a second? I, I don't even know. And then it's three and a thirty third. I don't know. Two and a half. Naked Gun two and a half. That's the sequel for it. But surely from the files from the surely. files of the police squad. Surely, Gun. don't call me Shirley. Yeah. Don't call me. No, Shirley. that was the air. That was airplane. Oh, that's airplane. Oh, that's sorry. airplane. Yeah, Striker. and then of course, Striker. Okay, that's airplane too. That's airplane also. Yeah, man. That, that's Striker. 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 Yeah. <sighs> Airplane's a good one. All Can't those get away classic, with that now. <laughs> all those classic comedies, man, with Leslie Nielsen. Leslie Nielsen, just a probably great. one of the kings of comedy that goes unsung, especially these days. Like my, my kid don't know anything about Leslie Nielsen. Hell, I think I saw a clip or a snippet of Roger or Aaron Rodgers trying to teach um classic comedy with leslie nielsen or whatever might have been matter of fact i think they were watching the naked gun yeah they were uh teaching you know the rookies or whatever from the new york jets about the naked gun and, and leslie nielsen or whatnot anyways it, it wags it's like one hell of a, when one I, hell of a when, spiel about oj simpson there when, when i'm doing these minutes. when i'm doing these live events and you know i have to play the national anthem it's like i want to play the L leslie nielsen version but it's like i, I probably should oh man and then he gets it he sits there he does this he calls he's calling a strike and he you know just unconfidently calls a strike and then yeah. the, the crowd goes <sighs> wild at the angel stadium and then all of a sudden he gets into it he gets moonwalk in and all this yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> he's oh, all dude. over the place dude yeah there it is and you want to be an umpire that's right <laughs> lieutenant frank drebin oh frank my Trump god from the files of police squad and everywhere oh, god, I, I gotta watch it reminded now, me of dude. my ex-wife and he looks at the damn silos and sees the big titty silos oh it's <laughs> Love it, man. If you haven't seen, do Walter yourself Payton. a favor. Do yourself a treat. In honor of O.J. Simpson, go watch uh, go watch The Naked Gun and see him as Nordberg because that's what I know him as. and not I knew him as, as Nordberg the actor, Yeah, not, not yeah. O.J. Simpson the great running back. Well, like we were talking I, I about. I kid, I kid. Tongue in cheek, tongue in cheek. When, when right, he did those Hertz commercials, he would like fly through the. And he, hell, he was on Monday night. The dude was. I don't a remember great, the Hertz commercials, dude. The you great, guys kept seeing the Hertz commercials. I don't remember the Hertz. Oh commercials. man, yeah, and, and he was a great football analyst. He used to be on. He was on Monday Night Football. Now I, remember, now I do remember. I do remember him as a color he was analyst really for. Good. Night I mean, he was really good, and that's why when all that other stuff happened, it's like I, I mean, you just. You don't know, you know, I always say, you know, when, when it's like, uh, you know, my wife will tell me, can you believe so-and-so are getting divorced? I'm like, I've never lived with either one of them. I, I don't know <laughs> out of the public image, how they're doing, you, you know? So I, I don't know what it's like. Because we mentioned, we mentioned USC in this conversation, right? Um, and, and just hell, all the running backs that seemingly that, that came from USC, I, I, you know, OJ Simpson. And then the next one that pops off my my mind is marcus allen mm -hmm. um and then of course uh just a, a whole plethora of running back or a slew of running backs that have gone through there is is usc running back university i tell you remember they had charles white uh, i think the heisman trophy winner in 1978 i mean and then reggie bush i mean yeah, yeah. Is, seriously, that, that, seriously let me I'm, I'm gonna put that question out there to the audience here is yeah. usc running back you and if not which university is running back university? You know the ironic Miami thing had right there. Yeah, Miami had themselves a nice little time with with mm -hmm. running back too. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. or hell, you could argue that Miami was was NFL U for a while. Where you mentioned where you mentioned Marcus Allen right there. Um, if you really dig into the chronicles and the whole story with Nicole Brown Simpson and and all of that, in the middle of that, at one point, was Marcus Allen. So oh, it's it's oh, like, okay. Geez. Now look now now Daryl, like I know I I know USC is known as as running back. You I'm maybe I misspoke, but uh, okay is is USC still known as running back? You with all the the new talent and, and crops that have come through. That's that's why I, I brought up Miami. Like Miami had themselves one hell of a, a damn day where they they produced basically any position to the NFL. And I remember what it was Clinton Clinton Portis. Uh, Willis McGahey, yeah, um, yeah, uh, Davenport. I mean, hell, you just go down the list, man. And Miami had running backs that they were just constantly just in succession of the next person that came through there. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm, I, I mean, and I, I'm not, I'm not remembering too many big names after Reggie Bush, or or at least they're yeah. eluding me right now from USC that has come out of that backfield. 
Yeah, um, no, they, they haven't. I mean, it's kind of kind of been like the the quarterback thing, you know. After Matt Liner, yeah, I mean, Georgia, Georgia's been a damn powerhouse for running backs. And hell, you could argue that Georgia was pretty damn powerful. Did did anybody come from come out of succession after Herschel Walker? Because Herschel Walker was Georgia. Um, I think, like, I remember, like, I remember they're sprinkled in between, but like, yeah. not like back to back to back to back yeah, to back. Like, no, no, I, like, I don't think you had a transcendent running back after after Herschel Walker uh, with what he did there. Because remember, the shit he would do, like, he would dive over. I saw Walter Payton mention right there. He would like do the Walter Payton just fly over the, you know, in the in the red zone, and so yeah, Todd Gurley, Todd Gurley, Gurley. there at Gurley Georgia. from Georgia. Yeah. yeah, see, in Georgia, like, um. Terrell Davis was a Georgia running back, I believe, right? Uh, the running back for for Denver back when Mike Shanahan had his his day his run uh, when Elway got his his Super Bowls. Um, Garrison Hurst, Garrison Hurst, a running back for Georgia that I remember that used to pop off. Man, he had what that ninety nine yard run with the San Francisco 49ers, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. ninety nine yards from scrimmage. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I would say George is probably up there. What about Bama? Is Bama is can Bama be thrown in there as, as modern day running back? You, I, th I think Alabama, you you would have to kind of factor in right now. I think Texas is on the cusp of that. As a matter of fact, honestly, if you look at Texas, I think you should factor Texas into this conversation too because you can go back to right. Earl, you can go Benson. back to Ricky, you can go to you know Mitchell. Uh, I mean, there, there's so many of these. I mean, look at how yeah, I many mean, Joe Walkers. You, Rodney, you hit, the, you hit the nail on the head, and you, you it must be like you're reading my mind or something. That's yeah. kind of where I wanted to finish this conversation yeah. up. Texas has had one hell of an all-time backfield. Absolutely. I mean, you look at these guys and I mean, I mean, you've had rushing leaders, you know, that have, that have come out of Texas and they end up there. Priest Holmes. Uh, I see him popping up right there. Thank you. RSC. Holmes, Jamal Charles, Cedric Benson. Absolutely. Ricky Absolutely. William. I mean, yep. Dude, yep. You, when you talk about consistent running backs in the league, I kind of feel like Texas needs to be in that conversation. They do. They do. I mean, because I guess OJ would have been, you know, in the early seventies right there, but I mean, you factor in Earl Campbell. I mean, Earl Campbell was, 76 77 78 in that era right there so it, and and even in the lean times wags texas has had has had really good running backs i mean that that's i know dbu has kind of gone yeah, away i wish from, i wish we would have asked this question before bucky got off remember we got to remind yeah. we we got to ask bucky this question tomorrow before we before mm -hmm. we get before he gets off and we get jumping and going man yeah but yeah go yeah. ahead i'm sorry go ahead well, no, 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 no. Just talking about those guys. I mean, the, the different great running backs that have come out of here and, and longevity. I mean, you've had guys that are, I mean, Jamal Charles, uh, I mean, that have played in the league for a long time, you know, and, and done really good things. And Bradley, what, what Bradley, we are, if you can't pick up that we are being facetious and, and talking tongue in cheek, yes. come on, man, you're, you don't get the show. <laughs> no, no, but, but here's the thing. Here is the thing. When, when you talk about OJ Simpson's football career, yeah, it's hard to not talk highly about the dude. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, I mean, he he was he's one of the greats. He's one of the great. He's in the Hall of Fame, isn't he? I'm sitting here, I'm sitting here <laughs> dismissing his career and talking about his his role as Nordberg. And you guys think I'm serious? Yeah, yeah you know, it's like actually I kind of am. Like I thought he was one hell of an actor. He, so, he's a great actor and a great analyst. I, I'm I just don't, you. I just don't remember him as as the Hertz commercial guy. So. He was well spoken. I mean, the dude, I mean, and, and like you said, dude, I mean, the acting, that whole trial, that whole trial, all of that, you go back and you look at it and some of the looks on his face and all that. You can't tell me that ain't shit that he didn't learn as an actor. I don't know, Rodney. I can't, I honestly can't even remember the trial. Um, That was kind of the point of asking the question is like, hey man, where the hell were you guys at on this, on this day when you saw, remember the white Bronco and OJ yeah. being arrested? Well, and then uh, the day you got like, acquitted. The day he got acquitted, oh my lord, that was. Oh, well, we just that. gave thirty. We just gave thirty minutes to OJ Simpson. Are we good with that? Thirty minutes. We, to... we, we gonna we gonna be able to move on and talk about something else. We will and we shall. But hey, before we do that, let's talk about audiovisual consultations. If you're watching a replay of OJ Simpson, or if you're watching any type of sports that's going down now, if you want to find out who running back you is modern day, you got to do it with audiovisual consultations. 512-255-8678. That's avconsultations.com. For the past thirty five years, they've been setting the standard in audiovisual automation. Get your chance to go right now and look at their website. Maybe you'll get an idea of what you want in your head. If you don't then uh, just come over to my house and check out the two 
TVs that I have, or go to BK's house and see the four TVs that he has. I'm not in, I'm not saying that you have an open invitation to BK's house, but you do got one of mine. So come on over and we'll party or whatnot. Anyways, do it Tom McKay style with audiovisual consultations. 512-255-8678. That's avconsultations.com. The very best in audiovisual automation. Yeah, great time to have that uh, set up right now as the Masters finally underway. How about a word? Here we go, man. Great, our great uh, friends uh, over in beautiful Bee Cave. It is Covert Bee Cave. We'll hear from them today. Hi, I'm Dan Covert with my wife, Hayden. Welcome to Covert Bee Cave. Our newest location in the gorgeous hill country includes Buick, GMC, Cadillac, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram, and hundreds of pre-owned and certified vehicles for you to choose from. We have three service departments that are ready to take care of your car, truck, or SUV with 86 service bays to accommodate any repair and get you in and out quickly. Come visit us today to select the vehicle you've been dreaming about. Covert, born and raised in Austin. It's 1909, Covert family serving generations of Texans and beyond, CobertBeCave.com. Check them out today. Yeah, Rick, like I don't think people remember how dominating Ricky was as a running back. Mm -hmm. Like I remember, like this, it's half the reason why I went to Texas, right? Like when, when I was at Maryland, there's this guy, I'm going to throw this dude's name out here. You guys don't know him, but a really good friend of mine back in the day, JT Smith, right? He was always probably the only dude from where we were at that was just in love and infatuated with the University of Texas. Um, it put the planted the seed for me to go to the University of Texas. And honestly, he did that with the whole recruitment of Ricky Williams, getting me to watch Ricky Williams. I had no idea who Ricky Williams was, and he was really into college football. And he's like, dude, you got to watch this guy run. You've never seen anything like this dude run. Turned the TV on and saw the Texas Longhorns with freshman Ricky Williams, who mm -hmm. came, looked like he was playing fullback at the time. Yeah. Um, yeah. And a few few of the, the spouts was just impressive and as a freshman um planting people on their ass pancaking people and then also taking the rock and um being able to, to tote it for you know tremendous yardage and and getting into the pay dirt and then hell his his career only flourished after that right uh run ricky run was the the adage that you uh, would always you know tout out or, or or speak in your mind or whatnot or scream out as soon as the dude took the rock and started running man um yeah shout out to jt smith for getting me into uh into texas football and actually making that number one recruitment video to get me to go to the university of texas was watching all the highlights of ricky williams just run, a montage of ricky williams just running the ball for four years so yeah, yeah. man um no i i can't think of any other real iconic running back in and i'll i'll say that ricky ricky williams is still modern day era running back right I can't remember somebody that left an impression like Ricky Williams has in college football. I um, even even if you're talking about like the Georgia running backs and the the Miami running backs, yeah, maybe Derrick Henry, but still not as not as polished and not as as robust as Ricky well, Williams in college career. Yeah. And I think with with Ricky, you know, the fact that he broke um, Tony Dorsett's record that it stood for so long, um, and then of course it got broken. Who who broke it? The Ron following, Dane. Yeah, Ron, Ron Dane. yeah, Ron Dane. Uh, yeah, Ron Dane broke it the following year. So I, I think that was that was a big thing right there. But Ricky's time here, uh, you know, I remember when he came, the Hawaii game where he kind of debuted right there, and you're like, what in the hell is this? Yeah, and what am I watching? Yes. What am I watching? Yeah, it's like this dude is a machine. And and the shit that he came out and did, man, it, it, it was unbelievable, his career here. And and I know that, you know, in the NFL, the, there were some ups and downs and so forth. But but he's a good one, too. If you go back and watch Ricky Williams, the a Football Life, uh, the documentary there on, on the NFL Network, that's a really good one to watch to, to see. When you look at his accomplishments um, in a career that, you know, starts out, he's starting New Orleans, and then there's a gap in there, then he's gone, and here he comes back, and, and there's all this back and forth. When you look at what Ricky really accomplished in the NFL, dude, he had one hell of an NFL. Oh, yeah. Very the underrated. hiatus that he took. I mean, seriously, the hi the hiatus he took to go to the Himalayas or, yeah. or wherever. Yeah. Dude, yeah. I, I need to break. I need to just have a, a thirty minute conversation with Ricky on his experience in the Himalayas, like yeah. just on survivability alone. Like fuck football. I don't. I mean football. Well, I know what you did in football. I want to know what happened outside. I want to know what's going on up in your mind, my guy. Yeah, that, like, that's, that, that's the conversation I want to have. That dude, it, it's such an... Right, in, in, Ruse, you're with me, my guy, 100. 100 such an intriguing Ruse. figure, you, man. You remember when he goes to New Orleans? To the and Himalayas, it's like, Ruse, he, to the Himalayas. 
he would go do the you know he would do the the post practice or post game interviews. He wouldn't take his helmet off. You know he yeah. had the shield and it's like. Yeah. And now, and now, now, social anxiety, all of that is very much understood. At that point, oh, he's an asshole. I think you can you can give credit a, a lot of credit to Ricky Williams for kind of pioneering that, right? Um, I agree. I agree. Making, uh, making that making that come to surface that. for a lot of athletes. Yep. Well, yeah. and, and I mean, and, and seriously, I mean, when when folks want to talk about Ricky medicating himself, like what we're talking about right well, that, now, who doesn't? Why, yeah. Why was he medicating? He himself? doesn't. Because he's dealing with shit. You know. So um, anyway, Wax, well, I got to tell you this. So this is so. What crazy. do you got to tell me, Roddy? What do you got to so, tell? Me? So on the Twitter, on the X, I followed OJ. I still follow him. Uh, I think it's hey, still Twitter world. Like every time that he would post something. I would make a stupid comment. And right now people are retweeting all the stupid shit that I would say. Like he tweeted something and I said, great take. Keep slaying my man. It's what? gotten, it's gotten 70 retweets. Wait, it, what, who did? Hour. Oh, I, I fuck with him. I don't care. I don't know him. Hell, he ain't going to find me. OJ. Yeah. He, he tweeted something else out. I think he was at the golf course and I replied to his tweet and I said, sounds like a killer time, buddy. <laughs> and that's been re that's been retweeted like twenty nine times in the last hour. <laughs> hey man, the gift that keeps on giving. Social media, social media, <laughs> my guys. Hey, so Mel, Mel Kuyper's you know yeah. second mock draft is out, and we are in the month of 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 draft season. It is uh, we will have our NFL draft here. My, by the way, are we doing anything live? Are we doing? Are we going out the plug? You know what? Man, I was I was hoping that we would get to do the plug ideas, thing, man. Ideas, ideas. Yeah, man. We're gonna talk to BK. We're gonna see if we can do some live events. Those were fun. Those draft things were fun. I got to yeah, do a couple. They of those. were really fun. I I loved mingling with the crowd. I loved drinking with the crowd. I loved you know just talking football with the crowd. Man, I wouldn't drink too much. We would just have ourselves a, a nice little old wagon. Well, I time, would. That's for sure. <laughs> Maybe two-handed a little bit. Put the Get the Batmans going from Pluckers. <sighs> mm. Mm, yeah, we need God. to, man, we, we need to get that gig. We need to get that gig. I think we, I think we can I think we can knock it in. I yeah, think we, we can lock it in. We got All right, so we got 2024 that. Mel Kuyper's first two rounds, Rodney. Um, have you seen this lately? Have you guys seen this? Oh, yeah. Yep. Um, Shocker, surprise, surprise. Kayla Williams is going to the Chicago Bears in whatever. number one. Jalen Daniels, or excuse me, Jaden Daniels, however, to uh, Washington. We've seen that a few times. Drake May, we've seen him to, to the, the Patriots. Here's the thing that I think the Patriots do. I think the Patriots actually take Jaden Daniels. If Or excuse me, I think they trade down to the Raiders. The Raiders jump up to, drop, to get Jaden Daniels. And then the Raiders take maybe Bo Nix, or excuse me, the Patriots take Bo Nix with the Raiders pick uh, that they acquired from the trade up. Moving so, back. Yeah. Moving, moving back. back. They'll move back and acquire Bo Nix. That's yeah. what I think. That's, that's the Patriots move that I think they'll do. We'll see if it comes to fruition. They got Arizona taking Marvin Harrison Jr. That hasn't changed. That's like since day yeah, one. That's, that that's that seems that to be locked in. Now there's a projected trade. Vikings use their extra first round pick to move up. All right. And then doing that, they take the fifth round pick and draft J.J. McCarthy. J.J. McCarthy with the steam rising. Draft stock has gone up, just transcended tremendously here, my guy. He is the fifth overall projected pick in Mel Kuyper's draft board. Yeah, since since his pro day, it's been like, I mean, and he did. He had a very good. Did pro he day. pull a gold? Did he pull a golden football out of his ass? He, like, you what know did what he, he do for his pro day? Like, I saw him. I saw him throw a ridiculous, you know, on the run, going opposite from his throwing, and you know, moving left, moving from right to left, and then threw a just a dart on the damn dime 70 yards but again that's without pressure that's without having to evade anybody coming yeah. at you and that's with shirts and a t or shorts and a t-shirt yeah I, I don't think it was i don't think it was uh, it wasn't a golden football i mean he he did good but i think what he did really good that day is he had a silver tongue that dude interviewed oh, yeah. well that dude talked to executives and coaches well. And I think that's the one thing that I've heard some, from some folks that I know on the inside towards like people are just so impressed with the way that he spoke and how he carried himself, which is important. I mean, that's that's going to be your franchise sure, quarterback. That's the, face, that's the face of your team. That's the face that's of your the, That's going to be the voice of your team. So yes. Like it or not. 
that that that's going to be what sells tickets. You know, people people can bitch about Dak Prescott all you want, but the dude's a stand up guy. He speaks well, and that's what you need to do. That's a huge part of this, and that's that's what he did. Yeah, and I appears think, to not do anything wrong. You know, right. off the field right. doesn't doesn't bring a negative impact to your to your yeah. franchise or your organization. Well, and, and I think Harbaugh. You know, when, when Harbaugh moved on, I mean, Harbaugh helped in that as well, to where he helped sell him. And of course, if, if what best Harbaugh, quarterback in college football, best quarterback right. in the draft. Yeah, you know, Jim Harbaugh is like E. F. Hutton. When Harbaugh speaks, people listen. So, boom. Uh, I, I think uh, a lot of good things for him there. But I, I mean, I don't go into Minnesota. Um, Going to have some good weapons, but. Um, <laughs> There could be worse landing spots. He's, he does. He has an arsenal of of weapons in terms of wide receivers. Man, um, that yeah. backfield's a little, mm. uh, you know, a little a little sluggish. You know, not really. Not it's kind well, of. They signed Aaron the Jones. Back, they, they signed Aaron Jones. So so that. But it's still hurt. like how how he gets hurt how a lot. You, how good do you expect Aaron Jones to be in the first year with with Minnesota? Like I, I or at least maybe with the first week or first. Uh, four weeks, the first quarter of football, you'd think that uh, Aaron Jones struggles to find like a little bit of the chemistry, even though you go through a damn um, NFL workouts and and what in and, and mini camps and whatnot. I still feel like it's going to take you a little bit of time to kind of get on the same page with your new team. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. Uh, but that 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 seems to be that that seems to be pretty solid on that pick right there. Next up is your Giants, and and man, your your, your Giants have kind of been. I thought that there may be a quarterback thing there for the Giants, but now that with Malik Neighbors here, the wide receiver yeah, out of yeah, LSU, I, I disagree with this. I, I say, you know, if Joe Walt's available, the Giants need protection for Daniel. I, yeah, you they need don't need that more than anything else. Yeah, right. You've been pulling, you've been pulling wide, and I get it. You need a top. You need at least a a first tier or a top tier wide receiver for Daniel Jones just to give him that weapon right but you're 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 able to find decent weapon i can't say decent weapons i can't even say decent weapons with a straight face you're able to find some gap some gap bridge mm-hmm. gap bridges mm-hmm. at mm-hmm. wide receiver pulling them off the practice squad so um again like that you're not helping daniel jones that much with with an arsenal there of ammo with wide receivers but i mean hell I, I think when you have a chance, when you have a chance to get a, a a tackle like Joe Alt, all right, the best tackle that's in this draft. I'm not mm-hmm. trying to say that wide receivers are a dime a dozen, but man, this is a wide receiver rich. I would say it's a wide receiver rich draft than offensive linemen. I would say that there's there's more scarcity with the offensive line position in this draft than there is, um, you know, with with wide receivers. This is this is a wide receiver. A uh, heavy draft, and I also feel like it's it's kind of a a, a running back draft too. Even though that yeah. you know everybody's putting a lot of limelight and a lot of uh, spotlight on the quarterbacks here, I think it's all bad spotlight. It's, I think it's, it's bad lighting. You know, to not be too cute or too coy here, but um, yeah, man, it's uh, I think you're getting sold a shit show for for quarterbacks and the real talent is the wide receivers. I think anybody can tell that it's a wide receiver heavy draft, man. And I, I, I I'm totally in agreement with you and you Take Joe Alt if, you, if you're the giants take, you got to take Joe. If you, you got to go to Joe Alt and he's set to go to Tennessee right after that. But I mean, cause the whole thing is, I mean, you're going to draft this guy and the whole thing comes back to the, the wide receiver there with neighbors. I mean, the question that I have is, you, you know, the capable quarterback that's going to be throwing the, the rock to him. I, I mean, and if, and if the dude's getting pressured, I mean, you're, you're going to run this dude across, the middle and you're gonna get him killed it's also coming off an acl too so yeah. um yeah so it's like not, dude, you're, not looking you're, it's not looking good for, for right the, for the quarterback yeah, yeah so it's like Giants. if i'm really if not. i'm neighbors i'm like oh, fuck man uh, do i have to go there <laughs> jeez um so i, I don't know but joe alta and, and of course look man the past couple of seasons um the giants have drafted wide receivers they just haven't been top tier mm-hmm. uh wide receivers if if you will so well, I don't know. We'll again, see. Uh, yeah, again, moving on. I mean, then who's distributing you know, the ball? That goes back to who's distributing. Right, the ball. right. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's yeah. it's a partnership, man. It yeah. is an absolute partnership, dude. So that lands us at the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, you guys know what I what I wish the the Falcons would have done if they were able to the trade up and go get um Kayla Williams or whatnot. I thought that would have been a great landing spot. Be that as it may, that is not how it's going to turn out. Dallas Turner is the projected pick for the Atlanta Falcons sitting at the um outside the outside linebacker for Alabama. Now this is another guy that I wouldn't mind 
um, the Giants getting. But since the Giants just shored up a deal with Simmons, uh, extending him for one more year, I thought Simmons was going to be out the door and, and leaving and going to uh, Pittsburgh or one of the AFC teams that are looking to, to shore up their defense or whatnot. Yeah. Um, AFC North teams that are looking to shore up their defense. But uh, shockingly, Simmons stays put. The Giants invest money well where they need to in that aspect. Um, I thought Simmons Simmons was kind of like a, an experiment with him coming over from Arizona, right? You know, a kind of just a, a, a dynamic linebacker that really, you know, isn't too much of, of a, a rushing sense. It's going to give you too much of a rushing uh, threat there. But, I mean, hell, you know, the, the dude can – do pretty damn decent in coverage and kind of like a hybrid linebacker there. Almost, I, I won't call him, uh, you know, one of those speed, one of those Erlacher speed linebackers, but the dude's got some wheels and he can get it for being a linebacker. Um, so yeah, I, I think it was a good investment there, shoring up your defense there and looking into that. Um, but now, man, uh, the question still remains: What do you do with your wide receivers and what do you do with your quarterback? Because the Giants still can't figure that out. So yeah. and and this move for Atlanta, I mean, it's a great move for Atlanta. I mean, because what what they've done, I mean, they they've shored up. I mean, I guess you know the quarterback, <laughs> uh, Kirk Cousins. I mean, there you go. And then you already had all the other great pieces right there with the youngsters uh, that you had there. But uh, here you go, you address the defense, which you needed to because they were horrible against the pass rush last year. So now you got yourself a, or would possibly have yourself a pass rusher right here from Alabama. So of these, of these first few picks right here, taking all the whole Caleb Williams and all that right there. I think when you really look at team needs and what they've done in the off season versus what they're looking to do in the draft, man, I, I think Atlanta with that pick is, um, is, is in a really good spot. Really good. And then Chicago Bears are up again. And you'd like to think if that Joe Alt's probably gone here. Right. But if Joe Alt isn't gone, man, I'd, I'd want to think that you would be able to, to jump up and take Latham, um, you know, the the tackle from Alabama. But a lot of people are, are penciling or Mel Kuyper's got a doonzy in here um, penciled in to go to the to the Bears to help Caleb Williams with another uh, another wide receiver, you know, to help that mm -hmm. arsenal. But I think with the moves that were made in the offseason, Keenan Allen coming over to yeah. the Bears. DJ um, and then there. DJ Moore, you know, have, you know, coming off the season that he had with Justin Fields, you'd think maybe they would try and invest into their offensive line to keep Caleb Williams upright because that seemed to be the, the problem with Fields, right? He it se he was seemingly running for his life at times. Um, you want to shore up the the security of your quarterback, and you kind of do that with an offensive tackle. If you know, I'd be I wouldn't be surprised if the Bears you know jump up and take Latham here. Um, but we shall see. I know you know the Bears want to give uh, all the success and all, you know, as much potential as possible to Caleb Williams and give him every, every bit and ounce of potential to succeed. So you, yeah. I guess you could argue that you do that with a wide receiver like Adunze, who's he's a top, he's a top tier wide receiver. I mean, look at the, sure. the year that he had with, you know, Pinnock spinning him the ball and hell man, I, I still think, you know, you take the safe route, you lay up here in, in terms of, you know, tribute to the masters throwing some golf terminology out there you lay up here and you you take yourself latham and have yourself a nice little protection policy for the quarterback caleb don't need protection dude that dude can do anything okay yeah i he's, mean he's, 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 he's a lot different in the hearing. nfl man everybody everybody's on the same type of speed at the nfl <laughs> that's, that's what i keep hearing i mean he'll be fine yeah yeah i love your point yeah justin fields is no good well he's no good when he's running for his life and getting hit you know what i'm saying justin fields so, Justin Fields has just I, I I don't have the running back stat down that's I don't have it rem you know remembered correctly but there's a it's it's somewhere along the lines like he's got just as much rushing yards or even more rushing yards than Lamar Jackson has yeah yeah sure and 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 different scenarios there where where Lamar Jackson it's by design Justin Fields it's like holy shit here they come I gotta go <laughs> two different scenarios right there yeah Justin Fields I love it CB I love it. I love it. Good pool. Good pool there, man. You don't go 10 cup and go for it all. No, you're right. Good good terminology <laughs> there on the Masters, my guy. Good terminology. Hey, we got any updates? Do we have any updates on the Masters, Rodney? Uh, they're back to I'm I'm trying to watch on ESPN and they're back to OJ. They're they're back to OJ covered. So let me go to must Masters. Be, must be a slow day in Augusta. 
<laughs> let's go. Well, they started late. Hey, let me tell you something that's not – if it is a slow day in Augusta for you and you're looking to speed it up and, and kind of have a little bit more fun in your day, you got to get out there and play some pickleball, especially down there at the at the Baldwin South uh, location right now, man. There's pickleball courts out there. It's demo days out there for pick sports gear right now. you got to go check it out. But also, you got to gear up with that designed sports gear that's right here in Austin. Look no further than Pick Sports Gear. Their equipment is crafted with precision and passion right here in the heart of our city, known for its loving sports and innovation. From the top of the line paddles to premium accessories, they have everything you need to dominate the court and style. Plus, like I just mentioned, the demo days are happening right now at the Baldwin area down south on Lamar. So check it out. It's your, oh, just hit this. It's your chance to try out the latest gear firsthand and score exclusive deals. Check out the website for locations and details. I just told you that it's down at the Boudwin South location. Gear up with Pick Sports Gear today. Get ready because their clothing line drops this summer. Show off your Austin-made excellence on the pickleball court. Now, go play some picks. Go get some picks and go play some picks. Learn more at www.picksportsgear.com. That's www.pixsportsgear.com. Danny Willett, I hope I'm saying that right. The uh, the sole leader, uh, minus two through three holes at the Masters very early on. Again, they started later. Something that I'm interested to watch today with the Masters is I think Tiger Tiger tees off, I think, about 3.30-ish or so our time. I don't know if he gets 18 holes in today. Okay, so, so a prop bet that I saw with Tiger, how many, how many fairways does he hit? Mm, uh, <laughs> well, I don't know. Over-under on, over under on, are, on are you talking – are you talking – the whole tournament or, no, or no off yeah from from round one how many fairways okay. does tiger hit off the off the tee oh man that's hard to say because i can tell you that over, it, under, it, over under i'll give you over under 10 10 and a half um i i think it's probably over but i think that depends on a lot today because let's say tiger let's say tiger only gets to play 12 holes today you gotta take that i just gave you 10 i just gave you 10 Fair, I mean, like that number should be 13, right? You would think yeah. 13, maybe 14 and a half. I, I'd say 15 or 16. Um, but so, so if Tiger doesn't get to play 18 today, he's going to have to make that up tomorrow because I think the weather's going to be fine. So, I mean, do we get in another situation where Tiger has to scratch? I mean, with his back and all this other That's stuff. That's what I was going to ask. Like, how's his back doing? I know. I mean, I know he gave up humping and all this other stuff before this, but I mean, I he don't know what? if that's. He gave up what? Humping. Humping. Sex. 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 S-E-X. Now, see, I don't understand that. Now, I understand that if you're playing football, right, because you want to keep, like, the testosterone levels up and, and everything, but it – but I liked – how do I say this properly without embarrassing my wife? I like to <laughs> – There's no way. Just do it. <laughs> I like to have every ounce of release drained the night before <laughs> – I go to the golf course because I like to be as relaxed as possible and not no milk anything when I'm on the golf course. Um, I like, and usually your knees are a lot better. Your back's a lot better right after, after you get all that shit out of you, you, you know what I mean? Better. So, you sleep better, right? You get a get better, better night's yeah, rest. You're, you're in your zen moment. You know what yeah. I mean? You just feel like, you know, you know, nothing can bother you, you know? Eh, yeah, sure. Go spend that, you know, Spend that much yeah. money. I don't give a shit. Yeah, you want yeah. to buy that? Let's <laughs> it's a win-win for everybody. Yeah, no everybody's better. better. Everybody's it's, having a great day when that happens. She gets to go Amazon crazy. Uh, guys, yeah, um, he's having a great day, man. So, so I've seen this a couple of different times during our show. Um, it, we announced, uh, or the the network announced, I think it was April first, that Trey had moved on. Yeah, you, you know, Trey's hey, doing hey, something dude, different. Dude, he's got I, stuff I mean, going on with ESPN, man. Like, yeah, you know, I, I don't he, see get booked on pods like this. Trey. Is is, Trey is a very successful. Trey's got a lot to do. Dude. Yeah, Trey. Trey's a very talented individual. Yeah. I mean, so it's like I there's see. No love, there's no love loss here with Trey. It's yeah. the same like Harge. Harge, yeah, you know, got a good spot, man. I was texting with Harge this morning, and it's like everybody still gets along. Yeah. We all you love know? each other, man. We're yeah. all going to Costa Rica, man. You know. So, you know, and I know some folks were posting when, when Aaron went to the other, to the one Oh two and it's like, oh, good for Aaron. I, I mean, it's probably a good thing that he left the other place. I, I mean, good for him. I mean, they're building something there and that's great. I mean, they've got a good lineup over there. Good for them. I mean, the more yeah, the guys, there's, there's no love loss here, man. Um, everybody's it's, it's shiny, happy, you know, people here. Um, REM style. Yeah. So. And so, and so just a, kind of a, a programming note. So I'm going to be gone tomorrow and Monday. 
So, so these guys have been made aware. <laughs> yeah, so, so women not, weak not in the legs, these. Edward Ramos. Women weak in the legs. You're absolutely yeah. right. So, they, so when they I'm make your tomorrow, knees weak, my man, they make your knees weak. So when I'm gone tomorrow, y'all don't think that I got fired. Of course, when I come back, no, they no. May, they may tell me you don't have a job here no more. But that's, that's not the current plan. Over my <laughs> dead body, I love Keenan Womack. We're gonna have Keenan Womack come on as, yeah, as, as be cool. spell for Rodney. But uh, as much as I love Keenan, I wouldn't do this show without you, my guy. Oh, dude, we have is... we have set ourselves one hell of a, a precedent here for Chaos Theory. I tell you, we 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 knew that this was going to be. I, I knew this was going to be really good, but um. Well, we've been so, trying to get this going for yeah. what a couple of years now, but the the radio station wouldn't allow us to have him because they needed you to carry Saturdays and they needed me, me to carry Sundays. So yeah, yeah. So so here we are dropping f bombs, even though we're trying to limit that a little bit. And nobody said anything about that. We're just trying to do that on our own hey, here. Uh, before we get out of here, <laughs> oh, that's right. We got to tell you about autograph. And guys, I'm telling you, next Thursday, a week from today, there will be. An eight dollar pair of tickets for that Texas Michigan ball game. That right, that that's four dollars a piece, guys. Even I can do that math. Lockhart educated. Four plus four is eight. That's next Thursday on the Autograph app. If you want to get rewarded for listening to Texas Sports Unfiltered, our friends there at Autograph, <laughs> co-founded by the Congressman Tom Brady. What does that tell you? You're, You're bad a thousand a day, my guy. You're a bad yeah. a thousand. They are, they are redefining. The, the fan experience for users and how you get rewarded for your fandom. And part of your fandom is listening and watching us right here on Texas Sports Unfiltered. So, guys, all you got to do, exclusive merchandise, those tickets that I'm talking about, that's next Thursday that they're going to drop that pair for eight bones, guys. So you'll want to get that done. You're already listening to TSU, so go ahead and get rewarded for it, you know. Some of this stuff you got to sit through when Wags and I are rambling on about the juice is loose for 30 minutes. Get rewarded for it. And all you got to do is check out the uh, YouTube link down at the bottom. That takes you to the autograph uh, app is uh, right there. You can also go to your Google Play Store or to the iTunes Store. And all you got to do is search autograph <laughs> and use the referral code TSU to get rewarded. Got to use that referral code TSU for the eight... Eight dollar tickets that are going to be coming up. Go ahead and get it in there while you can, man. We got a lot of uh, a lot of contestants so far, so make sure you get it in there. All right, continuing this conversation with Mel Kuyper's draft board here, right? His mock. Um, we left off with Latham uh, going getting selected by the Chargers. Uh, that was in a a mock trade with Minnesota. That's where Arizona would have landed, or excuse me, the Cardinals, bleh, the Chargers would have landed after that trade that they took in agreement with. Um, Minnesota. Now, Denver Broncos, they're taking Quinion Mitchell, the cornerback out of Toledo there at the number 12 spot. That's where Kuiper's got that. Now, Vegas, right? Vegas sits here at 13, but remember my uh, my scenario that the Patriots could do, right? The, this could potentially be where the Patriots at. So, Kuiper's got um, Talese uh, Fagua or Falga. I can't, I never pronounce his name correctly. Falga. Um, Falga from Oregon State. Now, a lot of people have Falga over Latham. You know, some yeah. or some people have you know Falga over the late over Latham, um, and also uh, Fasano. Like they got two tackles going right back to back after this. Uh, Alou Fasano from uh, from Penn State. You guys know how dominant he was in in the Big Ten this year. He's fantastic. Uh, this is a name probably top three too, but he's fallen you know at fourth on the draft board in terms of tackles for Kuiper here. So again, this could all fluctuate and change at the end of the month. We'll see how that happens. But they got New Orleans Saints taking him now. Remember. The aforementioned, the aforementioned Patriots that we were talking about with Drake May, they could potentially be here at this spot and take a Bo Nix. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. But, uh, clearly, that's not what Mel Kuyper's thinking. Yeah, you know, I I really thought, because Kuyper had been had been pretty strong with, with Bo Nix going to Denver. Um, and, and I think maybe he like you're talking about Fashanu. Like he was, he had Fashanu yeah. at two for a while, at the second rate yeah. of tackle for a while, and now he yeah. doesn't. He's got him at four. Yeah. So, so with that happening, I mean, that, that really goes back to your really good point right there that if Denver really has their eyes on Bo Nix, I mean, if new England wants Bo Nix they're the, you, you know, do it, make the move. Um, so yeah, I was really surprised to see the change right there. And I did read that Kuiper said he wanted to go Bo Nix to Denver, but, um, he goes the other direction. So yeah, a little, little, little bit of a shakeup right there. Scrolling down. So you get the first longhorn off the board in in Kuiper's projection at 18 to the Cincinnati Bengals and that's Byron Murphy. Byron mm -hmm. Murphy going over Sweat. Now of course I don't know when was this article released here. This Mel? was th this was after the after the weekend. 
I okay. Think this was, okay. So, so I, that's, I, yeah, that fine sweat. That's gonna that's gonna take a toll on Mel's projections, I would assume. Mm -hmm. Um. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the Bengals taking Murphy, and then after that, the Rams looking to get busy on the outside linebacker position, taking Liatu uh, Leitu from UCLA, hometown kid, staying in the hometown area there, and then Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, they got uh, Kuiper's got the Steelers taking Graham Barton the guard slash center out of Duke. And, it, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to air a little bit of caution to the Pittsburgh Steelers here. You're taking a Duke football player just so everybody, <laughs> you know, you're taking a Duke. I'm telling you right now, because I got a Duke football player on the giants. You're and taking Christian Leitner. <laughs> that's not even funny. Um, but anyway, stop, I'm kidding. That, that's hilarious. Uh, anyways, um, yeah, you're, you're, you're getting, you're getting that type of caliber of, of athlete. Yeah. And you're getting a Daniel Jones on your roster. Yeah. I'm kidding. Well, but you're getting somebody, you're getting somebody from Duke. I just, I highly advise against that. Well, they were Jared better Burton. this year. They were better this year. Uh, yeah. Duke. Uh, Quality yeah, of at, opponent. At the beginning, man. at the beginning of the season, they were all right. They were all yeah. right. At the yeah. beginning of the season. Then, uh, you know, the the competition started the acc started catching up to them and the acc <laughs> yeah, is catching up real to them, damn we got, quick we got some problems um speaking about acc talent um jared verse jared verse the defensive end uh from uh florida state they he is projected by mel kuyper to go to the miami dolphins and then philadelphia eagles just getting i mean the, the eagles just seem to knock it out of the park and uh this kind of fits the eagles right because they need to shore up their secondary here how about nate wiggins from clemson nate wiggins from clemson mm -hmm. going to um be penciled in there from kuiper at 22 going to philadelphia and then yeah, of course they gets on another tech the stud gets on the board here zay worthy is projected by mel kuiper here at 23 going to the los angeles chargers via trade through minnesota cleveland houston uh, th that's uh, that's a need. Th that's a need. For do you the think Worthy goes over? Do you think Worthy goes over Mitchell? I, I'd I'd go AD Mitchell for a win. I feel X. like Mitchell gets drafted yeah. in in terms yeah. of wide receivers over Worthy. Like 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 Worth Worthy's got undeniable speed. Yeah, absolutely. Speed that can't be taught. Absolutely. But, I mean, I feel like again, this isn't a slight to to Worthy because I feel like he's an NFL talent one hundred percent. But I feel like Mitchell is a prototype. Oh yeah, and and Mitchell Mitchell is much. Mitchell more... reminds me of Dave, of, of um. Of Michael Thomas coming out of, yeah. of college. Yeah. Mitchell Mitchell is much better for what you lost with Keenan Allen and Mike Williams. I mean, he he fills that void a hell of a lot better than X Man. Um, but again, I mean, they're both great. But I mean, I, I go AD Mitchell right there, and then the Cowboys. The Cow now there's a need right there. Tyler yeah. Guyton, the offensive tackle Guyton. out of Oklahoma. Yeah, Guyton. You need that. You need that, especially if you're all in on your quarterback. If you really are all in on your yeah, Adonai Mitchell still projected uh, bottom of the first round to the Lions. Now that's a good spot for, Ooh, for Mitchell. You want to talk about a place really... where he can flourish in, in a surging Detroit Lion team Dude. with uh, arguably Jared Goff, a guy that seems to like it, it feels like Jared Goff has, has figured it out. It really yeah. does. Like it really does. Like I know that he, I know that he used to get a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of flack or whatnot in, in his early years because he would make some really stupid throws like that. You the, the coin phrase Jared or oh, that's there's typical Jared Goff throwing the ball late over the middle. Um, mm -hmm. doesn't seem to be doing that anymore. It seems to be you know making the right decisions and going through his progression progression trees. Um, you know quickly and 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 astutely. So, yeah. Look, if you're asking me, I think Jared Goff is is probably top five and has solidified himself as as top five, maybe top seven, top Absolutely. seven quarterback to be to be safer. You know, what I mean Absolutely. in the NFL. Yeah, and clutch, and and you add a weapon right there. And the good part about this uh, uh, for AD Mitchell is, yes, I mean, you get, to, you, yeah, you, get bro. Play, you get to play your home games inside. I mean, your home games are in the in the whatever it's called, the uh, uh, Ford, uh, Ford, uh, whatever. So so you play inside. I mean, you got to go to Chicago. Green you're Bay, in whatever. a dome. You can say you're in a dome. You're in a dome. You're in a dome. You got to go to the frozen tundra of Lambeau. Field. How Lambeau about that quarterback Kool Aid McKinnistry going to Baltimore? That solidifies and makes that defense even better with the uh, Alabama cornerback and the coolest yeah, cool, name in the draft. Cool. Uh, I I gave him the nickname Burnt Orange Kool Aid because uh, uh, it, it felt like Worthy and, and Mitchell had his number that year or that day at you know what week two when we played these guys. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, and then um, Xavier Xavier. Uh, Legate for South Carolina. I hope I said his name correctly. Um, and then uh, Rosengarten, 
Rosengarten to the San Francisco 49ers. That seems like a 49ers pick to sure up their offensive line to make sure that they can continue to plow the road for Christian McCaffrey or whoever is, you know, spelling Christian McCaffrey in that backfield. Yeah, that rounds out. That's the first round of Bell Kuyper. We can get into before we go. Before we go, I want your thoughts on what it says about the beginning of day two. Look at the beginning of day two. Giants. Yeah, I know. Like I still. That's your dude right there. I don't. I don't think he's. I've saw that. I saw. I don't think he's going to be there. And I think there's a paywall on this, so I'm sure that most of our, most of our uh, listeners and and subscribers can't see it. But what Rodney is alluding to is that there is a projection that one Bo Nix, because you didn't hear me call his name, right? One Bo Nix could be going to the New York Giants, in, in move of a trade. And yeah. I'll leave you with that tease because we'll talk about that on Monday when Rodney comes back. I won't spoil it. We'll talk about it on Monday. I might flirt around with it tomorrow. With he, yeah. I might edge Keenan a little bit with it. Yeah, kind of nudge him a little, little bit, bit of an edge. And for Texas fans and Cowboys fans, like we were talking about uh, there with uh, Harrison Jr. being number four at Arizona, here it is again, 56. I mean, there's J.B. John Brooks going to the Cowboys as a running back. And th- that one... I mean, I've seen that in a lot of different places to where that that seems to be a match made in heaven. Lord knows that is a need, especially if you can go get your offensive tackle uh, out of uh, Oklahoma in the first round. Boom, there's the running back thing. Pair him with what you got left, and boom, let's go. Um, boom, again, let's Dallas go. working through the draft, working through the draft. Let's not go find any free agents or anything. Got seems to be the cheaper way to do it, right? It, it apply really, your it, apply your problems to the draft, or, or it really uh, is supplement your problems to the draft. Hey, CB. So I have been watching X Men ninety seven. Last episode, yeah, I haven't seen the last episode yet. So, um, or or this this past recent episode yet. Uh, full transparency, I was up till probably like four thirty in the morning last night watching Fallout. So if any of you guys have Amazon Prime, um, there is a there's a parody there's a video game out there a video game series and franchise called fallout right it's been fantastic fallout one through three fallout new vegas fallout uh 76 um it, it's it is one of my favorite stories and series in terms of video games uh done by bethesda game studios and now they have a parody uh, not a parody but a a show out um on Amazon Prime that you can watch every episode, first season's out, 10 episodes, and I got through about five of them, and I forced myself to turn it off. I probably would have stayed up until we went live, but I would have been just nothing but blah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I wouldn't be been able to think. But, yeah, man, um, Fallout is – it is – it is sensational. Of course, you guys know I'm into really – I'm in the post the post apocalyptic scene. I swear by it. Like, when it does happen, be on my team because my team is going to win. That's all I got to say. And whose side am I on? I'm on I'm on my side. Like my side will win. As we get Be ready to bring make as we get ready to bring down. Jeff on. Uh Van Ruyen, will it? Bryson DeChambeau at minus 2 very early okay. in the first round of the match. Jeff, how are you feeling, brother? Been worried about you, man. We bring on Professor X right now from X-Men. A little bit. I didn't. I didn't cut. I didn't get a haircut. I got a clean shave though. This <laughs> you look uh, good. You look clean, Mac. man. I. Uh, How you feeling, man? You feeling I, better? I don't know what I had, man. Uh, the doctor narrowed it down to like some either an electrolyte imbalance, uh, vertigo, which I've never dealt oh, wow. with. Wow, vertigo. Uh, yeah. Were you, were you discombobulated? Could totally, wow. totally. Holy uh, shit! Were you in yeah. the water? Huh. Were you in the water at all? Did you didn't go diving or anything? Like no, that. no. Or it was the start. Uh, I did have some drainage in my left ear, so I said it could have been the start of an okay. of, of an ear infection. Ear ear infection. But I'm on, man. If it's got the word, I texted this to our our group last night, man. If it's got the word anti in front of it, I'm probably taking it right now. So, well, man, I'm um, good, man. This is this is the first day in like you know in about a week that i haven't felt like foggy upstairs right i'm glad you're getting some relief at all you know what i mean but dude you know great to have you back you know in the lineup that's for sure man but yeah dude good to see your face too bro yeah it it, it got to the point man where any you know when you anytime you just sit up in bed and it feels like everything is spinning and you know yeah dude it's it's bad that's only on the weekend you're feeling better bro yeah thank you wags i i i tried to that's that's the only thing I could compare it to, Rodney. It's just like yeah. it, I, I 
didn't have a single sip of alcohol, but it's like you got the worst hangover ever. God. Yeah. Yeah. Bless. Yeah. yeah. And you can't drink enough water when that happens either. So sure. and the Jordan, fact that's a great question. My, my, you know, as you get older, your plumbing doesn't work as good as it wants to. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, mine does. It like, flows great. Like shit, mine don't, man. I got we ain't even gonna talk about that. That's yeah. a different that's yeah. a different yeah. conversation. I've been, you know, yesterday when I started to kind of turn a corner a little bit, dude. I felt like I was peeing every five minutes. So <laughs> yeah. That's a, Man, I wish I, I feel like I got to go pee every five minutes, but nothing comes out. That's my problem. Yeah. Uh, you, were, were you live? Were you live during yeah, OJ? That was 94. Would have been 94. Hell no. I was, I, was, I was born December 2002. I wasn't even a thought yet. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. You're younger than my kid. Well, you're, I was you're in the Marines younger. already. Jordan, I was, I was in the Marines already at that time. Shit, yeah, I'm, man, I'm I'm 21. I don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> keep you uh, away from my daughters, man. You're you're but, like right in between their ages. Jeez, Louise. <laughs> you want to bring you want to bring a guy like Jordan to your daughters, Rodney? Yeah, yeah. Jordan, yeah, Jordan come can on. boost your family up. Let me tell you. Yeah, yeah, that's all right. That's right. All right, boys. I got to get out of here, man. I got to well, be speaking about peeing, going to the bathroom, and nothing coming out. I got to make that attempt right now. You guys get right. out of here, man. Y'all have a great time. I'll be paying attention to you guys on this Thursday, man. All happy right, uh, man. happy Longhorn Day. Yay. I got to pee. <laughs> all right, boys. I'll see y'all here in a little bit. All right, all right Rodney. Um, all right. You don't think there's any correlation with your sickness and the eclipse? Dude, I don't know, man. I don't know. Weird, I thought, you know what? Weird I shit could be going on. I thought about it, man. It's like, is my body just off kilter or what? But it was rough, but I'm feeling good today, man. Uh, I've got to think I would BK filled in for a show. Uh, Hank South and Colin Kennedy. So I want to thank everybody that filled in while I was gone uh, in my absence. Trust me, this was not a, a vacation day or days off. It was, it was, it was brutal. Um, but at any rate, I'm back. Jordan, I know you guys have talked a ton of recruiting the last three shows. So I did there is some team stuff that I wanted to get to today. Um, but I do want to encourage everybody, if you're not over at Horns 24-7 already, first off, what the hell's wrong with you? Second off, get over there, ASAP. Uh, we got the insider posted up. Uh, Chip's got nuggets from spring practice. A lot of really good stuff on the secondary. It starts off with a nice little Quinn Ewers, Steve Sarkeesian anecdote, and then it really gets into to the defense and some guys that are standing out on that side of the ball, Some maybe some things changing. Uh, just in terms of how aggressive maybe Texas is going to call some games, we'll get into that, but uh, get over there. That's the insider. You got that. You got plenty of spring football notes and a little, uh, little intel on the portal picture coming together for Rodney Terry and the men's basketball program. So, Jordan, let's go ahead and start with the team news, and that's Samaje Burrell. You know, we'd heard from a couple of different people that he's no longer with the team. You no, know, Sark put out the statement last night that it's an indefinite suspension. No matter how you slice it, it's at this point, it's pretty safe to say Samaje Burrell has played his last snap for, for the Texas Longhorns. Yeah. Um, you know, play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Um, so yeah, it, it's an indefinite suspension. Yeah. Um, but we, we aren't expecting him back on the roster. Um, and to be completely honest with you, uh, I actually spoke with a source, like probably would have been last Thursday or Friday, mm -hmm. um, who actually told me a linebacker was going in the portal. Um, <laughs> and I didn't, you know, check who it was. But as soon as the Tavondre Sweat stuff happened, yeah, I knew the other car was Samaje. Like the, the the day that the day that um, Tavondre got videoed walking out of the the courthouse or whatever, mm -hmm. um, or after he got born, I found out that day the other car was Samaje. And never I found that out since he made the most sense for someone to go on the portal. I called my source back from Thursday or Friday and kind of pressed about it, and they were like, "Yeah, so." Yeah, uh, he been, was, I guess uh, maybe was would that have been Monday? I think. Yeah, I'm not sure, but um, he was going in the portal regardless. Yeah, is kind of what I was told. So, um, that being said, I mean, and also like he didn't he play a snap last year. I know he's a freshman, um, but yeah. So I don't know. Uh, obviously, sad. Um, you know, you don't want 
you know, it's just someone who's the face of your program, like Devondre Sweat, kind of, I don't want to say letting those things happen. He obviously was under the influence too. Um, and everyone, I see all the Texas fans being like, why is Samaje suspended? He had, doesn't have any charges. Like he, he's going to get charged. Um, he, he fled the scene of a crime. Like he, he's going to get charged. And um, obviously when you fled the scene, of, flee the scene of a crime, you can't get your toxology report. But like, you know what I mean? So a felony, yeah. It's a, yeah, in the scene of an accident. So, so yeah. So, so and it sucks. I mean, Samaje Burrell was one of my favorite kids to cover. Um, always pretty energetic. Uh, did a lot of backflips too. You know, a fun player to cover. But, um, I mean, yeah, like it. This is what happens whenever you do stupid things. So. Yeah, I. Here's the deal, man. And I've been where you're at now, Jordan. You know, when you when you cover recruiting, you get to know these kids. Sometimes some of these kids, you you get to know them from the time they're eighth graders or freshmen. I mean, they could be in middle school when you start to get to know some of these kids. Um, and, you know, j- you could have a, a really good kid come from a good home and it could be one just insanely stupid decision that ends their time at a football program. And, you know, what? You can, you know, you can read the police report and, and all that stuff on, on all this and start to connect the dots, but it doesn't mean Samaje Burrell is a bad guy that, you know, we need to tar and feather him in public square. But, you know, it, it's one of those deals, man. Playing football at the University of Texas is a privilege. Uh, anytime you're at a you're at a prestigious, you know, power conference program, you're at a blue blood program, and it's a privilege to play there. And can you get a second chance to prove that a situation doesn't define you? Yeah, hundred percent. I'm all for second chances. I don't necessarily think though. Sometimes, based on the nature of the offense, sometimes that second chance doesn't need to be at that particular place. That second chance may be at uh, a Texas State or a North Texas or you know wherever. You know, maybe you know, going to transfer somewhere in the Big Twelve, going to TCU or SMU, getting closer back home. Whatever the case is. Uh, you know, we all love the redemption story, but that doesn't mean that Sark has to be the one that allows the redemption to happen under his watch. You know, some some offenses are just are just at that point where it's it's best to just part ways. So, uh, you know, I, I say that to say it, it's hard. I'll take your word for it on the and and I you know I know Mike Roach. Mike was close with Samaje, so I you know I, I know what Mike has told me about Samaje. Mike's been close at North Crowley program. I'm not going to judge the kid off of the situation and say, oh, he's a, you know, a turd or whatever it needs to go. But, you know, it, like I said, he can get redemption. This doesn't define him, doesn't have to end end his football career. But that doesn't necessarily mean Steve Sarkeesian has got to be the one to give him a second chance. Yeah. Um, interested where he's going to land because um... – I mean, I don't – so I was covering Baylor at the time, but Samaje Burrell almost flipped to Baylor with like two weeks left before signing day. Um, and I can kind of break that down for you. So it was actually Mike Roach and I working on that. Um, I actually I, – during his senior season, I ended up going to like two or three North Crowley games somehow, and it was never to go see Samaje. It was to go see someone else they were playing. Yeah, but I would end up seeing Samaje, and so we kind of, I don't know, developed a a close relationship or whatever. And then uh, it's about two, three weeks before signing day, and he calls me and tells me he's going to take an official visit to Baylor. And I'm like, what? <laughs> like that? They had never. I started covering Baylor that June. Samaje committed to Texas in like March, so I had never heard of Baylor and Samaje at all. Um, and so I'm like, well, why are you, what are you doing? And one way or another, the addition of Anthony Hill at the end of that class, um, kind of made him maybe want to look around a little just cause he figured, you know, my opportunities are going to be diminished at Texas now. Cause they just landed Anthony Hill. Mm-hmm. Um, and he looked into Baylor, um, and had an official visit booked. And I think was even looking into scheduling one at TCU as well, but, all that got stopped once I called Mike and let him know about the Baylor OV that it was scheduled. And he told Texas sources, 
which called Samaje and told him he wouldn't have a scholarship if he stepped foot on the Baylor University. <laughs> so yeah. he didn't – ended up canceling the visit, ended up making the decision that, you know, Texas was too good of an opportunity for him to pass up. And so he committed and signed. Um, and I guess now we're here a little over a year later. So uh, about a year and a half later. And, I mean, it, it look, it, it sucks. Like, it really does suck. Yeah. Um, uh, you, you talk about – all the things that Nick Saban said about Henry Ruggs, how he never like dealt with any problems at Alabama, you know what yeah. I mean? And his career ended in one night off one decision. Um, not that Samaje's career is over. I think someone will give him a, a shot, but um, it might have to be a Juco or something like that first. I'm just, I'm not sure how many schools are going to be willing to uh, take the PR hit and the gamble on a linebacker that didn't play any snaps as a freshman that comes with a DUI. Yeah, well, you know, he he's got to get what whatever legal ramifications are going to come from this. Any kind of transfer, that stuff has to be sorted out. Uh, where is he? You know, where's his academic standing at this point at Texas? Uh, there, there's a lot. There's a lot to figure out there. There's a couple different layers to this deal. So, you know, he can he can get it back, man. He can get back on the right track. And and again, you know, I. Just looking at some of the stuff in the chat, I mean, CB said, knowing Sark's own personal history and you still pull that, that's horrible. I, I don't, to me, it's, I, I take Sark's personal history out of it. Like, I don't, I don't even consider that part of it with the situation you're dealing with here. I think it's, you know, it, it, the, the putting yourself in that situation was not bright. For either of them, and I'm, you know, uh, based on, again, this is based on reading the police report and the facts that we have out. I'm not completely absolving Tavondre Sweat from being innocent in this either. And trust me, that's not looking good on it. I, I'm, I've reached out to someone that I trust yesterday on NFL Draft Matters. That situation's not helping Tavondre with his draft stock at this point. Trust me, it's not. And, you know, the, 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 the league knows, and I think you'll see his draft position reflect that. Uh, so, I, you know, you made the decision. You put yourself in that situation, but I think for Samaje, it was the decision after the fact. Once the, once the accident happens, the response was, of all the things you could have done, that's probably the worst thing you could have done was just, flee and and not 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 deal with it not face it up front like i said it's it's it doesn't make him a, a stupid kid or a bad kid it's just not a very bright decision and you know that's contributing to him pretty much pretty much being done at texas at this point yeah um and there is more uh, i'm not sure if other parts will come out but there is more to it that i'm gonna call you about after we're done jeff um yeah. Because, yeah, it again, it's a shitty situation, um, especially to happen right before, you know, Texas is going to have like 10 players drafted. Mm -hmm. they, they won't be talking about the 10 players drafted or that Xavier Worthy or Byron Murphy were the first guys drafted. It's going to be about, well, their teammates of Andre Sweat at 441. And you know what I mean? Yeah. We know how the draft works. We've seen it. So, yeah. yeah and... I mean, I don't know. Um, like Tavondra, you I don't know if you could have done anything worse besides like uh an assault crime. <laughs> because like, dude, you already had this rep for being a partier, you know what I mean? Like you can't I uh, I was I was gonna I was gonna leave that out, but that's the person I talked to made that very clear that teams teams had teams got that impression and this situation did not help that and then you know for some teams it's it's um you know the teams that were questioning whether they wanted to take him or not jordan it's almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy like see i told you that's exactly what's gonna happen if we were taking the guy you know he yeah. tavondre sweat's still gonna get drafted right he's yeah. still gonna get drafted at, at this point though kind of just based on i don't know if you've heard the same scuttle but i have i would imagine so instead of being maybe you know kind of mid second to early third now he's probably looking at maybe late third, maybe even going early on day three. Yeah, I don't, I don't know where he's gonna go. It's gonna be interesting because I mean, look, like you're a partier, you got a DWI, and it took you six years to, kind <laughs> or five years to be five, however many years he was at Texas, 
to be a draftable prospect or draftable where you want it to be drafted. Um, so like, yeah, but Hey, I mean, it makes Byron Murphy look a little bit better. Um, he didn't yeah. have off the field issues. And, no. And, and, and for Tavondre, you know, I think it's still, it's still part of, it's still part of growing up, you yeah. know, and, and he, he's admitted that there were times where maybe he didn't take football as seriously as he needed to. And also he wasn't helping himself. Like I was told from various people, like he was not impressive in interviews at all um, at the combine. And and it was more so like, I don't uh, like just the way he got things done at Texas um, wasn't a ton of like, film analysis and breakdown and other things like that he kind of was just better than other people which whenever you go into uh a conference room to go sit with the whole nfl team's front office Mm -hmm. and like their owner at the combine who's thinking about investing a first or second round pick in you and they kind of get the vibe that you barely ever watched film or know how to break it down or anything yeah it's not gonna help you so right yeah uh that's that's the you know look we I didn't even know have I been out did we talk about the we talked a little bit about the Rasheed Rice stuff last week because I I was I was not out yet when that stuff happened yeah you know Rasheed Rice going where he did and the Chiefs taking taking him um it's funny after the fact that a lot of now you hear a lot of people say man I don't know why the Chiefs took him like they knew all this stuff. Dude, NFL teams are willing to overlook a lot of red flags. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, if you can help them win football games, right? But it, it's almost they would rather deal with you know your off the field stuff. But the the stuff that that they're going to frown upon is the perception, right or right, wrong or indifferent, that a guy's lazy or that he doesn't care or that he's not invested. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like this is where we draw the line. Yeah, yeah. It makes street no racing, sense. Street racing, street racing like, will allow lack of yeah, film. Like, uh, uh-uh. like I think we, happen. I think I talked about it last week, but like, I I called a couple sources after the Rasheed Rice stuff, not because I wanted to talk about Rasheed Rice, but because I know a couple of the other guys that were involved at from SMU, mm-hmm. and uh, I was like, this isn't new for. Rashi, right? And he was like, dude, fuck no. Like, <laughs> we had to get him out of trouble for street racing like at least a dozen times across the time he was there. It's wild, man. And none of that is like, I'm pretty sure Rashi Rice has a clean record up until two weeks ago. So, yeah. you know, and I'm unfortunately, that's kind of how it works across college football. You only really hear about the really, 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 really dumb things that happen like this past weekend at Austin. Um, but there are a lot of times where, you know, you're not going to hear about stuff. So, yeah, I don't know. So we got another scrimmage this Saturday, huh? Yeah, I, I just I'll, I'll add this, man. Um, I just feel like we we've stretched Samaje and Tavondre into almost 20 minutes and probably time we out. have. Yeah, but I'll, I'll end it with this just to kind of I want to go back to your point about the kind of kid Samaje Barella is kind of guy he is from, from what you know. And and I'll I'll just I'll throw this out there, man. It doesn't get mentioned now. And we'll see what happens with this lawsuit, this extortion lawsuit and, and, and things are going on. I haven't heard anything about that in a minute, but. Wait, Dak what? Pres- Dak Pres- I was, I was talking about, I'm getting to Dak Prescott. Oh, I'm like, wait, hold on. <laughs> no. Da- Dak Prescott had an, an alcohol related incident. It was either before the draft or before his last year at Mississippi State. I can't remember. But, man, you won't, you won't find many. Be- and again, I could be, you know, you might mark the tape. And if something happens with this extortion lawsuit that proves he did something nefarious, then go back and call me an idiot, but dude's been NFL man of the year. Like you, you hear stuff coming out of that Cowboys locker room. People would tell you there aren't just many better dudes in the NFL than Dak Prescott. And even he had one of those alcohol related incidents, man. It's just, it's just one of those things that happens. It doesn't have to define Samaje Burrell doesn't have to define Tavondre sweat, but what you do with it from here, that's what's the important thing. Yeah. Tavondre, Tavondre's had to, he he got he got bonded out of jail and then like had meetings I think with the one with the Titans and one with the Seahawks. 
yeah, that's a hell of an icebreaker going to a going to a team interview for one of your 30 for one of the being one of their 30 visits. So all of this stuff, you know, it, it can either define you, it, it can be the reason why things go the way they go, or it could be like, ah, oh, yeah, well, yeah, I remember that happened, but he he's not that guy. Yeah, thank and thank you, C B for that uh that reminder. Yeah. There was the spring break and Man, I actually have a buddy who's in the background of those videos. <laughs> Do you really? Yeah, it was like, yeah, it didn't seem real when it happened. It still doesn't seem real. Um, but, uh, but yeah, man, um, uh, my man, my man, Matt Butler. I've uh, Matt's told this story. Um, yeah, Dak got arrested March twelfth, twenty sixteen, for a DUI in uh, Starkville. Anyway, um, damn, I'm surprised the Starkville police really submitted that like i'm not even trying to be funny but like that's yeah it's it's, it's sec country that's kind of how shit rolls so well, you know and, and, especially yeah. after dak just had him as what the number one team in the country the year before like come on the quarterback yeah, we, um I have, I, it, uh, this is sarcasm obviously right right uh, just want to make that clear no no for real but for real like it never it never ceases to amaze me when you hear what gets swept under the rug at schools and i'm not mm -hmm. talking about texas but there's there's plenty of other schools i've heard about whether it be players whether it be coaches stuff that goes on that we that gen pop never hears about yep so yep. at any rate um yeah let's let's move on with the scrimmage on saturday i'll tell you what man it's uh i, I don't feel like i'm not tooting my own horn here uh, at the risk of repeating myself, I don't want to make it feel like the position battles we're really watching going into the scrimmage, Jordan, and, and heading into the last week of spring ball, that it's still all about, you know, finding that right mix on the offensive line and kind of your star corner, what do you do with Jade Barron situation? Mm -hmm. But those are still the two things that are top of mind for me. You know, the the Neto Mezulu gets some run in the scrimmage because DJ Campbell gets hurt and I think for Kyle Flood now you've you've got a really interesting scenario on your hand where you're going to leave spring football. I'll even throw Cole Hudson in there in that group because he's got a proven track record as a starter. You start a, a full season big time college football. To me, you're a proven commodity at least in terms of you got some skins on the wall. You know, people, you know coaches coaches have a set of expectations for you. Kyle Flood's going to leave spring ball with seven guys that he feels like are starting caliber players. The four returnees plus Cam Williams, Cole Hudson, and Neto. That's a really good problem to have on the offensive line. Trust me, I've said this before, I'll say it again, man. It beats the hell out of the years where you're like, all right, can Texas find five dudes with a pulse who can maybe not get a quarterback killed? You're, you're way past those days. The offensive yeah, well I'll, I'll, Offensive line depth and culture, Jordan, is where is where you want it to be right now. Man, think about there's a player who started last year that was in that era. Or fuck it, not in that era. He was that era. Christian Jones. Yeah. Like yeah. you know the amount of times it used to be like, oh shit, Christian, like, come on, please block this guy. <laughs> like early on for him. And like mm -hmm. Chip always did it. And after a while, I think it was kind of OD. But like Chip would mm -hmm. always be like, Christian Jones is really getting drafted, guys. And it's like, yeah, he yeah. is. He, he came a long way. It was Kyle Flood. And that's mm -hmm. also what happens when you have an advantage of a COVID year and these other things, redshirt years, and you can be in college that long. Yeah. Christian Jones, you know, Sam Cosme got the benefit. I always like talking to Cosme about this because he, Sam Cosme was, got to Texas in 2017. So he was the last recruiting class, part of that last recruiting class that got to Texas before you had the the four game rule right it was you play one snap in a game you burn your red shirt and sam cosme was was the last guy to go through like the actual red shirt process where they don't even have to dangle like that oh you may get a couple of snaps in this game in mop-up duty like no you're red shirted you're on the practice squad you're not traveling you're just you know you're you just kind of exist you're out of sight out of mind for the staff pretty much for a whole season but the, the but the benefit he got from it from getting an extra lift and being on the scout team, that's how Sam Cosme goes. Jordan, did you did you get to see any Sam Cosme uh, in high school? Because I know 
I know Lake Travis and Atascacita played one. I think it was a state semifinal. I mean, they, they might have, but I sure as hell wasn't watching for okay. yeah. Sam Cosby. Um, um, but, hey, last uh, Atascacita player Texas signed up until Nate Kibble. Yeah, yeah. Uh, good dude, by the way, Sam Cosme. Um, Is he still in the league? Yeah, he's with Washington. Okay. Yeah. Just, I don't know, linemen are hard to keep track. Like, if you're not a franchise dude, no one really knows where you're at, respectively. The, the G.I. Joe Commandos, whatever the Washington franchise is. The commies. Them. Yeah. <laughs> Calling themselves to stay ahead of the law. Um, uh, real Cosme quick. got the benefit of a red shirt, but, you know, it, you're at the point now where you don't have to play young offensive linemen unless, they, unless they're just the best options you have. Like, that whole group, man, for – you know, Neto got to do it. Uh, Cole Hudson really didn't get to do it, but Neto got to do it. Cam Williams, I, I, to me, got to do it, even though he played, I think, every game as a freshman. I and mean, he's on the field goal team, field goal PAT team. So, I mean, you're that's a good way for a guy to get his feet wet, uh, but didn't get too much action. But the, the Jaden Chapman class with Chapman and Connor Stroh, I know Peyton Kirkland had a knee injury, but that whole group pretty much – got to redshirt because they weren't needed. You didn't need to go into your depth that much to play those guys. So I say all of that to say, man, the offensive line culture at Texas is finally at a point where I feel like it's where a big time power football program, power conference football program should be where you're not just having to scrap together and be like, all right, let's hope we can maybe have, you know, a solid depth chart and pray we don't have any injuries because we don't have anybody else. Like, no, you, you're you going to go into a game with like seven or eight dudes that you feel like, man, if we have an injury, we can put that guy in and we can be all right. You're telling me you don't miss Patrick Fahe or any of those guys, any of the any of the gang, any of the old guys? I was going to say, man, you're, 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 he is the recruiting coordinator at Cedar Hill, so he is an important coach in our profession. But but Marcus oh, Hutch, okay. was, <laughs> Hutch was a part of some of those offensive lines that uh, – had the Just press box left, going left, crazy. He left, left a little bit to be desired. You know, I don't want to throw too much shade, though, because Hutch and uh, Taylor Doyle were part of that offensive line that won the OU game in 2015, where Texas ran for 300-plus yards. <laughs> basically got basically got a 14-0 lead in the first quarter and then, like, went in, like, four corners offense. <laughs> Whatever the football equivalent of, like, the basketball four corners offense is, that's what Texas did, but. They ran for 300 yards. Man, it's – have you ever thought about, like, the teams that – like, the teams that Texas fans thought, like – okay, wait, wait, wait. The stretch from Tom Herman's last year mm -hmm. to, like, the tail end of back. Okay. Any of those teams from, I don't know, like that eight, nine-year stretch somewhere in there, there was a couple that I, as a, as a kid – in high school or in middle school or whatnot was like, okay, like Texas isn't going to the national championship, but they're going to make a new year six bowl. And then, you know, my heart gets crushed. Right. Mm -hmm. How many, like, have you ever thought if you were to put any of those teams versus this current team now, their asses are getting ran off the field. I, I think and like we, we felt at times I felt really good about, some of those teams, but like looking at that team compared to what Texas has now, it's like I'll a give, it's like a G League team. I'll give you two teams. I'll give you two teams. Uh the 2013 team, which just ended up having a dog mess full of injuries, right? Uh that team, and I'm not saying it would have changed anything for Tom Herman because the you know the writing was on the wall, I think, really after the 19. Pretty much when when he fired all his pretty much all of his ride or die guys except Oscar Giles on his staff, like Craig Niver, Jason Washington, when he ran all those dudes out, fired Todd Orlando, kind of knew the writing was on the wall. But I really wanted to see what that 2020 team would have been able to do with a full off season, you know, no COVID interruptions, and what kind of confidence that group could have gotten. Cause I think had all things been equal. Texas would have gone to Baton Rouge and beaten LSU. I'm I'm almost that's I'm as about as certain of that as, as anything else I could be certain about. Yeah, I mean, didn't LSU absolutely suck that year? I mean, I know it was COVID, so it was hard. It was but. COVID, yeah. Well, they had lost a lot from the draft, and then once 
you know, COVID happened and it's like, hey, we're playing 10 game schedule. They had a metric crap ton of opt outs. Jamar Chase opted out. I think Stingley opted out. Stingley might have even played a game and then opted out the rest of the way. I don't remember. But- <laughs> Jamar yeah. Chase. Jamar Chase looked around and was like, "Fuck no!" Like I'm yeah. not. <laughs> Hell no! And he still went what three overall after uh, sitting out? I think five. I think it was fifth. fifth. But like the two, yeah. the two, the two guys in that 21 draft. Like you forget. Like yeah, uh, Micah Parsons and Jamar Chase didn't play football. Period. In the during the 2020 season. Yeah, they they and and uh, you, dude, I, you remember like all the fuss. Oh my gosh, I can't believe they're doing this. It's gonna, yeah, doesn't seem to have impacted either one of those guys in a negative way sitting out that 2020 season. I think Jamar Chase and Michael Parsons have done okay for themselves in the NFL. Look, I'm not a fan of that and sitting out. Like, if you're on Scully, play the damn game. But I mean, I understand, I get it, I, I get it. So but, yeah, I mean, shit, Texas might win that game. Now, that was the thing with Tom Herman. Like, and, I mean, I know this is kind of common sense. I'm sure everyone who's watching this had the same conversation. But, like, a lot of the times during the Tom Herman era, I never felt like Texas was about to get their asses ran off the field, you know. And that didn't seem to happen a ton. Like, it always – yeah, they would lose games in some of the most painful ways um, yeah. and would be some of the worst football you could possibly watch. But they very rarely ever weren't competitive. The times where you thought they were going to get run off the field were some of the best games played during that era. Like, you know, the one I remember, I forgot who USC played in their opener, but I even remember going back to the year before where they lost they lost a shootout to Penn State in the Rose Bowl. And I remember watching Sam Darnold, and I'm like, dude, this Texas secondary got to go play that guy. I'm like, F that. It's going to be a long day. And – you leave the Coliseum, be like, dude, how did Texas let that slip away? Like, how did they not win that game? And I, I remember, I, I, I think I told you, I know I've said it on here, uh, but man, I just remember going to the Coliseum, going down on field level, and it's like warm ups when I realized Texas had a chance. I'm like, I'm looking at the Texas roster, I'm like, okay, that there's a lot of guys on that Texas side that look like, you know, legitimate power conference football players. And I'm looking at that SC side, and I'm like, it just looks like a bunch of dudes. Like, there was, there's no, there was nobody on that SC side that was special. I mean, you look, you you look at their wideouts like they had like Deontay Burnett and you know a handful of dudes like Velis Jones. I mean, they had some dudes that played in the NFL. That played in the NFL, but who was who was coach at the time? Clay, uh, Clay Helton. Okay, got it. Yeah, Ronald Ronald Jones. That was Ronald Jones last year. <laughs> Man, you remember the one play Ronald Jones made that game, Jordan? I think I don't really, but I think so. You remember right before halftime, they it wasn't even a hail mary. They just ran like four uh, four verts, and he catches the ball like on a slant, and it looks like it's supposed to be a hook and ladder, but nobody tried to tackle him, and he ends up going in for the the touchdown on the hail mary right before the half. Yeah, sounds uh sounds about Tom Herman Texas era esque dude. It was yeah, it was like you play you play this. Perfect- I mean, it's like the CD Lamb video, like the the back seven of the defense. And, I mean, <laughs> the the back eleven of the defense often was like, mm, eh. but you know, eh. I, I'll give I'll give Sark credit for this. I'm glad you mentioned the Tom Herman stuff because that SC game was one that the OU game that year because I think Texas. I think Texas held OU to their lowest scoring output. K-State might have held OU to – there was one game where OU had a, under 30 in regulation, but I think with overtimes they ended up getting into like the 40s or 50s. But that Oklahoma offense with, you know, that's Rodney Anderson, Baker, uh, Baker's Heisman year, Mark Andrews, uh, you know, you, C.D. Lamb as a freshman, like you, Hollywood Brown, like you had some dudes on that all, Oklahoma offense. And Texas played well enough to win. And I don't know if you remember that game, but you had the deal where Sam gets concussed. He, Sam is rolling, starting to play well. He gets concussed, and Shane Bouchelle has to come in. There's probably, what, like seven or eight minutes left? And Shane Bouchelle has to come in cold off the bench uh, when Sam gets concussed. And that pretty much is what cost you. That and a busted coverage on the, the Mark Andrews touchdown. But, dude, they played Oklahoma down to the wire, and I'm like, that was one of those games where it felt like, Man, if OU gets up early, this could be ugly. 
and it was a game that Texas probably should have won. Yeah, man, I can't. I like look the the Texas OU game is always so much fun because there's anything that can happen. But like, I'm so excited for that. But not only that this year, uh, the fact that we have two of those games we'll get to cover this year because yeah. the A and M rivalry is back, right? So I'm looking forward to it, and even like. I don't think Arkansas is going to be very competitive this year. Um, Dude, I'm telling you, though, man. But but Vietnam is going to be rocking. So you, I'm excited to get to that. I'm also excited to get to Michigan. That could be a great classic game as well. Um, I just I just think, man, there there's it's 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 awesome to me. Like I, I told you, man, Texas was bad growing up, so I had to have another team. My other team was Michigan. And before, I think one of the things that one of the very few drawbacks of the Texas USC game is people forget how great of a Rose Bowl Texas and Michigan played the year before. Mm-hmm. And I just remember looking at that pregame setting. It's kind of one of those overcast, you know, kind of when the Rose Bowl starts like four o'clock in the afternoon, it's overcast in Pasadena. And I'm looking at like the Michigan and the helmets and the uniforms and Texas wearing the icy whites. I'm like, dude, and it's kind of that pullback shot where you see the mountains behind the Rose Bowl. I'm like, dude, this looks like the per like, got like you asked god hey build me the perfect scene for a football game and it was like before texas usc was that texas michigan rose bowl it just looked it looked like i don't know like some kind of rockwell painting like it was it was beautiful and that was a great game though that was like i think vince ran for almost 204 touchdowns steve breston broke oj simpson's rose bowl record for all purpose yards braylon edwards had a big game uh Cedric Benson basically had to play a decoy for most of the game because he was hurt. Then it was that was a great ass Rose Bowl, and I think in the Big House, those two teams being in that environment, say what you want about the Big House, from an aesthetic standpoint, it's just like Texas SC. Those two teams playing in the playing in the Coliseum, or you know the home and home with Alabama, both settings, dude. It's just there's just some some it's it's why sometimes i get poetic and a little you know sappy about college football man it's just some some settings it just it's just perfect man it's just it makes sense and and you just you dig it yeah no for sure um yeah, i'm like, also looking to that that empty uh the empty vanderbilt stadium <laughs> i assume it'll be empty but i'm gonna try to be there i love nashville so any any excuse no I nashville's go good there, yeah I'll go it's, there, so. it's uh Vanderbilt's going to take the place of what the the Baylor game was for so many years. It's it's a it's a road game. It's a road game, but it's going to be a de facto home game. There's going to be more Texas people in the in the stands yeah. than than Vandy people. I'll tell you yeah. what, though, Jordan. Like that's that's what's got me excited about uh, the SEC is there's just going to be some stadiums, some teams you play. Like forget how good they are, man. Like when Tech in 2025, like when Texas goes to Athens. You go to the mm-hmm. swamp, you know, eventually whenever Texas gets down to Baton Rouge, Knoxville, there's just going to be certain Oxford. places. Uh, well, I've already, that, I've that's Texas mostly I just want to yeah, go to the Grove. But, you know, there's going to be some some scenes and environments you put Texas in the icy whites, you just drop them in there and it's it's going to be it's going to be poetic, man. It's just from an aesthetic standpoint, it just doesn't get better than that. Yeah. Twice. Yeah, no, you not know, not looking I, forward to getting barked at in in Athens. You know what? You know what one of my favorite rivalry games is not that because some years both teams might not be good or one team might be good, one team might suck. And I'm really glad that I think it was Pete Carroll and Carl Durrell brought it back when Carl Durrell was the head coach at UCLA. But it's U, USC UCLA. Whether they're playing in the Coliseum or the Rose Bowl, when they went back to both wearing their home uniforms for that game. That game to me looks it, it, it looks awesome watching it on TV. Yeah. Um yeah, I like for no other reasons than the color, the, the color class, and it's the two home uniforms and putting a Coliseum or the Rose Bowl. Man, I, I just enjoy aesthetically watching. Same thing with Florida State and Miami. It's just those two, those two teams. And plus, you gotta remember in my youth watching football, that was that was the aim. That was like you know you're going to see the best players in the like the two games were every year growing up where it's like you're going to see the best players in the country. You're going to see future NFL All Pros on the field, Florida State and Miami, 
know, Florida, Tennessee with those two names. Yeah. Um, as far as the uniform aesthetic, I like Georgia and Florida. Ella, Tennessee and Florida go pretty hard. I always like Tennessee, Bama. Um, and it sucks that, you know, we all wish the the first game versus AM would be a home game at DKR. But I mean, hey, like I, I love the the last time those two teams played. It was Texas and the and the all whites, you know. Yeah. And that's the first time Texas plays them again. They're gonna be wearing all white again in Kyle Field. It's obviously changed a ton. Uh, a lot of dynamics about the rivalry have changed a ton, but yeah. man, I, I hope bit, I can. I hope I can get on that field. There's, there's gonna be, there's a. It's weird trying to explain it, but like, uh, A and M, the A and M Texas game used to feel like. It used to feel like the family reunion, but it's that really annoying member of your family. It's like. I just got to tolerate them for a couple hours. And then yeah, and there's one in every family, right? Thanksgiving. And it could be, you know, they, they mean, it could be the family member that means well, but it's just like, you know, you got to take them in doses or the braggart aunt, uncle, cousin that just won't ever shut up about meaningless stuff. Everybody's got one of those. Uh, it's kind of like that. It was more like the annoying family member. Now there's a vitriol there that wasn't, at least for my lifetime, wasn't there. And I, I'll be honest, man, I think the bonfire tragedy had a lot to do with that because the the tone and tenor of that game, pretty much from the 99 game up until the last game at Kyle Field in 2011, the tone of that game was just completely different. It was almost, it almost became like, a, I'm not going to say like a, a funeral or a wake or something like that, but it was almost like, uh, a, a res- it was almost like the respect for high school football and football culture in Texas superseded like a nasty rivalry full of vitriol. You know, does that make any sense? Yeah, it was all. It almost became like a like it was just a celebration of football culture in the state. To me, that's what that rivalry was. There was a a, a level of respect over it from. 99 really up until there was nothing respect you talk to texas fans who went to college station in 2011 there was nothing respectful about that night at all that was that was two two sides that wanted to beat the ever living piss out of each other yeah um that's the thing like if i can't get on the field i'm probably not going to the game um (laughs) just uh, (laughs) yeah I'm, i'm not stupid enough to wear orange there and yeah. at the same time, I'm not stupid enough to wear like a black blank shirt or something like that. And at the same time, I got a couple buddies at, at AM uh, on the roster, a couple kids I covered that I'm close with. I still talk to this day, but I'm not going to go wear their merch to that and go get my picture taken in it <laughs> or by hey, some Texas fan or something. You know, let, let me let me ask so, you this, because I, I know the kids, some of those kids on that roster from, you know, from your juice affiliation. Like when you talk to a kid like Tori and York, for example. I'm just throwing him out there, using him as a, as an example. Uh, does he does he understand the Texas Texas A&M rivalry? Because I think that's one of the things that I'm interested to find out about that game this year. Is I mean, you know, the last game was played in 2011. How old were these kids when that game was played? Yeah, I was nine. Actually, yeah. I was eight, and I, I remember watching the the kick on TV, and I was eight years old, and I'm 21 yeah. now. Yeah, so, so Torian would have been about five six. Yeah, you know it's it, so it's one of those deals. Like what what do they know? The rivalry's been dormant in their lifetime more than it's been played. Man, I mean, I, I get what you're saying, but I think both programs, or not necessarily both programs, are going to let this happen. I think that uh, just a lot of the alumni is probably going to get together and call Elko or Sark and be like, "Hey, we're coming to practice today." Yeah, not like. Hey, can we come next week? It's like, hey, we got to come tell these dudes about, you know. I, I see something like that happening. Mm-hmm. Or Elko or Sark, they reach out to the alumni, have them in to, like, sit them down. Yeah. Um, because that is a good point, and that's something I hadn't even really thought about. But, like, yeah, most of these kids aren't going to understand the, the concept of the rivalry. And, like, I don't know. I always try to I, – I don't really want to bring it up because it pisses a lot of fans off. But, like, fans got to realize, like, how little – the kids yeah. and players these days are actually playing for that name on their chest yeah for the dollars they get off the performance or other things you know what i mean so mm-hmm. 
I think that'll be important for both staffs to see that, you know, these guys got to understand how important and deep this is and mm-hmm. you know, probably get some alumni into town. I, I think it helps to have a guy like Blake Gideon on staff because Blake played in that game in 2011. Yeah. Uh, you know, and that was – when you talk about, like, remarkable wins of the Mac Brown era, like, the, you know, like the 2010 game at Nebraska, the Nebraska Big 12 send-off game, I still don't know how the hell Texas won that game with like Garrett Gilbert rushing for 73 yards or whatever it was. I still don't know how Texas won that game. And the AM game, when you look at it, man, they were they were beat up at quarterback. Like David Ash was what was Ash dealing with? It wasn't a was it a I don't think it was a concussion. I forget what David he Ash was, was always hurt. It might have been a shoulder, but you remember like Malcolm Brown's hurt, Joe Bergeron's hurt, Fozzie tore up his knee against Missouri. Basically, like you're Joe running Bergeron. like you're running like it was like Jeremy Hills, it was Hills and like Malcolm Brown with Damn. with. I'm just getting these like, blasts from the past. Sorry to keep cutting you off, but no, it's it's fine. But like, dude, like you look at the ways Texas scored in that game. Like they recover a muff punt, and the very next play they get a double pass from Jackson Shipley to Blaine Irby. That was a touchdown. Quandre had an eighty some an eighty one yard punt return to set up a score. Then Carrington Bindham had a pick six. In that game, Kenny Vaccaro had an interception off Ryan Tannehill deep in uh kind of deep on the, the minus side of the field that set him up for a score. So it, like you look at it, and it's like, dude, as beat up as Texas was, like they should not have won that game. But that was a year that I don't know if you like you said, Jordan, you were eight or nine. Like AM started the year. I think they were a preseason top 10, top 12 type team. And they had like Mike Sherman's last year at AM, it was like the 2021 season for Texas. Like they blew like five or six double digit leads on good teams like Oklahoma State. They had double digit leads on several teams that they just blew the game and ended up losing late. Uh, you know, a- AM, if you look at that, AM team was good. They were talented. They probably should have been like a nine or 10 win type team, but they just Sounds- had this habit of getting up big and then blowing leads. Sounds like Texas in 2021. I, I thought you were gonna say it sounds like pretty much the history of Texas A and M football. Like they should have won, fill in the blank games, but they won seven and the coach got fired. Man, I was I was talking so much shit this weekend to some dudes who work in the A and M market. <laughs> um, because like, uh, <laughs> like two sorry sorry two thirds <laughs> of the A and M market are just homeboy or not homeboys homers. homers. Yeah. Um. And it's like, look, I, I get it. And certain, like in the Florida State market, you can't really be established in that market if you're not going to make it obvious with every tweet who you're pulling for or whatnot. Yeah. And I, I understand some markets. You run, like you run into my guy, uh, Jason Howell, over at Tex Eggs. Oh no, J- Jason's good. he's good people. I wasn't, I wasn't talking. I, I talk to Jason regularly, but I won't, uh, you know, talk shit to him about A and M. He's no, not. A big I haven't, A&M I haven't guy. talked to. I haven't talked to. I haven't talked to Jason in a minute. We used to. It used to be when he was at Orange Bloods and I was at Inside oh, – was that Inside Texas? I was I either Inside Texas or maybe 24-7, maybe both. But Jason and I, it's like we would see each other – and he was at Orange Bloods. We would see each other multiple times during the football season. So Yeah. Plus, I did uh, a little, little factoid about my past. When Jason ran – I forget what the Baylor site, the Baylor rival site was called when he ran it. Some but BS. I did uh, – I did – what was it? Some BS probably. I think it was Baylor. I think it was a Sikkim sports.com. Maybe. Yeah. That, well, that was a thing up until last year. Okay. Later. Yeah. So I think it was, I think it was Sikkim sports.com is what it was called when Jason ran it. And I did, I did some, some work for him covering, covering guys like Tim Atchison over at Copper's Cove and some dudes that local guys that ended up going to Baylor. But yeah, but no, I was just, I was talking shit to those A&M guys. Like, <laughs> Dude, for all they talked about was that 2022 class, and nothing happened. They got nothing out of it, absolutely nothing except bad PR hits. Um, yeah. and the amount of players that they were this close to signing in that class too, they just ran off with a significant amount of money. It yeah. was ridiculous as well too. Um, and that'll probably never even see the light of day. But, um. Yeah, the, the AM 22 class, I was just so tired of that, that whole offseason and that whole stretch up to signing day. Like, I remember being on the feeder road to get off 35 
to get into McLean Stadium to see Westlake just take Katie to the woodshed in 2021. Yeah. Um, and I watched Jaden Greathouse block Bobby Taylor 70 yards across the field and sit him down on a bench that day, too. Um, but no, I remember as I'm getting off the feeder road, I get the Hayes Fawcett notification. Texas landed Kelvin Banks. And I remember I'm walking into the stadium and I'm talking to Walker Lott. He used to work for Tex Ags. Now he does. Uh, he has a big private school podcast. Great guy. But a and fan. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, hey, you see Texas got Kelvin Banks. And he was like, have you seen the rest of our class? Have you seen what we – and I was just like, all right, dude. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Let me have my moment. And look at us now. Yeah, uh, CB, I, I'll say, you know, I have no problem saying who I like and don't like in, in the market or our, our business. I, I There's very few people that I don't like. Uh, I, I've had no problem with Owen Buchanan. As a matter of fact, OB and I have done uh, – What's the deal that I do in the preseason? Uh, it's because Chip's been on there with me. The Texas Medical Board, their kickoff luncheon. I had to cancel last minute because I had a, I think I had a press conference or something. I had something that came up last minute I couldn't get out of and had to cancel. Um, but yeah, Olin Buchanan, I, I like Olin. Olin and I have always had good conversations uh, whenever I see him. It's always good and friendly. And uh, Billy Lucci, I, you know, when I was at Inside Texas, we were part of a ES. It was called the ESPN Team Network of sites, and it was us. Texags was was one of those sites. Yeah, you're uh, showing your age. Yeah, like, every time you bring this up, like my mind is like, huh? Yeah, uh, it's one of the one of the nine hundred times ESPN's like, all right, we're going to cover recruiting, and then a year later, it's like, man, we don't know what we're doing. We're just going to, you know, set this on fire. Uh, uh, but. But Billy and I actually ended up uh, working, oh gosh, because uh, ESPN was kind of running the Nike camps at that time, and it was a Nike Houston camp, and Billy and I had kept having to like check notes and stuff, and it was, just, it, was it was fun. I hadn't, I hadn't worked too much with Billy after that, and it's not like we stay in touch or anything, but, uh, you know, Billy, you know, Billy's twitter gimmick his social media gimmick and uh billy lucci the the person that you actually meet i found to be uh two different people one that people don't really like and the other one i found to be a, a pretty pleasant dude so mm. that that's my that's my billy lucci story for today got it <laughs> and you probably the only, it. it's probably the only one i have so yeah and just last thing so we can talk a tiny bit of recruiting um, Marcus Harris from Modern Day, the top two four seven four star receiver from, uh, like I said, Modern Day in California. Um, he's on campus. He actually just dropped a, a top five about it was either yesterday or the day before that uh, Texas, Tennessee, Oregon, uh, Georgia, and Alabama. Um, and it's funny actually. I talked to a source kind of close to him um, over this past weekend. You know, kind of where's he at? And source thinks Tennessee or Texas. The thing is, it, that source is a, a <laughs> someone who also attends Modern Day. So, like, you know, whenever you get it to people like that, it's like, yeah. okay, you know, let me fact check this. But uh, I'm supposed to be seeing Marcus Harris this weekend. So um, Dude, I'll have an answer for you on Monday. But Sark is going to, Sark is, Sark and Chris Jackson are going to have to tell some really freaking talented receivers and thanks, but no thanks in this class. Yes, um, and the, that's that. That is certainly a thing. Um, Dude, because to be, to be honest with you, like, and I'm really starting to feel pretty strongly about Texas signing two five stars at receiver. Um, yeah. So we're gonna see. I mean, I, yeah, look, we, we you, you go through you go through our receiver rankings for twenty four seven sports. Texas is having all four of the top four receivers in in America on campus this month. You yeah, Corian Moore already. He's coming back for the spring game, but there's a chance he misses it because of regionals for track. Big track kid. Um, uh, Jamie French, who was there April 6th, will be back for an OV the 21st through 23rd. Mm -hmm. Texas has the last OV. Kalik Lockett was there April 6th. Um, I don't think he has anything scheduled till the OV for Texas. And then Caleb Cunningham, who uh, haven't really heard anything about. Uh, he's a five star from Mississippi, uh, Ole Miss, Mississippi State. Those are the, the two favorites there. This will be his first time at Texas. Um, 
And, you know, we we kind of handicapped Jamie French a lot where we're like, look, there's a lot of ground Texas would have to make up to be realistic. Yeah, I think Tex, I think we might have actually read that situation a little wrong and that there was less ground to make up. And Texas did make up that ground because mm-hmm. I do see Texas being semi realistic for French right now. Yeah. Um, but Caleb Cunningham, on the other hand. I had never heard of this kid's name mentioned from anyone in Texas until it was like, yeah, he is for sure coming now. So there's you, man, with he'll, this- he'll be there the spring game. Besides that, uh, I don't think he's any OVs booked besides Mississippi State, Mississippi, or Ole Miss. Again, you know, that's where everyone is pointing towards. He actually, his crystal ball is split between those two schools. Um, but yeah, he's the nation's number three receiver. I believe French is four or vice versa. And again, Texas is having all four of the five star receivers in the 2025 class on campus this month. Like, that's I've never heard of something like that. So, dude, it, it's uh, you got to strike while the iron's hot. Like, you're about to, you're, you're going to have one receiver go in the first round of the draft. Mm-hmm. And, and the one who's not, it's so most likely Xavier Worthy's not, he's the fastest man in the history of the combine. So, the pro, the profile for the receiver position at Texas has never been higher. Honestly, it has never been higher than it is right now. So you got to strike while the iron's hot. What I like about Sark, though, Jordan, is he he was at one of those jobs. USC kind of did this uh, late in his tenure there as an assistant under Pete Carroll, where mm-hmm. they were signing top guys, but they just didn't mix, right? Like you'd look at the USC and <clears throat> get this five star guy and that five star guy, but they would go on and be like undrafted free agents, or they would transfer, and it just never it never clicked. So sark has seen kind of the kind of both sides of it like when you just collect talent and it doesn't work out and then when you get them in a system and a culture like he had at alabama with four guys that end up in the first round all highly recruited guys that yeah it it can work if if your culture is right if you're recruiting the right guys not just signing the most talented guys you can so yeah but man it's dude it's gonna if i'm chris jackson it's gonna suck to have to tell some of these guys know like dudes dudes that in any other year you'd be like hell he might be the top receiver on your board in any hey, other year you know? i think it's i think it's fine to report this now but there is a receiver who is in the top 247 for the 2025 class that tried to commit to texas at the junior day and he was told no well told to wait yeah it's because te- texas was like hey we we don't know yet um and since then the kid hasn't returned to campus and haven't heard anything tying Texas between him and that kid, not expecting him to even OB to Texas. So it happens. Man. Um, yeah. And yeah. man, you go back f- five, six years ago, Tom Herman might've killed someone for like a commitment from a kid like that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Dude, so for real. That, that's, that's the Sarkeesian era for you. That's not over exaggerating either. Like Herm dog might've really shanked someone and tried to get away with a fellow. Herm dog. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> yeah. Tom, Tom Tom is climbing up that list with Sean Watson of people that would probably punch me in the face if they saw me again. Hey, we know what weapon Tom Herman would use. A binder? No. His head. Oh, yeah. Both of no. those are solid answers. I was thinking <laughs> sledgehammer, but you guys gave some quality responses too. Dude, that is now isn't this just so badass? We're gonna go sledgehammer our locker room. Like most badass thing so, ever, right? So cringe, man. What do you mean you don't want to come to Texas now? <laughs> All kinds did y'all did y'all see the photo of him with Antonio Brown the other day? No. Mm-mm. What? Man, I need to find this. Where did I see this? I think I might have saw it on Twitter. Hey, hey BK, while, while oh, doing shit. that, have you have you seen the uh, what, Jordan? You got some breaking news or what? You know, Alvin Henderson, who's uh, like our number two or three running back for 2025, just committed to Penn State. And I've been paying attention at all there, but I thought it was going to be like Auburn or Florida State or something. So just a little surprise. As much as I love James Franklin, have fun going 10 and two every year and losing to Michigan and Ohio State. Yeah, Uh, really. While Jordan's looking for this photo, have you had a chance? And I'm still not through it because I'm, you know, I've had some issues getting through content the last few days. Uh, the Ernie Adams interview with Julian Edelman. Have you seen that yet? No, no. I missed that too. It yeah. is. It's about you. Got to You're gonna have to do it in doses because it's like two hours long. Oh, like wow, two and a half. But it is. It is some of the 
it's basically like taking a football one on one, like they're not even one on one. It's like a high level college class for football education. Just all the stuff that Ernie Adams knows. And he was talking about analytics and like going forward on fourth down. And he basically, it made me think of Tom Herman because he basically said, look, he's like, you can, he was talking about there was a professor at Cal that wrote like a dissertation on why it's better to go for it on fourth and goal from the one. And, uh, oh, did you find it, Jordan? Yeah, it hard to tell, but that's Antonio Brown, Tom Herman, and Tyreek Hill. Oh, man, that's it, a, it's, oh, it, it's on the FAU Twitter account. If you go to their media and scroll down, it was posted uh, on Sunday. So you fly on the wall with that conversation. Oh, boy, yeah, I bet that was great to listen to. But basically, BK, yeah. what Ernie Adams was saying is, you know, all the research he'd done says, yeah, it's, it's good to go for it on fourth and go from the one. He's like, but you can't just go by what the chart says. Like, you've got to make sure, like, if you don't have a play you believe in, just kick the field goal or whatever. Like, you can't just go by the chart. Basically, it's anyway, if you're just going by what the chart tells you, that's stupid. Yeah. Just like going by what the binder tells you is stupid. Yeah. You better have a play that works. Even if you think you have a play, if it doesn't work, then that means you didn't have a play. Yeah. And no, the wait. Not, all right. Here, here's fourth and one. Here's what we're going to do. Toss to Daniel Young into the boundary. That's our that's mm. our. Can I make two two delayed jokes here? Go for it. <laughs> number one, Penn State. Very good. There number, he is. Number two, Tom Herman, Antonio Brown, and Tyree Kill. Three quality husbands, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. Um, <laughs> boy, that's a toughie. Yeah. I'll laugh out loud if you guys don't. Yeah. Those were good. Yeah, I'm that's um, those. Yeah, yeah, those dudes right there, they got their shit together when it comes to uh, commitment and marriage things. That's for sure. Yeah. Hey, real quick, uh, Rodney, do you enjoy uh, – I haven't talked to you since then. Do you, do you enjoy WrestleMania? Did you enjoy WrestleMania last weekend? You know, I, I watched uh, Sunday, uh, and I did. You know, I, I thought it was kind of neat right there, you know, what they're doing, you know, bringing the – obviously with The Rock there and The Undertaker and all that. I think it's a good thing to bring them back to try to fix the um, image – of um the wwe yeah. it wasn't bad what bad bk liked it he watched a main event three times it was sick I, it was awesome i don't even like wrestling and i thought that heavyweight bout at the end of sunday's card was heavyweight sens- bout. <laughs> it was it was sensational jeff dude i uh man the fact the, i i'm not gonna lie man when when pro wrestling's a, it's an art form that's uniquely american right um, and you can call it white trash. You can call it whatever, but dude, when it's done right, thank yeah. you, Jordan, for the sarcastic head nod. <laughs> when it when it's done right, man, it's it's pretty damn fun to watch. Uh, it's, it's it's entertaining. It's like okay, what's going to happen next? And the, I mean, the funny part for me was like when the Undertaker came around. I was thinking back to back to the old days when he would show up and it got dark, and it was like it, it took longer. It was darker, longer, like the eclipse. Almost needed my my glasses uh, for the Undertaker's appearance. You know, as dark as it was, because he's a well, little well, he slower. Had, he had I, I don't know from, they had him. He had under to crawl the from under the ring. Like Taker's what fifty now? Like he's that's, over feel like almost sixty, and he's had a hip replacement. Like that's it's what I was thinking. It's like, and, dude, and man, he's that's, that's ten, Rodney. Right? That, that that doesn't move as it's no, those joints aren't as lubricated as they once were. Tell me about it, brother. Tell me about it, man. It gets a little slower right there. Uh oh. Is the Undertaker coming out over there? Uh, someone, <laughs> someone's just gonna spawn right behind him. It's gonna yeah. be Wags. We have Wags you know, just behind me. Yeah, yeah, Wags comes out. Rodney, if I, if I had one throws. thing to be critical of, though, at that main event, and it's not even critical, you could tell like getting the rock up for that choke slam was a struggle on both yeah. parts. It was, oh. Yeah, was, yeah. Uh, he, he grabbed him. He grabbed him by the by the pants or whatever those things were. Kind of got him by the waistline, and then you could see he kind of went like right above the the, the buttocks yeah. and got him down so I, I think that was a lot of uh of Dwayne doing a lot of the uh work right That's there 50 year old guy trying to get in the air for a 60 year old guy I mean it wasn't bad but it's like yeah it's not look at that enough. you're accusing this of being fake that was real didn't have yo <laughs> yeah this is real as hell yo what the fuck is going on with the ref I don't watch this but like wait what is going on there they're, they're never paying attention. They always they, they miss everything, Jordan. It's like when something Why do they goes have wrong, refs if everything is like 
to cover it up a little. You know what I mean? Hey, yeah, they just someone's got to count to three, Jordan. Someone's got to count to three. Oh, oh, yeah. Sorry again. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd rather Noah. watch paint dry than. <laughs> and I don't know. I, I was noticing on WrestleMania, and and maybe that, like, like I said, I, I don't watch it near the way I used to. It usually takes something like this for me to watch it these days. But it's like the referee has an earpiece. He does. Yeah. Yeah. You see that? Yeah. Yeah, cool. so uh, I'm like, uh, I'm a couple, I, a couple of IFB and so that way is yeah. it's for time cues and stuff. Yeah, or if yeah. Somebody's, somebody's taking too long, be like, hey, tell so and so to hurry up. Like, yeah, you need to get to this spot or whatever. It's like, but, get the yeah. blade. So, get the blade. Sorry, real quick, just because we barely even got to talk about it in the first cross talk. But OJ Simpson, the, he gone. the, the juice ain't loose no more. So, um, what what happened? Did he just die of old age, or did something happen? I just cancer. woke up and everyone's talking cancer. about it. Like, cancer. What kind? Um, Pro- prostate. Karma. Oh, <laughs> yo, was it prostate? Dude. Oh, yeah. BK. Have no. you speaking? I'm not. I'm not one to make fun of cancer, right? But have you ever? Have you listened to the uh, the Bill Little Paul Splitorf audio? No. Have you ever heard of it? Okay. I'll get Matt Butler to send you that because Matt has it. it. Craig and Bill are calling a baseball game. It's like the 2011 Big 12 tournament. And Paul Splitter, who was a baseball player, basketball player at Missouri, pitched in the big leagues, died. And it, I can't, me telling about it doesn't do it justice. It's one of those things like you have to listen to it to appreciate it. So yeah. I'll. I'll see if Matt can send you the, the Bill Little Paul Splitter audio. Please. Did he talk about OJ? Doesn't talk yeah, about OJ. Uh, I, I was very curious how OJ. Cancer, the, it was a cancer <laughs> reference that, that got me there. Okay, okay. But, okay you, yeah, know no. what, you know what, guys? Like, how are we ever going to know who the real killers were? That's what OJ made his life's work. The, well, the real killer is dead now, so... Uh, no. you know, hopefully... The, the, the good news is, I, I like that you guys can joke about a legend's passing... The good news is OJ doesn't have to live in fear anymore that the killer is going to come after him. So that is great because I know he's been worried since the mid 90s yeah. that uh, whoever got Nicole and whoever got Ron Goldman was going to go after him at some point, too. So thank <laughs> God he is safe from that. Yeah. Did you do a book or a TV special that was like, I didn't do it, but if I did. But- yeah. This is how I would have. We were talking about that earlier. It's so graphic. It's like, and, and you know, the, this whole thing with this is I have always said, I always said with OJ, it's like maybe on his deathbed. I mean, I never knew how he was. going. I didn't know he had cancer. I mean, I, I've been heckling the guy on Twitter forever. And now everybody's reposting my, the shit that I send him. And it's like, I would hope that, that as he was about to go to the Holy Grail or wherever else he may be going, that he would say, I did it. Or he left a letter, you know, and kind of said, you know, here's what happened. Yeah. He takes the the Wilt uh, Chamberlain photo, except instead of 100, right. it just says, I did that shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's like, he has the tubes in his nose. He's about to die. And it's yeah. like, there's a knife in there, too. Oh, my God. Uh, with, good. like, the glove in the corner. <laughs> They're yeah. gonna bury his ass with the with the knife and with that non-fitting glove, you know, in, in his hand. You know, it's gonna be like I can't get over they, the, the, the it's a shot, it's a shot of him in a coffin, like barely alive with the thing, and then it keeps panning out, and you see the coffin sitting in the back of a Ford Bronco. Oh <laughs> god. I, I Dude, think it's that... like or, or him going him passing away and just laughing at all of us, you know, and be like, ha ha ha. There it Anyways, is. Yeah. Someone text someone on the Coda text line came through with the uh Tom Herman Antonio Brown Tyreek Hill shot. So just before y'all leave, I'll give y'all the HD version. I just, I, I just I'm real I'm just really confused by this picture. Neither one of them played at FAU. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Tom Herman it, 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 it's you know, also yeah, it's also like there's there's no coaching ties here. Yeah. Neither of them went to FAU. At the same time, if you're someone in the Dolphins organization and you see this photo, I'd get very concerned. Because, like, why are Tyree Kill and Antonio Brown hanging out? Yeah. Exactly. And two, why are they hanging out together at FAU with Tom Herman? So, yeah. Well, it's because he's cool. 
I mean, he's a cool dude. Tom Herman. Shit. Yeah, Tom they're Herman. like, they're like, hey boys, you want some watery eggs? And they're like, yeah, we'd love to take it to her. Like, <laughs> Let me check my, your piss. Let me check your piss while we're at it here. And speaking of that, dude, I've had so much water in the last few days. Dude, I'm it it's championship level hydration over here at Casa de Hal right now. I can guarantee you. Uh, but dude, I'm is, is it crazy, BK, that I'm like going cynical, like you know, conspiracy theory that OJ's not dead. It's like OJ, Tupac, and Elvis are Ooh. running like some diner out in the middle of BF Nevada. Man, I hope so because uh, OJ's an inspiration to me with his play and with his off the field antics too. So uh, he's probably my favorite non Dallas slash Longhorn athlete of all time. So I'm hurt. Yeah, let me send you this then. Look at this. Check out this OJ Simpson card. I got look at that fro. Uh, there oh, we go. Man. Look yeah, at look that. At that. Look at the hands on that guy. Quick. That's for the uh, two thousand yard season, man. He yeah, could I grip think. that football really strong, man. That, yeah. You got to love a man with a good. It's grip. a good day to find that OJ Simpson prank call YouTube video that I sent you a while back. Oh, I've got an OJ video to show Rodney, but I assume <laughs> yeah, you guys have. You guys may have stuff to do if y'all want to hang out for a lot longer. Y'all, no, like, oh, I just yeah, this is fun. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, this is. Uh, this might have been Jordan's finest last like 10 minutes of broadcasting here. It really has. Yeah. Hey, yeah. we got him yesterday. Yeah. Yesterday we signed off and he was talking about athlete of the week. So um <laughs> I think uh it's finally coming around, man. That that damn eclipse, man. It's doing man. crazy shit. Jeff, it makes you sick. It's making Jordan transform. Uh, what's going on here? I don't know, man. <laughs> yeah. It's uh it's wild, but no, I guess I guess we'll get out of here and let you guys go on with the uh, with the midday program. Hey, I actually I do have one bit of breaking news before we leave that's relevant. BK, this is relevant to you being the big Texas basketball fan that you are. Okay. Uh Julian Larry from Indiana State going to visit Texas this weekend. 6 foot okay. guards, one of the top guards available need a big man. in the portal. So yep. uh yeah, dude, you got to it's one of those, it's one of those portal cycles, Rodney. Where if there is if there is a a spot on the floor, you probably need it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that I think that's the one thing that you could watch. You know, throughout the Elite Eight and Final Four, and right there in the final, you you got those big dudes in there, man. You need a tree. You got somebody. You got to park in there that can be physical, and and that would be a great addition right there. If you could pull that off. So you got a you got a you got a six three six three guard coming in from Indiana State. You've got the got six seven four from air force coming in this weekend also so we're start, starting to kind of see the a little bit of the puzzle that from, that is where i want to recruit from indiana state and air force hey if you're going to recruit a guy from indiana state at least he's got larry in his name somewhere so you feel like you're on the right track right i'd, I'd prefer cream abdul jabbar or milk chamberlain but uh if we're <laughs> If we get this guy, then all right. We'll be all right. <laughs> all right. Everybody's got their Bron uh, Ford Broncos. Uh, it's all about the Broncos now, coming man. Coming in on the, on the chat. So, uh, the uh, Bronco. I, be there. Guys are going to have a hell of a midday program. I'm going to go ahead and go. And if Andre go. Sweat was in a Bronco, too. I'm oh, pretty sure. no. He was. He I, was isn't that what the police report said? One of the cars was a Bronco. I'm pretty positive. Yeah. Yeah. T sweat. Uh, Did Ford stop making the Bronco because of the OJ Chase? For a while, but they brought it back a couple years ago. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's been back now. And they're expensive. I mean, they're way expensive. I've I've got a neighbor across it. Rick Epstein has one. Whoa. And he told me he told me what he paid for it. And I'm like, dude, man, you're making a lot of money on high school football, dude. What what <laughs> what am I doing wrong? God. <laughs> Rick's I can't afford the, the AISD cheese nachos when I go to those games, man. What oh. am I doing wrong here? Mm -hmm. Rick gets like that. Uh, what's his big sponsor? They got like the Bush's chicken money. The uh, he He's uh, actually affiliated, I think, with one of the coverts also. So he's um, he's doing right. He's going to the right family. He's going to the right it ain't family. The, it ain't Cabo Bob's, I'll tell you that. Uh, <laughs> nothing is. Hey, BK, did you see CDC is now a big fan of Cabo Bob's? I did. Yeah, I saw he was with our guy Sal at the uh, West Campus location last night. Yeah. That's, a, that's a good collab right there, those two. Look, it's I, I probably don't need to eat anything that harsh with my stomach, but, man, a, uh, a bowl with some of that you know, mango, the mango salsa sounds freaking awesome right now. Yeah, that, that always hits. All right, I'm going right to get out of here, guys. Have a good show, and we'll do it tomorrow. Yes, sir. Right, See ya. All right, boys. There they, there they go.
<laughs> it's only an hour and a half today's edition. Yeah. Of, it's, only, it's only an hour. But right hey, there, they're going yeah. at it right there today, man. Yeah, it was fun. Fun little crosstalk right there after a uh, great It's Only an Hour with Jeff and Jordan. Good to have Jeff back. He's been out sick the last few days. So yep. glad to see him up and healthy again. And I'm going to show you this video here, Double R, before we okay. dive into today's topics. I'm not really right sure on. what today's topics are, but uh, in light of O.J. Simpson's passing, which was announced this morning, R. here's uh, an, an all-time clip from an interview O.J. did when he was still with us. So if you promise that you will not ask me another question about the case, I will never ask you again. We won't have to talk about it anymore. Just did you do it? <laughs> no, I didn't. Did not do it. After we finished filming, O.J. said to me that uh, he had a surprise for me, and I genuinely was surprised. I think it was his idea of a joke. And this is it. <laughs> Come on, O.J. <laughs> oh, man, this guy. I, I tell you, we, we were talking about it this morning. BK, where it's like, you know, because I was, uh, Wags brought up the naked gun and, and all the different stuff. And OJ was like a great football uh, analyst, you know, in his time with Monday Night Football and NBC. I, I mean, I, I found him highly intelligent and entertaining, but it was like his acting really helped him, I think, through all this mess. Uh, I oh, mean, yeah. with, with that kind of stuff right there. Uh, man, that, uh, yikes. That, that woman had to be scared. I bet her ass was puckered up when he's like, don't ask me that again. Oh, my Lord. Ugh. About that opening the door and OJ has a knife in his hand and he starts fake stabbing you. That is terrifying right there, oh, dude. Man, when, when, when you said that, uh, when, when she said that there was going to be a surprise, I thought that we might get. Shut up, bitch. But, man, that was worse. Yeah, it wasn't just verbal assaults for OJ Simpson back when he was on this planet but yeah. once again i'm glad he no longer has to live in fear uh that the real killer will come after him and like you we often say this about folks who lost their spouse before they lost their own lives it's uh, a great thing that oj is now back with the love of his life and is uh, really good and i'm i'm happy for him it's a sad day for me uh selfishly that uh, we are losing an all-time great but it is uh the sweet part of this bittersweet circumstance that oj is now back with the love of his life rodney well uh and i pissed off somebody on facebook and, and now it looks like multiple people uh because it says uh i posted that oj had passed away you know i like to keep people with current events in case they don't happen to have the internets and all that and i said well uh he has passed away and and a guy said now he faces the real judge and i said ron or nicole who are you talking mm. about and uh i'm getting hammered Ron and Nicole are not in the same place as OJ. So, um, yeah, I've apparently said the wrong thing. So, oh, well, that's, you could say the right thing. And on the Internet, it's always going to be the wrong thing for somebody. So that's uh, how the world works yeah. in 2024. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. look, hopefully, hopefully the real killer comes forward now. Right. Maybe maybe he was worried. He didn't want to say anything while OJ was still alive out of fear of retribution. Like maybe OJ would come after the real killer. So. Maybe now we uh, we get a little bit more information about this case, which is a good thing because, you know, I don't want Nicole and Ron's family still wondering about uh, who who may have did this. But well, I, it it and it appears like to me, BK, I mean, just for, from the time that he got acquitted up until, you know, the last few months that I saw there um, on X. I mean, he, he was on every golf course trying to find the real killer. Yeah. I mean, he said that he was going to find the real killer when he got acquitted. And, and, and it seemed like he made that. uh battle up until his passing now, i wonder uh, if he yeah. was able to find him or her don't know who it was no. but um yeah i never met oj so i can't say for sure about the quality of human he was but my aunt did date him back in the day and god rest her soul rodney <sighs> well and it's ironic that he searched every golf course far and wide and uh this goes down the day that the master starts mm. like right at the first tee off so uh, i don't know can't yeah. script this stuff, huh? Hey, Twitter world, this is yours truly. The man. Yeah, no more George truly. That's uh, <laughs> sad. You know, I never saw George and OJ in the same room at the same time. So, yeah, uh, the juice has been boxed, Double R, and it's done. It has expired. So, 
Uh, OJ, the first running back to eclipse 2,000 yards in an NFL season, and he did it in 14 games. 14 games. That's what I remember him for. I'm not sure what others remember him for, but that is what I remember him for. And he was uh, acquitted of some murder that he did not commit. It's a shame that people even accused him of it because it seemed pretty clear to me and everyone else that he did nothing wrong. And I hate that part of his life had to be uh, associated with that. And glad he doesn't have to deal with that anymore, too. Well, and then he messed up and went and tried to beat up some bullies that took his stuff. Yep. You know, instead of just calling the authorities and, and handling it that way, uh, he took matters into his own hands. And, um, well, that didn't work out so well. So, no, no, I no. I don't know. He's all right. You he know, uh, Nick Castellanos is hitting a home run today, right? I think somebody made that died. joke earlier today. Yes, Glenn OJ has uh, yeah. passed away. He has, he has gone to a different place. And he tweeted it out this morning, which is confusing, but I guess someone from his family got a hold of his Twitter account. <laughs> Got the, got the credentials i wonder what the credentials to oj's twitter account are um knife. i did it i did it 69 or something yeah knife 1994 <laughs> <laughs> was it, was it June 1st 1994 the day of the car chase that, that Bronco, 1994 06 01 1994 that was his iphone password or something that's it spectacular all right um kidding of course we're not not sure if i am or i'm not one thing that we're not kidding about rodney uh we'll get to the masters here we'll give uh, some leaderboard updates of course throughout the day is uh play was delayed to start the morning but they are now on the course in full swing out at augusta national scott drew is apparently staying at baylor he actually tweeted out a statement announcing that he was staying at baylor so reports are that Scott Drew and his family flew to Lexington, Kentucky to meet with the Kentucky athletic director about the potential of taking over for John Calipari at UK, but I don't know what the offer was. It sure sounds like there was an offer, and I don't think you get flown out to a certain campus if there is no impending offer, but Scott Drew turning down Kentucky. He is going to remain in Waco, so the search for Big Blue Nation's next basketball coach continues. Yeah, you know, I saw, uh, I think I saw a tweet last night. I mean, it was very late in the evening, you, you know, after yet another Astros loss that, that I got on Twitter there and was kind of checking stuff out. And it looked like he'd arrived back at, at an airport in Killeen or something, that, you know, on a flight back from Kentucky. So the fact right there, I think that's a situation where you really look at what Scott Drew has done there at Baylor. And again, Baylor has had their fair share of problems. But, um, you know, the fact that, that, I mean, he really likes what he's built right there. And again, I think the other the other part of that, what's even more impressive to me, is that he's staying in the Big 12. I mean, he wants to stay in the Big 12, which is arguably the best conference in college basketball. I mean, don't don't count national championships, but when you talk about competition. But um, pretty surprised right there in the sense that he's staying. I, I really thought he was going to bolt. I really thought he was going to bolt for that job. Yeah, I've been about 50-50 on this. Like, I thought it would have been a great hire for Kentucky if they were able to land Scott Drew. I mean, mm -hmm. what Drew has done at Baylor has been spectacular. Uh, you talk about Kentucky having all the basketball history. Baylor had zero basketball history before Scott Drew got there. Exactly. And they've been a contending team for years. Obviously, they won the national championship back in 2021. They beat a very good undefeated Gonzaga team that year, too, in that national championship game. And hell, they beat the brakes off of the Zags in that game. And they beat the brakes off of Houston in that yeah. semifinal game a couple of days earlier. So they had a UConn-style run the year that they won it all in 2021. And that sort of weird COVID-style tournament that we had that year. Uh, but Baylor's been a contender in the Big 12, the toughest league in the sport for a long time now. And, uh, man, he's done a phenomenal job in Waco. So I thought that would have been a great hire. Like, if he was able to do what he did at Baylor with those resources, imagine what he would have been able to do at Kentucky with their resources and their facilities. Mm -hmm. uh, it felt like, to me, the sky was the limit if Scott Drew took that gig. So I get why UK was going after him. But, you know, in this statement, we got it on the screen right now. You can read it if you're watching on YouTube. And Scott Drew said he, he talked to God. He's a big believer in, in God and Jesus. And he, he basically talked to his family and, you know, heard from God that he his message was to stay at Baylor or his job was to continue to coach at Baylor. So, yeah, UK had a tremendous offer, but you can't beat God, Rodney. Well, and, 
and Scott Drew eh, saying that that was a big part of the reason. His faith is a big part of the reason why he turned down that job to stay there in in, uh, in Wacko. Yeah, yeah. So God calls in OJ and and talks to Scott Drew, uh, Scott Drew in the same day. It, it seems like so. Uh, all of that happens mm-hmm. right there. But y- you know, this is really the the one because with the with the co- with the changes that we've seen in college basketball with with coaching moves here in the last you know week and a half or so, it seems to me where guys have been making lateral to not downward moves, uh, just with some of the shakeup that we've seen, you know, with Arkansas and so forth and and everything that went on there and. I mean, I, I thought at one point, I think it was last Friday, I thought Chris Beard was going to take that job, and, and he elected not to. Uh, but this is one where, you know, I mean, when you look at a blue blood, I mean, you would think that if Scott Drew went to Kentucky, that that was going to be the upward trend. It would be a move up, but uh, he chooses not to. So we we kind of stay in that pattern. And again, what, what he's built at Baylor, I think, is pretty special. And again, it hasn't been without um, uh, its fair share of um, history. I guess if we yep. want to call it that, I mean, different things that have happened there. Um, I admire that in him. I mean, I admire sure. the fact that he wants to stay there and finish the job. Uh, t- to me, the job's already finished. Like he won that national championship. I don't know yep. what else you got to yep. do. Add to it. Like yep. Taylor, but yeah, look, he, he mentioned that at the end of his statement that he wants to win more championships there. So, you know, big 12 championships, maybe another national championship. Yep. Obviously that's the goal for everybody every year. Uh, Baylor's coming off of a good season. They lost a little earlier in the tournament than they wanted, but they were a three seed. They were in the Big 12 race for the majority of the season. So it's not like they've completely fallen off since winning that title three years ago. Yeah, uh, It's a good thing there that Scott Drew has. So now I wonder where Kentucky goes next, right? I mean, I'm, I'm sure they've already tried with Dan Hurley at UConn yeah. and Hurley both after the national title game. And he did an interview, I think, with Colin Cowherd hey, yesterday or the day before basically said that he's not going anywhere, but maybe yeah. Kentucky makes him an offer he can't refuse. If Hurley says no, I do wonder where uh, the Cats go next because this this is the job in college mm-hmm. basketball. I'm saying that as a Kansas fan. Like mm-hmm. This is the job in college basketball, and um, man, it, it, it sure feels like their, their top targets so far are not biting. And now I wonder how far down their list they have to go to uh to find the guy that they really want yeah that, that's going to be real curious to watch right there because uh you know the initial when when everything initially goes down when calipari makes the move you know it was like uh, scott drew was the first name that i heard and and then billy donovan uh i i don't know if there's actually been that contact with billy donovan what well I, he's still busy i'm assuming at this point so i, I don't know if that's where you're going to fall back to at this point uh, i mean and then and, and falling back to that um, I say that very loosely, you, you know, with Billy Donovan, but uh, that that's a name that I heard from from the initial choices or or wish list or whatever you want to call it. I think that's all that's left when you have guys that are turning this thing down. So yep. I don't know, man. Going to be very interesting because, like you said, man, that is the job. I mean that that's that's one of those lucrative jobs that you want to have. I will say this: I'm I'm pretty glad that Scott Drew is staying at Baylor because Texas won't have to deal with him anymore. I mean, he's I heard he's that. kind of been a thorn in the Longhorn side over the last decade and change. And obviously, Texas moving away from Baylor, they are moving to the conference that Kentucky resides in. So, mm-hmm. uh, kind of nice, you know. Texas already has to deal with that former Baylor coach in Kim Mulkey in the SEC. Kind of nice to not have to deal with uh, both basketball program coaches who were really good against the Longhorns for a number of years. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, we'll see what uh, UK does next. But Scott Drew apparently staying in Waco. Wild. Yeah. All right. Yep. Any other thoughts on this, Double R? No, no. Just, just uh, I, I simply am baffled that he's staying. I mean, I really thought that he would bolt. But again, I mean, it's the pride in the program, and and that's hey, I'm telling you, that's good to see these days. That is really good to see these days. Yeah, you don't see loyalty in college no, sports very often. Not. Coaches, players, not. it does not matter. So, nope. Uh, yeah, credit Scott Drew for that decision, and I'm nope. sure Chip and JoJo came through with a little extra cash. <sighs> To yeah. uh, make sure brought him over stayed. to the silo. They said, "Come on over to the silo. Let's do or silos. I guess it is. Let's do some talking. Maybe they uh, took him over to Giorgio's restaurant over there for a chicken fried steak. There you go. Nailed him in right there. That's Can't go wrong saying. with that. You uh, you've been to what is it called? Magnolia, the Chip and Joanna deal there. Never been over there. We uh, the the wife when 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 the kids were still in high school. 
they wanted to do that. And I'm like, I'm not doing that shit. I'm like, you guys go on a, on a, on a girl's trip and spend a day out there. And they never did it. I mean, I've driven by it. I mean, I go to Waco quite often, but I go to a racetrack. So it's on the outskirts of town, but it's like, man, no, I don't, I don't need any of that. I don't, I, I don't care for one thing. I don't yeah. care. I, I don't, I don't even know what they do. What, so, so how did they, what, what were they like? Uh, was it one of those reality things what Chip and Jojo did? I, or I think they're real estate people. I don't, um, I've never really understood what their, what their bit is, but hell they own Waco billboards everywhere of them. Yeah. HGTV. I can't remember the name of the show that they were on there, but they had a real popular show on the home and mm. garden television network. And, suburban moms like my own spent uh, a lot of time watching them and, and supporting them so nice. yeah magnolia the silos I don't know, it's a bunch of shops and antique stores and that's i don't i don't like any of that so i'm gonna stay as far away from that place as i can when i go to wacko it's usually i'm driving through and getting out of there as fast as i can yep. but if i if i do stop i'm going to health camp you ever had that place no i haven't had that what is oh. that dude this is right up your alley and uh -oh. you, can th you can thank me now I, I don't want to say thank me later thank me now for yeah. the experience you're going to have next time you're there okay uh right off the highway it's around that traffic circle it's kind of a pain in the ass to get to because there's just a ginormous traffic circle yeah off of 35 in the heart of waco but it's just greasy burgers fries oh. and milkshakes and their shakes are to die for and they got like dozens and dozens of flavors too and they're all ridiculously good I, dude it, it's a must it's a must try next time you're up there okay i, I will do that because it's usually once or twice a month for me at heart of texas speedway and, yep. and, and you know i try to get uh, although i will say um and, and and the magnolia thing the silos all that that's been good for wacko because you know it's kind of been always perceived as a dump um, so, so I guess that's really good for them. And at the same time, they finally fixed the traffic in there, dude. It's like, my God, it's, oh Lord. Yeah. They had like that sign when you would like travel into Waco on a Friday and it's like expected wait time, 58 minutes. I'm like, what? It's five exits. But, yeah. uh, thank goodness. They finally got that shit in order. It's oh. getting better. Like I, I made that drive up to Dallas last weekend for a wedding. It's the first time I had, I had done the Austin to Dallas drive since, yeah. Probably Texas OU, I think. And I was like, oh, I, I got screwed. Austin to to Waco was a disaster. Really? In Waco was not that bad. And then past Waco was fine. But like the whole temple shit. Temple. Like, it's still, I know most oh, of man. the construction is done, but yeah. I don't know what it is. You still get screwed. Every, even the Jews get screwed going to temple. <laughs> like there's no, there's no way around that god forsaken city it's a nightmare driving through yeah t temple is horrible that that is where I, i've gotten held up and the bad thing about it is like you're, you're hauling ass i mean going through there and then it's like Arr! i mean it stops yep i mean it, it, no indication no indication it's like the dingling in front of you just hits the brakes and it's like okay you're just holding on because yeah yeah, yeah I, I don't <sighs> whatever it, it's coming our way dude these roads at 35 35. Gotta love I-35. Wherever you're at. Gotta love Do it. I? I have to. Do I yeah. have to? You have to. It sucks. All right. Quick sponsor shout outs. We got to get to the Shohei Otani story. We have an update Ooh. in the gambling investigation into the biggest star in Major League Baseball. Well, Texas sports we can get into as well. But um, shout out to some of our great sponsors. I got my covert lid on this afternoon. Love the covert auto group. Y'all make sure to check out covert B cave. Their newest dealerships that's right i say dealerships plural because they've got three of them on one lot they've got seven different brands as well so if you're not entirely sure what you're looking for just drive to covert b cave because they've got so many different makes so many different models new pre-owned it doesn't matter car trucks suvs it doesn't matter they've got you covered out at covert b cave and also some love to altstad beer i'll be drinking good amount of altstad watching the golf this weekend watching golf you're watching moto gp you're watching basketball or hockey or baseball or all the above don't have to be or make sure you are accompanying your sports watching with the best beer that's out there that is old stat beer no impurities no regrets speaking of watching sports 
AV consultations. I mean, what are, what are we doing here? If you have not made the call to AV consultations to upgrade your home TV setup, then you're just wasting your time and you're spending too much time driving around the city to go watch the sports when really you could just be sitting on your own couch watching all of your favorite teams all season long. AV consultations, they've been in business here in Central Texas since 1988, and they're the best in the business. Give them a call, 512-255-8678. That's 255 255- Eight six seven eight for audio visual consultations. All right, double R. It appears that Shohei Otani is off the hook. <laughs> Boy, least. that was that was pretty easy, wasn't it? Yeah, you know, it 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 had gone silent, and that's kind of been the conversation. How uh, how quick does Major League Baseball and authorities and everybody else? How quick does it go away? Well, it went away pretty quick, and now. Uh, the determination, the apparent determination and confession and everything has happened really, really quick as well. So, you know, it's like it's one of these situations, you know, we're sitting here talking about O.J. Simpson, what really happened, this, that and the other. I think this is something to where we're going to continue to wonder what Otani's part was in this. I mean, he's, he's getting off scot-free and everybody's on his side. I mean, that's the other part where it's like, well, it's pretty clear to me. I was watching this morning. They're like, pretty clear to us, you know, they had this round table pretty clear to us he hey hey he knew nothing about it yeah he had it's yeah just just a bad friend just a bad friend superstar treatment is a thing isn't it yeah and speaking of yeah. oj simpson he, he maybe got some superstar treatment with a certain court case back in the day and look I, i'm not comparing crimes at all but uh yeah it, it sure as hell feels like the court of public opinion has done whatever it possibly can to defend shohei otani and i get it I get it. I want to defend Shohei Otani because I hope and pray that he is innocent and didn't do anything wrong here because I don't want to lose him. Yeah. Uh, like, it's not that he gets arrested. I don't want to lose him for baseball. He's the best thing baseball has going right now, and he's so important to the current and future success of the sport that it would be disastrous if he wasn't on a baseball diamond anytime soon because of this. So, look, because of that, I think the guys on the MLB Network, guys on ESPN – baseball writers, whatever, like that, they obviously rushed to show Hayes defense to try to make him seem like the good guy here and make him seem completely yeah. innocent. Yeah. But hell, I was kind of doing that too. Cause I, I, I want him to be on the field. So yeah, the latest is federal authorities. This is not like MLB's investigation. Federal authorities have uh, concluded that Shohei was a victim of fraud and that he was not involved in the gambling scheme with the former translator. And the former translator, Ipe Mizuhara, is in negotiations to plead guilty in connection to alleged theft of Shohei's money. So either Ipe is the greatest fall guy of all time, or he is telling that, or I guess the federal authorities were right and Shohei's been telling the truth, and he really did have no idea that any of this was going down. Shohei has been able to do this as easy as, I mean, you see all these different things, and, and I mean, you're exactly right. I mean, th this was the last thing that baseball needed. I mean, between steroid scandals and strikes and Pete Rose stuff, I mean, this right here would been an, would be another dagger to a game that, that just doesn't need that because it seems like every time baseball's on the upswing, something like this happens. So so how detrimental would this have been? But it's like Shohei Otani, what he's done right here, I mean, he comes out, he makes his statement, doesn't field any questions, does, you know, does all of that, and then it's like, boom. It's all figured out, which is like totally the opposite of everything else. Yeah. I mean, you watch uh, every other scandal that we watch, whether it be sports related or political or just, uh, you know, celebrity, whatever. It never stops. It's on and on and on. You're always having to defend yourself. This dude defended himself one time, BK, and boom, it's done, man. The justice system is working the way it's finally supposed to work. It, um, it's taken a while, but damn it, it worked. How about this this update from the last few minutes? So, mm -hmm. you know, the, the tweet I just read, y'all, was from, you know, last night. But this tweet is from the last 15 minutes. Uh, Alden Gonzalez, who is a baseball reporter for ESPN, tweeted, quote, Ipe Mizuhara, Shohei Otani's longtime interpreter and confidant, has been charged with bank fraud. After it was discovered, he transferred more than $16 million. Whoa! From Otani's account to an alleged illegal sports book, federal authorities announced in LA court, end quote. Damn. More than 16, 16 mil. Now, you know, for Shohei with that new contract he just yeah. signed, 
kind of chump change, but you know, 16 mil is still 16 mil. And this but, is an interpreter that was making like what five figures. But, but how do you not know this? Because I, I know years ago, speaking of I 35, we went to Bucky's and spent 120 some odd dollars worth of random crap at Bucky's. And my credit card sent me an alert that said, Hey, somebody spent 120 some odd dollars at a gas station in, in Temple, ironically. How, how, how do you not know this? Uh, I mean, yeah, that that's, uh, I mean, you, like it's so hard to transfer large amounts of money. Like the, the government oh, the banking system, they have a lot of rules and regulations in place to where like you have to go through multiple levels of verification to approve oh, yeah. somebody wiring money from your account. Yeah. So that's look, I, I Shohei knew about this. I, I am convinced that Shohei Absolutely. knew about this. Now the question is like, and, and this is the conspiracy theories was Shohei actually doing the gambling or was Shohei telling his guy Ipe to do the gambling? If that's the case, then obviously that, that that's where Shohei gets in more trouble. Right. But if uh, you know, there's no way Shohei didn't know yeah. about this, or he was yeah. at least like informed about it and just like turned a blind eye and just said, whatever, like so, somehow, some way he was informed that somebody was transferring money from his account to an offshore illegal sports book. So he's, yeah. he's getting lucky that he's not being dragged down with Ipe here. Well, and that's a good thing and that, that they're squashing this, which, which was the plan from the get go. But man, I'm totally with you. I mean, in my real estate days, I would have clients where it's like, I'm trying to transfer $20,000 for a down payment or whatever. And, and they would call me up and they're like, Hey, I'm having trouble with the whatever. And I'm like, well, you, you got to contact the financial institution. I mean, that's not anything I can do. It's not easy to do that. I, I mean, the fact right here, I mean, this really goes back to, I mean, when you, you, ironically on the OJ passing day, uh, depending on what you think about that whole situation, when you want to think about the ultimate shams right here that may have been pulled off in life, this interpreter right with Otani, I, I mean, this dude, I mean, this is Colt Seavers all the way. When you want to talk about fall guy, this yeah. dude is boom. Yeah. Sheesh. And I guess I get, look, there, there's obviously a way, and this is me defending Shohei again to where it's just like, you know, the Ipe was lying to the bank. And he was signing off for Shohei. And maybe he changed the email on the <laughs> bank account to go to him instead of Shohei. Or maybe he was the guy in charge of tech, uh, checking Shohei's email. I don't know. I don't know. There's obviously a way <laughs> where all of this is accurate. But as a believer in a good conspiracy theory, I will I will uh, keep my eyes peeled to try to find out more. Always. Well, but, yeah. I mean, I, look, here's what I say. I say you give... Ipe that 16 mil and you give him a chance to win it all back. Do you let him make one bet? He can go put it all on black in Vegas on a roulette wheel. He could bet on a master's winner. He could just bet on a single baseball game that's going on today. One bet, let him win. If he wins the bet, he's off scot-free. Yeah. If he loses the bet, well, he's gone. Maybe a Dodgers game. If you bet on a Dodgers game, I think that that may be his best oh, bet. Right if only there. Shohei was pitching too this year, ah. like you just wait till Shohei makes his next start. Yeah, <laughs> then he pays put sixteen mil of Shohei's money on the line yeah. here. Uh, yeah, it's like you got the judge sitting there waiting. It's like, and they're watching the whole game. It's like he's he's ready to to hit the gavel, you know, innocent or guilty, you know, based on what happens with this Dodgers game. Um, you know, whatever, um, you know, we called it from the get go. It was something, it was going to go away. It did go away. And I think now you add the, the drama factor with that coming out. I mean, because we were talking about what four point something million dollars here at one point and now, okay, here's the full confession. Here's the full, whatever indictment, whatever it's going to be. And now it's up to $16 million. And that just, that just ends it. That ends it. It's done. It's done. I cannot wait for the Netflix documentary or docu series. Oh, this whole man. situation. Oh, dude, that that is one I'll watch. I don't watch too many shows or movies. You and I were talking about this yesterday, but yeah, that yeah. that is one that I will definitely. Oh, see. absolutely, yeah. When when that one all comes out, when that one all comes out, yeah, then then we know, then we know. 
wonder who would host that. You got to get one of those badasses, uh, investigative people to uh, to host that. I don't know who it would be. Uh, there's oh, a lot yeah. of them these days, you know, Dateline and all these different Oh, things. Chris, get Chris, or what, Scott Hanson? No, Scott Hanson's the red zone guy. That's the red zone. Well, he'd be all right. <laughs> Bob oh, Costas. Yeah. Let Bob Costas do it. Get him, get, get him that uh, pink eye that he had for the Olympics yeah. too. Let's let's bring yeah. that back for. Yeah. Oh my lord, man! I oh. got pink eye after watching him for that. It was like, geez, Louise, man, what yeah. the hell's going on over there? What happened to your pillow over there, Bobby? What's what's going on, dude? What are you getting into, guy? Yeah. yeah. Be careful. Be careful oh, over there, Bob. Gosh. All right, quick uh, sponsor shout-outs here. Love our friends at Olipop. Great-tasting soda that's actually good for you. I was down in the uh, cream soda Olipop earlier today during the morning show. It's fantastic stuff. Now i got to restock my fridge, but I will be doing that very soon. And uh, now a quick word from our great friends over at Pest Wranglers, Pest Wranglers, Pest Wranglers. Hey, it's Steve from Pest Wranglers, and I don't know of a single mosquito that owns a home with a backyard, but they sure like to hang out in your yard and make you miserable. Pest Wranglers can fix that for you. Our mosquito treatments are designed to kill adult mosquitoes as well as keep mosquito larvae from developing for up to three weeks. Use us all summer or just once before that big party. No contract, no hassles, no blood-sucking mosquitoes. Check out our reviews and see what others are saying about Pest Wranglers. Pest Wranglers, effective, reliable, affordable. Online at PestWranglers.com. Boom. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, Double R, some Texas football news. Uh, Bucky and I touched on this a little bit this morning, but Bear Alexander, who we all thought was going to enter the transfer portal yesterday, apparently decided to not enter the transfer portal. He's going to remain at USC. Uh, There's your news right there. He tweeted out yesterday afternoon saying he had no idea where those transfer rumors were coming from and that he is committed to staying and winning a national championship at USC, which, hey, if football doesn't work out, it's good to know that Bear has a career in stand-up comedy waiting for him if he wants. But, uh, man, I I don't know if I ever got your thoughts. I mean, Bear Alexander, a defensive tackle, that's a position of need for Texas. I've heard Jeff talk about this a lot, like when the portal opens up next week, once again, maybe Texas could be in the market for a defensive tackle Bear Alexander seemingly not an option anymore, but would you have been in on Bear Alexander despite all of his movement, both as a high schooler and as a college football player? You know, that that's really where I go back to. Yeah, and I guess it's Monday uh, when that portal opens up and we'll we'll start seeing what goes on there. But uh, that that's one of those guys with all of this. I mean, the inconsistency, the whole commitment. Like I said, the word commitment has been redefined uh, in these days with college sports. But when you got a guy like that that's jumping around, you know, it, it's like a it's like that headhunter that's always looking for the next best opportunity. And I mean that like a job seeker to where it's like, OK, I'm really content in this job, but I'm looking for always looking for the next thing. And and that's something where I mean, if you're going to bring somebody in there like that and, and you're going to rely on them to be a part of your culture. And this is where I think the, the the big word that I'll use right here. It looks like the culture at Texas has finally made that turn to where we got player development and things are going in the right direction right here with the staff and Steve Sarkeesian. And that's a dude that you bring in and that's a disruptor. I mean, that's a dude that you bring in and and is a disruptor. That that's a guy that uh, kind of, I hate to see, use that word drama queen. Uh, look at me. I, I mean, that that's not what you need with what you're trying to do in this locker room because this locker room is tight and the culture is good. You bring somebody in like that, and and I don't think that that's going to help you. I, I mean, not that it's going to set you back, but that that's not the locker room character that you need right now with Texas. Yeah, it might set you back too. And you, yeah, you, you don't want to use the word drama queen. I'll use the word drama queen. Like that's that's what this incident was. Like for a yep. player to literally leak yeah. to the media that he's thinking about transferring in an effort to get more money. Cause that that's what happened here. Come on. Uh, let's call a spade a spade. This guy was looking for a bag from USC and he knew how to get it and he got it. So good for him. It's not the guy I want on my team. Uh, but that's the college football landscape that we have right now. And that's the world that we're living in where guys can do stuff like that. And Hey, some schools might call your bluff. There are some guys who aren't good enough to uh, get that money. Some schools would be like, yeah, leave. We don't care. We don't want you that bad. Go try to find your bag somewhere else. You're not a part of this program anymore. So don't try Mm -hmm. to come back if you don't get the offer you're looking for. But Bear Alexander, talented player, super highly touted recruit USC. I'm sure spent a good amount of money last year to get him to transfer over from Georgia. So they, they didn't want to lose him after one year, 
Yeah. I'm like, oh shit, we already gave this guy a lot, but we really don't want to lose him. So let's give him more to ensure that we keep him to yeah. Bessie's situation. And that's like, I go back to Nick Saban's comments about why he retired. And it's kind of funny because, you know, Alabama hasn't been the cleanest of programs when it comes to paying or not playing. Yeah, his own game. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But he's right. Like, it, you believe it. More and more stories that come out about players looking for NIL money. You're like, oh, shit, no, Nick Saban was right. Like, this is yeah. a different world of college football that we're living in. And guys, number one priority, it's not to win championships, not to win games. It's to make money. And, and for some guys, I wonder if NIL is ahead of NFL, as crazy yeah. as that sounds. Like, obviously, you want both. But some guys, it's like, dude, I just I want to get my bag while I'm in college. And the NFL is not a sure thing. So I'm going to make sure while I'm in college, I can get as much money as possible and it feels like NIL has become the number one priority for a lot. I don't know what percentage to put on it. I don't know if it's majority. I don't know if it's all. I don't know what it is. But a lot of college football players and college student athletes in general seem hell-bent on making as much money as they can and having that being their top priority. Yeah, and it's I've had this discussion with acquaintances, um, you know, in the last year and a half to where it comes to, you know, I have a lot of friends that have sworn off the NFL to where it's like, I don't like football on Sunday or Thursday, whatever it may be, whenever the NFL's on, because the business aspect of it, the 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 diva wide receivers, the whatever, they're all about bagging the money. They're all about doing this. And when you look at, I mean, with college football right now, I mean, look what it is. And, you know, if we get to the point of, I've heard some conversation of this, what, what is it, the new college day or whatever, whatever they're talking about or reforming the, uh, you know, essentially taking the NCAA, which probably is not a bad thing, taking the NCAA out of the middle of this and having a separate committee or whatever that it's going to be that oversees all of this, um, some kind of reform. I mean, I don't see it as reform. We're Wild West now. I think you start doing that stuff. That's only going to make it even bigger. You want to rodeo shit show. That's what you're going to get. But yeah, with these, and that's a situation BK where I wish it was when he tweets out, you know, what, what he tweeted out where USC would have said, good luck. Yep. Yep. See you later. Didn't do it. They no. didn't do it. So now, you know, it would have been an interesting decision for Steve Sarkeesian to make. Once again, I, I think defensive tackle, uh, is one of the weakest positions one. on the team. So, look, Texas went out. They got Tia Savea in the transfer yep. portal already because they realized they needed more bodies there. Maybe Savea mm -hmm. it turns out to be a really good piece for Texas. He's got that familiarity with Johnny Nansen, yep. and he was a solid player at Arizona the last couple of seasons. So, hey, maybe he's what Texas needs, and some of the young guys that they have, you know, the Aaron Bryants, the Jeray Bledsoe's, the Sidney yep. Mitchells of the world – Maybe a combination of those guys can step up and give you enough depth there to where you don't feel the need to go uh, attack the portal when it opens back up next week. But yeah, I do. I do wonder if Bear Alexander ever actually entered the portal if Texas was uh, was going to go after him because yeah. it would have been a bidding war. And he's a talented cat, so I'm sure some big name programs would have been trying to uh, ring up the money to offer it well. to him. And now we'll never know if Texas was going to be one of those programs. Well, the plan worked. He threw it out there, and his current suitor uh, did did what you know they were supposed to do. So it was a, a greatly laid out plan that he did, and hey, and it worked. Hey, uh, yeah. Ryan Fox at the top of the Masters minus. Five. Yeah, yeah, just saw that Ryan Fox from New Zealand, if yeah. I'm not mistaken, leading right. the Masters. He's five under through eight. How about that to start off? You're opening rounds at Augusta five under through eight. He just eagled seven. Mm -hmm. uh, he is alone atop the leaderboard right now. Eric Van Royen is one shot back. He is the South African. He's at four under par. Not a lot of huge names. Bryson DeChambeau is two under right now. Yeah. Sergio, Sergio Garcia is on the course. He is one under. Justin Thomas and John Rahm, one under. Scotty Scheffler just teed off. He is one under through two. So yep. the favorite is uh, on the course and off to a solid start. And, yeah, still pretty early on. Once again, a two-and-a-half-hour delay this yep. morning at Augusta. So most of the golfers haven't even teed off yet, but you're starting to get more and more of the uh, bigger names on the course and should be a, a fun day. And it doesn't seem like weather's going to be an issue the rest of the weekend. 
Yeah, they should be good. Um, I was talking this morning. One thing that I'll be curious to see, especially with the late start, late start, because uh, obviously there's Tiger Watch that's going on right here. Um, he is going to tee off um, pretty late. I guess about three thirty our time. If, uh, I may be wrong with that. So I'll be curious to see if he gets eighteen holes in today. Because if he yeah. doesn't, I mean that's going to carry over, and th- then you go back to what what can the body take? I mean, can he can he sustain you, you know twenty four twenty seven holes tomorrow? Um, and does he make it through this? You know, that, for me with him it's not a matter of does he make the cut i'm like okay can he get through the first two rounds at this point yeah i'm seeing 354 eastern time Ooh. for tiger wow. so 254 our time yeah. and yeah you know I'd, I, it might be tough to get a full 18 in which is good for tiger today right he gets a little yeah, bit yeah. Of a lighter load but yeah tomorrow he's got to play uh you know 27 maybe or 24 or 21 whatever it is uh, not ideal for a guy who has openly talked about being in ridiculous amounts of pain. And I, I saw a little press conference clip earlier today, maybe in between shows. And he's just like, uh, yeah, no, it's, I, I have pain every day. Someone's like, you know, how consistent is your pain? Is it just when you're golfing? Is it just when you're walking? Is it when you're working out? Like, when does the pain happen? And he's like, no, I, I have pain every day. So, yeah. And he kind of chuckled about it, but uh, it's not much of a laughing matter. So it's, once again, it's one of the hilliest golf courses, if not the hilliest golf course that the PGA Tour goes to yeah. every year. I mean, just walking a Muni uh, on bad yeah. legs. Walking a Muni on good legs sucks. Good I don't, leg. don't want to do yeah. that shit. And my legs are fine. Yeah, uh, Walking that course on good legs is tough. Walking that course on Tiger's legs, with all the wear and tear that his body has been through. Yeah, yeah dude, that is, that is tough. And then, oh, by the way, to try to be competitive while golfing. It's not just you're walking it. You got to play as well. At, uh, I hope I'm wrong, but I, I give Tiger next to zero chance. I feel like yeah. he's got a better chance to withdraw than to actually be in contention come Sunday. That That's my thought, too. I mean, that, that's kind of my Tiger watch. When I talk about Tiger watch, I'm like, okay, if he doesn't withdraw, uh, to me, that's a win for him because I, I think uh, this is literally an uphill battle uh, yeah. for him in lots of different ways right here. But, yeah, I heard that discussion with him where he's always hurting that bad, and it's like, man, I, why are you even doing this? What What do you have to prove? I hey. mean, why, why are you even doing this, dude? Just just be done. He's got the new apparel line. New apparel I don't want line. It to be done, you know, and he's know. he's competitive. That's the answer. Yep. Like the the best athletes in sports are always ultra yep. competitive, and and that's Tiger. But for for Zay's sake, I mean, Zay told us yesterday he's he's not going to pay attention unless Tiger's in the mix. I sure as hell hope uh, Tiger makes the cut and is able to play through the weekend. Yo, Tiger, you know what helps with that pain? Sex. And no, he gave it up. up. He gave it up. I, I know. I can get it back. He needs to get it back, double R. He you better know, hurry man. up because he got to tee off here pretty quick. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Tiger, he could be a quick pumper. He you know never had problems saying? finding it. That's for damn sure. <laughs> that'd, that'd be so great if, like, maybe the month leading up to the Masters, he actually had given up sex. But then, like, last night, he just calls up, like, four waitresses from local restaurants in Augusta and is like, I need y'all. And the masters are here. I thought I could do this, but no, I need, I need to get back to prime tiger form. I need all four of you here right That's now. It. He calls up the waffle house. He's like, get over here right now. Yo, <laughs> ain't nothing like that waffle house poontang fellas. That's different. That's different. modern day Caligula. Oh, like man. Woods. The man. Uh, yeah, I've never, I've never say you ever had an encounter with, uh, a Waffle House waitress? Because I can't say that I have, and I'm pretty sad about it. Um, Denny's, yes. Waffle House, no. Okay. Denny's, yeah. yes? Yeah, come on. Oh, I got to so, hear about this. We don't have to hear about it. but just Hold on. I'm happen. not leaving until I hear about <laughs> it. We got to hear go. it, dude. We got to hear it. Break hey, it down for us. It wasn't like I pulled her when she was working at Denny's. She just happened to work at Denny's. Okay. Oh, so you oh. pulled her like in a club. Yeah, this is like... Six three you found out really. after the fact, so you yeah, got man. the ultimate grand slam. <laughs> you got the ultimate grand slam, my brother. Well done. Well did done. You, like, did, did you uh, did you ever go visit her at work? No, absolutely yeah. not. Could have been a like free that. meal, dude, or at uh, least half price. Denny's ain't bad. Denny's the morning after. Is that how that came up? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, I work here. Hey, no. <laughs> No, nah, it didn't happen like that, but 
Den- Denny's ain't that good for me to be popping up or asking for food and stuff. You know, it's no cover three. It's no salt traders coastal cooking. That's what, I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Yep. Yep. I'll, be, I'll be out of cover three today, watching a little golf, eating a little food. It's gonna be a good day for me. Oh, hell yeah. Sean Adams prime rib sandwich, baby. It's been too long since I've had Sean's meat and my oof. Hold on, oof. I gotta be careful with the <laughs> Yeah, meat rewind meat. that a little bit. Oh! <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, overdue. Overdue for that sandwich. It's very good. Hey, y'all, they had the wrong they had the wrong Dallas quarterback on the Masters a while ago. Troy Aikman was sitting up there breaking down the Masters. Well, he I guess he works for ESPN. Maybe that's why. I was like, where's Romo Dog? He had to be over there breaking that thing down. Yeah, can Romo actually golf too? Yeah. 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 Just ask him. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot. All right, gentlemen. We will uh Part ways, y'all have a great show, and uh, we'll be listening. Yes, yeah, thank you for the two hour. Little OJ great job. Got it later on, man. Two All hour right, OJ Simpson tribute show coming. You up. like that? R.I.P. Right. to the juice. Right. See you guys. <laughs> See you, fellas. Hey, in the immortal words of Judy Brown, happiness is a choice, and we're happy you spend some time with us. Chip and Zay, we even coordinated our shirts together today. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. I uh, texted Zay first thing in the morning. I was like, hey, let's wear our gray shirts in honor of the dead OJ Simpson. (laughs) No, come on. Hey. um, The juice. The juice. I saw that and I was like, I didn't even know how to feel. I didn't even know how to feel, but listen, all I'll say on that is I remember exactly where I was during the Bronco chase. Yeah. You? No, I was three. Oh, yeah, was you don't remember. No, but I've been very, you know, into this case and OJ Simpson for as long as I can remember and watching the biopics and documentaries and stuff. Oh yeah. Quite fascinating. Yeah. No, it, it is fascinating. It uh was all the rage 30 years ago. 30 years ago. But today the rage, well we got a couple of things going. We got the Masters. We got John Rom, the defending champ going to one under on uh number 2. And we got Texas Spring Football, baby. We'll talk to our man, Lance Taylor, the uh, our SEC insider and prognosticator. Get his thoughts on some of the SEC teams that Texas is now preparing for, uh, what he makes of their spring football performances and um and of course Zay and I will be talking some Texas Spring football because today we got to talk to Jaden Blue. Jaden Blue, the man that uh Texas running backs coach to shard choice compares to Jameer Gibbs. Jaden Blue ran a 10 200. Damn. 10 2. That puts him in fastest man category on this football team. Yeah, that's fine. I, I said, who else is in the mix? And he's like, Isaiah Bond, DeAndre Moore, Ryan Niblett. Damn. I'm like, no, no DBs? No. DeAndre Moore's that fast? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't think so. I didn't think so either, because I guess when I think of him at this point, hearing all the baby Jordan Whittington, you know, comments and stuff, like I Jordan Whittington was fast, but he was more football fast than he was track fast. So to hear Jaden Blue throw his name out there, no wonder uh, DeAndre Moore is getting a lot of love this spring. Look at that, my hair getting some love. It's Yeah, it's- man, I, I was going to say that. I was like, yo. I was going to wait a little bit, but CB beat me to the punch. Stylish, it's making, man. It's making a rare appearance. Yeah, man. I see. Did you rock that to the pressers today? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
No hat, baby. That's what I'm talking about. That's a good look, man. Well, it's a good look. My daughter is starring in uh, the musical at McCallum High School tonight. So I, I got up early, got that shower in, went out, ran some errands, of course, went and did press conference. And so tonight's a big night for Maggie Brown. At, yeah, good luck uh, to Maggie. She's the cat in the hat in the musical Seussical. She's playing the cat in the hat. Dr. Seuss? Dr. Seuss, yes. Wow. Yeah. If you want to go, man, I probably can get you a ticket. You know what I'm saying? You and uh, your lovely wife. Okay. I'm saying. I appreciate that. If you're, uh, if you're into that sort of thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Um, yeah, just go to MacTheater.com for anyone else who's looking for tickets. You know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, that, uh, yeah, no hat chip. It's man. I, I guess I need to get up early and shower more often. Um, yeah, well, you definitely need a shower. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the getting up early part. Hey, that's on you, but that's on me. That's on me. So la um, last week she had, she directed the play, right? How that? Yeah. Right. So when, when, when we went up to the university of Michigan, she was the musical director for the the show that she helped write and compose the music for um, called uh, walk you to your car. And, and so now she's actually performing on stage. And, and so I'm excited. I'm excited to, to see what she does with it. Cause that's a Dr. Seuss, man. You can do anything you want. Yeah. He's a, he's a fascinating character unto himself. He created his own language, basically. Circus McGurkus and all that, all that stuff. But uh, yeah, thanks, Scott. Appreciate that. Showing a little love for Maggie Brown. Maggie, you know, I when I was doing radio with Sean back in, you know, 2010, Maggie had open heart surgery when she was two and a half down at. Um, Children's Hospital in Houston, Dr. Charles Frazier, shout out. He's now the head of uh, pediatric cardiology at Dell uh, here in Austin, Dell Children's Hospital. And he's the best, best in the country, blessed to have him do her surgery. And um, I was like doing call-ins to the show to update. It was an eight-hour surgery. It's the scariest day of my life. Yeah, I bet seeing her go down the hallway and I couldn't go with her and um but God bless man modern medicine and she's doing great obviously she's yeah 16 now driving yo McCallum when it comes to that fine arts program and theater top tier so I, for her to be doing this yo that's pretty elite it's pretty yeah. incredible yeah she's she's a uh, She's a theater kid for sure. Um, all right, Zay. So athletics, nothing. Athletics, we used to beat the hell out of McCallum. Well, we used to blast them by 20 and stuff. Those were good days. I had good games versus McCallum. But yeah. she went to the the Taco Shack Bowl. Yeah, gets Anderson. Her freshman year, and she goes, Dad, we got killed. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yeah, it's that. Well, yeah, there Anderson's been 6A a lot and McCallum's usually 5A, so yeah. Well, it's there's, the, there's it's the performing arts high school. I mean, they win the one act play at the state championship, you know what I mean? Yeah. They just not so much on football. Yeah, but exactly. Great band. Really? Yeah. Huh. Yep, music, theater, they got that. Yeah. Uh dance, great Cheer squad, palm squad, dance squad. Um, but yeah, really talented kids. I mean, um, watching these kids go go on, like Maggie wrote the she's written two musicals with a kid named Anderson Zoll, who is mega talented, went to McCallum. He's now at the University of Michigan, where three thousand kids apply and twenty-four get in. And and we went we went up there, obviously, to uh to see Anderson and he's the one who staged the the musical at uh, University of Michigan. So 
yeah, it's been really interesting to watch watch these kids because um, they they're going for it. I mean, these are kids who want to go to Broadway and and kids who've gone to McCallum come back who who are on Broadway and talk to the kids. So wow, that's it's um it's it's like that movie Fame. Um, it's this you know you want fame? Well, fame costs, and here's where you start paying. So it's uh it's yeah um oh that's nice sd the chip and sean days made me like sports radio come on yeah man well appreciate that you're still hanging with us no rolling hopefully chip and zay are making you chuckle here and there and get a little infotainment on the sports that matter to you and even some topics like hey man know, you and Sean might have been like Shaq and Kobe. I'm good with being Pau Gasol. <laughs> <laughs> Pau Gasol's still pretty good. You know what I'm saying? Hey. I'm good with that. Or, or Shaq and D-Wade. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. They got a ring together. Joe do. They got a ring together. Um, do we need to – can we get a little more on the Denny's uh, situation? No, man, come on. No, you okay. Right. What's wrong right. with you? All right. Try to get me not. in trouble. Move I'm not, not trying to sleep on the couch, man. No, no, no. I'm right. not that dude. No. I got bad back nope. and stuff. I we feel the arthritis that. coming in. I don't I can't be sleeping on the couch because you want to hear a salacious story. No, nope. you're right. But I just I associate <laughs> you with salacious gossip per se Hilton, my man. I had a really good time before I met my lovely wife. Now I'm having a better time, but sometime there were some Denny's waitresses right. that I ran across. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Well, I love me a good waitress. Oh, yeah. They know how to serve. They know how to serve. <laughs> they know how to serve it up. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. Um, yeah, for sure. All right. So Texas football, Jaden Blue. So Jaden Blue, I'm hearing, and you know, Zay, I'm sure you've heard he's having a really good spring. He had a good scrimmage on Saturday. Uh was dominant, I was told, in the red zone work. And so Jaden Blue. So today I say to Jaden, I said, because he's a junior in the fall, he's draft eligible after the 24 season. I said, you looking at this year like a contract year and he said yeah we'll see how the year we'll see how the year goes but that's the plan the plan is for me to be gone after this season and listen Tavondre Sweat looked at last year as a contract year i think the NIL aspect of things has dialed the these top end um, student athletes into the fact that, hey, contract year. And they also look at Jonathan Brooks. Jonathan Brooks sure. waited his turn, wasn't even the starter last year, broke out, could be the top running back selected in the NFL draft in uh, in two weeks, two weeks from today, by the way. Um, we'll talk to Lance Taylor about that as well, but Jaden Blues, eh? I like his mindset. I like where he's coming from, and I sure like that 10-200 speed. Yeah, and that's where you hear the Jameer Gibbs comparisons from running backs coach Jamar Choice, uh, you know, Tashar Choice, excuse me. Um, you know, Jaden Blue, he has that home run ability every time he touches the rock, and that's very scary for opposing defenses. The thing with him is just holding on to that football. Like, that ratio isn't the best that what we've seen during all the times he has gotten touches, which it hasn't been that many. So you can't be giving that ball up. And, you know, we saw him in the Sugar Bowl. We saw him at some random game early in the year. So, you know, that running back room has been so thick over the past few seasons. And now that it's his turn and he understands, you know, what Jonathan Brooks did last season, as you mentioned, why not him? You know, and, and you know, he wants to see his other guys, his peers do big things, too. 
Like he put that tweet out a couple of weeks ago about him and CJ Baxter both going over a thou this season. Like they're trying to make that a part of their goals. And that just makes this offense even more dynamic with Quinn Ewers coming back for his third season as the starter. So, you know, the red zone, those key situations, short yarded situations, Jaden Blue going to be that guy. And I think he wants to take that responsibility on trying to do that, especially if he wants to be a second day pick in this upcoming draft next year. I mean, come on, Michael. See, I mean, come on. Zay's trying to let it go. He's trying to let it go. <laughs> Waitress only works for the tip. Just come the on. tip. Uh. I mean, come on, man. Yes. You want to go to Denny's? You want to go to Denny's later? No, I'm no. good. You're good. I'm, I'm all right. I can find a better pancake, I'm sure. Okay. No, if it's the Denny's, sure, all Denny's lovers out there. It's just when you live in Austin, Texas, you're spoiled with breakfast places. Yeah. You know, you're, you're, you're really spoiled. Do you have a spot? You got a spot? Um, I will switch it up. Um, Phoebe's Diner is a solid spot. Um, Kirby Lane. That always will have this nostalgic feel, even though it's changed since, you know, the OG original actual Kirby Lane location. That's always been like the tiniest one. But the one that used to be at Gordo's off of Lamar, South Lamar back in the day, that was the one. That was the one. And they moved it down a little further in that shopping uh, center. But so it's still on South Lamar. But yeah, Kirby Lane's still good. Um, Magnolia Cafe. I haven't had that in a minute. I feel like they got rid of the one off Congress with all the things that they've done down there, which is that hurts my heart. But that was a spot. Um, what else? I like uh, Broken Egg. Okay. Um, I checked that out recently. That's kind yeah. of uh. You know, up, up in my hood, that's uh, it's good. They have some crazy good French toast. I'm kind of a French toast connoisseur. Really? Yeah. What do you, what do you think of that? I, I like good French toast. Yeah. It's been a minute since I've had some, but yeah, I like good French toast. Um, the omelet tree off of airport. Good. Good call. Really good. Good call. Don't forget yeah. about don't forget about Cover Three's brunch this weekend with the Masters going on. That's what I'm talking about. I mean, just set up shop right in front of those big screens and get down with that Cover Three brunch. Do it yourself, Bloody Mary bar. Kick back, relax, enjoy. Great weekend for the brunch. Um, okay, so Jaden Blue, a couple things that stood out to me, Zay, um, the, we've talked about him trying to develop a bond, a closer bond off the field with CJ Baxter and, and Jake Major said the running backs are doing a better job of developing a relationship with the offensive line off the field that, because I said to, to Jake Majors, you know, when, you're talking about this bond. Is it on the field or is it off the field? He said, no, it's off the field. So they're, uh, they're trying to, you know, become a, a tighter knit group mm -hmm. as, as they, you know, again, that, that just contributes to them caring more, be willing to do more, be willing to sacrifice for the guy next to you, be willing to, when you're dog tired, you can't let that guy down. Um, and I didn't say who, but I said, have you heard Tashard Choice compare you to anyone? And he said, Jameer Gibbs. So that wasn't just T Choice saying that to me at Sugar Bowl Media Day. He's talked to Jaden Blue about that. And For that's, sure. that's big time. I mean, we know from what Jameer Gibbs did at Alabama, and of course, uh, in his rookie year with the Lions. My Lions. Oh, I got to show you this. If I see, if I show yeah, you a Lions shirt, 
Oh man, the St. Brown shirt. Sun God. Sun God. Yeah, man. For the people on our app, Chip showing us his Amin Ra St. Brown Sun God shirt with Amin Ra running with his hands out. That's fire, man. I like that. Yeah, man. I like Appreciate that. you. I can't Appreciate wait for you. that. It's Netflix um, special to come out. He said, uh, Jaden Blue, he said he wanted to get bigger and stronger, said he played about 193, 194 last year, and this year he's at 205. Ooh. Doesn't feel like he's lost any speed. And that, you know, he was asked about sitting out his senior year, and he said that he'd had a couple injuries in, you know, earlier, like, he even said middle school and he just wanted to get mentally and physically ready for the college game. So he skipped his uh, senior year and he played high school football with Matthew golden down in the, you know, the Houston area. So um, he, he said that he, he feels like he grew from that. And, and that he's matured, you know, that he's learned that waiting your turn isn't a bad thing. And obviously watching what Jonathan Brooks did last year, he, he's not one of these guys. It's like me, me, me. I need the carries. I need the carries. I need the carries. He said, I don't get caught up in the carries. I just get caught up in the opportunity that each carry presents making the most of each carry. And, you know, he said, Jonathan Brooks showed you can wait your turn and still get to the, get to the league. Now we'll see where JB goes in the draft, but could be the Dallas Cowboys. Kidding me? Huh? Cowboys fans. Yeah. They'll Cowboys putting all their, Huh? They'll appreciate that. Cowboys fans. At least they should, especially with Jerry spending more money on John Calipari than he's doing his own team. Yeah, not a good look, Jerry. Not a good look. But, yeah, back to Jaden Blue. I mean, I'm so excited about him. Like, well, he said, he's, he players. said, even though T-Choice compares him to Jameer Gibbs, he watches Christian McCaffrey. Yeah. He feels like he's got a game similar to Christian McCaffrey. Yeah. Take that. Yeah. Like, I mean, Jameer Gibbs is good, but Christian McCaffrey, he's been proven. Like, he's been the running best running back in the last three years, at least. Derrick Henry probably has a little say about that. But Christian McCaffrey, when it comes to do it all back, receiving, running in between the tackles, getting on the outside, you know, the versatility that he provides, you want to marvel your game after somebody like that. So it's cool hearing Jaden Blue say that. And I also love what you talked about with the bond that they're sharing with the rest of their teammates that's not just in their running back room, talking with the offensive line and, you know, just having that relationship that's very important you know i know some coaches they always preach hey when we have these team dinners or lunches and stuff don't sit with the same crew that you sat with the day before change it up learn about your teammates you know like find something that y'all could bond with and that's going to benefit the team when you get on the field because you're going to be able to relate and say okay this is my brother you know i get to know him he's my guy and yeah like it's just th those things are really important so for Jaden blue to say that that's steve sarkeesian his doing on building the culture and what he wants to see from his rosters and that's very positive all right, Coach 420. Coach 420 says, Chip and Zay, what's good? Meet me at the spring game with Partigan. <laughs> is the game? Yeah, the game is April 20th, huh? Wow. How about that, huh? How about that? How about that? Yeah, I'm not trying to be like my guy, Travandre Sweat. So you got to be careful. But, you know, I feel you. I feel you. The Texas spring game is on 420. Let's uh, let's ask our man Lance Taylor, SEC insider and prognosticator at Lance'sLock.com for the picks. LT, one of our uh, listeners, viewers, 
said, Chip and Zay, what's good? Meet me at the spring game, which is on 420. And partake in my favorite holiday with me. <laughs> uh, I like some flour. I like the edibles more. But I don't necessarily outwardly celebrate 420 on 420. I celebrate it a couple of times a week. Um, <laughs> but I feel him. Um, and what would be even more fun is I saw your boy Quinn Ewers got him a NIL deal with a jet. And I, all I could think about, can you imagine if Johnny Manziel would have had that same such setup? Oh, I mean, man. what? <laughs> it's, like, the only people with jets are like the top golfers in the world. I mean, the top 1%, right? Yeah, I've had the opportunity uh, a couple of times to fly private just because I know some friends that have friends that have a lot of money. And boy, once you fly like that, it's like you never want to go back. But knowing that Quinn Ewers, if he lives up to his potential, is going to have an opportunity to do that at times for the rest of his life. I mean, that is that is one of those perks that gets overlooked with a lot of these coaches. You know, they're getting $10 million a year, but when you see that they get 100 hours of the university jet, that is so underrated. Um, and especially if you travel a lot, and I don't travel nearly as much because I relate to the air travel. Not only do I get a lot of uh, anxiety, I just I get delayed or canceled all of the time. And that don't happen when you fly private. Yeah, for those of you who are wondering, because uh, we had not touched on this yet, uh, Quinn Ewers uh, has announced that he has a new partnership with Nicholas Air. <laughs> Nicholas Air. Um, he calls it a first-class organization, a perfect match for my travel needs. Come on, man. Yeah, why not? Why not, man? You guys, you do it big in Texas. Obviously, you know, coming into the SEC, but wasn't it Bijan that had a Lambo? Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Austin Lamborghini has, has – uh, Help those guys out more than uh, I think anyone ever realized they would. Yeah, yeah just don't don't pull a Rasheed Rice in that Lambo, right? Ooh, it's not a good look. No, <laughs> it's not good. No. That was I'll not tell you, man, good. nil. You know, it's funny. We just don't even see these guys do commercials. So you get the release. I guess you get a little love there. I guess he'll do social media when he's on their jet. But I mean, what is the percentage? I know you guys got a lot of oil money there. But what is the percentage of people that can actually even afford a timeshare on a jet like that? So I don't know what the market is. Um, good for him. Maximize the deals. That was a kid that was getting like uh, badass um, four wheel drive trucks when he was like 16 going to Ohio State. Right. That guy's been he's been cashing in since day one. Yeah. Jackson yeah. Dart apparently also has a deal with Nicholas Air. Yep. Jackson Dart at Ole Miss. Yeah, it's pretty crazy when you think of an Ole Miss quarterback like that. Hey, let me ask you guys on the fly, because I know we're pretty loose when we do this. Um, but I brought this up today. Like, you know, we were talking about the whole Kentucky search and Calipari going to Arkansas. When can you lose the greatest coach in college football history and still make the argument that the SEC – or in the SEC, the greatest conference, that Alabama has got the best combination head football and basketball coach – and I don't know what direction you guys would go, but I think, you know, Nate Oates, three sweet, sweet 16s in the last four years, a final four this year. Kalen DeBoer, two years at the Power Five level, um, a conference championship, trip to the college football playoff, and an appearance in the national title game. I don't know what other pair you would put in front of those guys. And the reason I asked that is because you brought up Ole Miss, and we were talking about a sneaky good pair is Chris Beard and Lane Kiffin. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think, I think right now, I mean, Zay, Zay's dad is a 33-year high school basketball coaching legend in Texas. I mean, Michigan State's not there. I'm thinking of the basketball programs, you know, UConn done, what, football? They Yeah, well, I was just talking specifically in the SEC. When you take it oh. further, I mean, you yeah. still might have that argument when you take it, you know, on a bigger scale. Yeah. Yeah, Lance, probably the best – that we've seen was Donovan in Florida with Urban Meyer. Yeah. When those teams were both winning it, but yeah, Nate Oates and Kalen DeBoer, they got things rolling, which I told Chip last week, if Rodney Terry wasn't the guy, Nate Oates should have got that call. I don't know if he did, but 
Well, what's interesting, Lance, is the the whole situation uh, with the kid with the gun. That's all just, you know, the timing when Texas, because Texas was, you know, before Rodney Terry got on his role and to the Elite Eight and basically forced Texas to hire him, Texas was looking around and it was Eric Musselman, it was Nate Oates and, you know, Sean Miller, the usual suspects. But there were some Texas fans that were like, oh, Nate Oates, you know, that Brandon Miller deal, uh, the gun. Now it's like that never happened. Yeah. Well, I mean, you look at Terrence Shannon Jr. at Illinois and I, you know, I don't know what's right. I'm, I'm a guy that I believe in due process. I don't think our ju- judicial system is the best in the world. But, you know, we are a society now where we are guilty until proven innocent. And I mean, sometimes you got to let these things play out. I know the optics are terrible. But come to find out, Brandon Miller really had nothing to do with that situation. And I know Nate Oates still takes a lot of heat for that. But, you know, it's like the Duke lacrosse players. You guys remember that massive story 20 plus years ago. And those guys, those lives have never been the same. So the accusation, when it's false, when you've got a false accusation like that and you can ruin a kid's life, I mean, it's, you know, I don't know. It's 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 a tricky situation. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-oh. We got an AM fan saying Buzz and Elko. Watch out. <laughs> Buzz okay. and Elko. Look, Elko, I mean, great defense coordinator. I thought he did a lot at Duke. You know, if um if Riley Leonard doesn't get hurt on that crazy fourth down play, um, you wonder if if uh or I guess it was – did Notre Dame they, – they actually converted the fourth down and then Riley Leonard was forced back in the game where yeah. he got hurt. And they should have won that game and they probably have a 10-win season. So I think Elko's a good coach yet to see what he can do on this stage. And then Buzz – I like Buzz a lot, man. Buzz seems like a fun guy. He dresses like an old-school gangster. But, I mean, he hadn't really done anything. You know, he's been, he's been okay. Right. Right. Yeah. His best days were at Marquette with uh... – Jimmy With, Butler. Uh, Jimmy. Jimmy Butler. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. All right. So I, I don't I don't think you can yeah. No, go I ahead. Was just say, I don't think you make an argument really, really for anybody else in the SEC right now, but you know, we'll see. No, I agree. I agree. I agree. Because uh yeah, I mean LSU's not there. Yeah, Florida's well, not there. Before we get in the football, Lance, how do you feel about Cal going to Fayetteville? And who you think is going to get that Kentucky job now that Scott Drew is staying in Waco? Yeah, I'm a little surprised Kentucky's having this hard of a time finding a coach. Um, but you look around, you know, Dan Hurley is a guy that's got a comfortable situation, obviously. Um, Nate Oates loves Tuscaloosa. That buyout is massive. I think he showed a commitment to the university when Greg Byrne put that deal together. Um, Scott Drew surprised me a little bit. I mean, obviously he's able to win a national championship a couple of years ago in Waco. So, um, I guess his family did visit and maybe they just started to talk about, you know, the politics of Kentucky and how massive that is. And do you really want to deal with it? I mean, Scott Drew, you know, sooner than later is going to have a statue outside of, uh, that arena in Waco. So he's in a good spot. Um, I don't know, but to Calipari, I do think it got stale. You look at his first six years in Lexington, they were outstanding. I'll still give him a B-plus on the complete tenure. I know a lot of people would disagree with that, and especially losing in the first round two of the last three years in the tournament. But I think with the money they're going to have at his disposal, and it's not like he didn't have a lot at Kentucky, but I think this is a starving fan base that has not won a national championship in over 30 years. And I think he will have every resource he wants, and he is – an ego guy that wants to make sure he does not go out like a Bobby Bowden or a Joe Paterno. He wants to go out much like a Nick Saban. So I think there's going to be a lot of extra energy. Um, I think they're going to be hell to deal with for the next couple of years. I don't know how long he's there, but that is a great basketball school that has really been on tap. But, you know, before this run from Nate Oates, when you start to look at the SEC over the last three years, you could make an argument as, as much as disliked as he was Musselman back-to-back elite eights with Arkansas, that's damn impressive. And you put a guy like Calipari that can recruit to his level in there, I mean, I don't know if he'll win a national championship, 
but I think he'll be back in a final four. For sure. Chris Beard, is that who's going to end up with the Kentucky job? You know, I heard from somebody inside of college basketball last night, Chris Beard really contemplated on Arkansas. I think the hesitation was the opportunity that Ole Miss gave him with that second chance. But I think even if you're Ole Miss, you can't fault Chris Beard for taking Kentucky. And you can only stay so loyal for so long. And I do think Chris Beard could make Ole Miss a very interesting, tough out program where they win 24, 25 games and, you know, slip into the Sweet 16 every couple of years. But at Kentucky, he can win a national championship. You guys saw him up close and personal. Um, the guy's an elite coach. And when he's got the resources, even when he really didn't have them at Texas Tech, was able to play for a national championship, I just think he would be next level good. Like what Dan Hurley is doing right now at UConn, I didn't see that coming. I would see it coming with Chris Beard. And we've talked about this before with you guys. If he would have stayed at Texas, maybe he's already won one um, in just the last couple of years. But I think slam dunk if he gets that opportunity. And if I'm Mitch Barnhart in Kentucky, Look, we all make mistakes, man. And I, you know, there's two sides to every story. There's typically three sides. You guys know that story a little bit better than I do. Um, it was a bad situation. Again, the optics on that look awful. Uh, but Ole Miss gave him another opportunity, and somebody outside of Ole Miss will give him another opportunity. Why not let it be Kentucky if you want to get back to uh, cutting down nets? Would Bruce Pearl leave Auburn for Kentucky? I don't think so. I think there's a couple of layers to this. So Bruce is 63, I think. We've had this discussion the last few days. Um, Bruce, much like Chris Beard, has a sense of loyalty to Auburn. And I think early on, that was one of the reasons he wouldn't leave. I think now he truly loves the program. Um, there were a lot of people that believed Auburn was going back to a Final Four this past year after winning the SEC tournament. Uh, he got to a Final Four in 2019. He knows he's got all the resources. They just got a Nike contract. That was one of the big hiccups for a little bit. You guys know how the shoe deals in basketball work, and probably not to the degree they once did with NIL. But now that they've got this Nike deal done, that's more appealing. And the biggest caveat is his son, Steven, who's the associate head coach. If he takes off to Kentucky, nothing is given. I think John Cohen, the athletics director right now at Auburn, um, I think there's been discussion behind the scene when Bruce leaves, whether it's next year, two years, five years, Steven's going to be that guy. And there's no way that's going to be um, on paper or guaranteed if it's Kentucky. So I think Bruce's big hesitation, two things would be the loyalty to Auburn and the fact that uh, it would be an unknown for his kid, Steven, who's a great dude. Interesting. You yeah. know, Rick Barnes, Rick Barnes turned down Kentucky when they gave the job to John Calipari. I mean, it's not for everybody. Rick Barnes seems like one of those guys that, you know, whether it's Providence, whether it's Texas, which is a big program, Tennessee's a big program, Kentucky's not for everybody. Um, and Barnes, I don't know. You guys know him better than me. He doesn't seem like a massive ego guy. I know all of these guys have got an ego of sorts, but I think it does take a special coach to actually take that job. I know the money speaks, uh, the tradition, everything. But if you don't win a national championship, and really outside of Billy Gillespie, who doesn't win one? I mean, from Rupp to uh, Joby Hall, um, go down the list, Patino, um, Tubby Smith. Tubby. Uh, they California. do eat they, their own, though. They do eat their uh, own. Well, Tubby that's, won the national championship, got sick uh, of it. Left. Oh, I, I remember being at the SEC championship or the SEC basketball tournament in Atlanta the year after he won it. And I think they lost to Mississippi State in the first round. I think this is right. And people were just dogging him out. I mean, it is, it is, what are you doing at the moment? And that's why Nick Saban never had a problem because there was never a fall off with Nick Saban. There just wasn't. And, you know, if DeBoer, you know, I, I saw and this is funny, I was reading about their 13th spring practice the other day and just some highlights. And at the bottom, it did the playlist for the, for the practice. And I'm like, in what world would Nick Saban allow a playlist at his practice? And the players are loving it. They're embracing it. The assistants are loving it. Uh, there's talk of, you know, feet on the desk, uh, laughter, um, a lot of comfort in the football facilities. But you guys know as well as I do, you know, whether it's Georgia they lose to at home in September or, God forbid, they lose in Camp Randall to Wisconsin, it's going to be, you see, he's not doing it the right way. He's not doing it the Saban way. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, um, I was going to jump over to uh, – little spring football 
uh, because Kentucky has 17 starters returning. And they've got uh, the kid at quarterback who came from uh, Coastal Carolina. Yeah, Grace McCall. Yeah, Grace McCall. Um, they are in a trap game situation on the Texas schedule right between road trips to Arkansas and A&M uh, in November, Lance. Is Kentucky a team that is flying under the radar? Uh, possibly. Look, I think Mark Stoops, and when we had the discussion about the combo coaches, I, you know, I said – there was a time where Stoops overachieved so much and Calipari was actually going to Final Fours. You could have at least put them in the mix into that conversation. Um, I think Mark Stoops is a hell of a coach. For whatever reason, they can't get the offense right. You know, Will Levis, who's now a starting quarterback with the Tennessee Titans, I never saw anything that jumped from Will Levis. Um, Devin Leary coming in from NC State, I thought he was going to be better. He wasn't. And now a guy that's been very productive for years at Coastal is coming in and Grayson McCall. And I just, I don't expect much from the offense. I've just, I've never seen it. Kentucky will play great defense. Um, you know, they'll play a Georgia sometimes within 10 points. Uh, you know, eight, nine wins, everybody's happy. But I just don't see this offense popping. But but we'll see. And, I mean, I'm, I don't have it right in front of me. Who's the offensive coordinator? Uh, is it still not Liam Cohen? Let me see here. It was, uh, my, my, uh, Sean McVeigh disciple, which was Liam Cohen. I think Liam Cohen's back. I think he went to Kentucky, came back to the Rams and went back to Kentucky. I could be Liam wrong. Cohen returns. Yeah. Liam Cohen. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I look good assistant with the Rams, but everything's masked by how good Sean McVay is calling plays. I haven't seen anything from Liam, Liam Cohen. Uh, but look, I mean, this is what Texas is going to learn fast. And I shouldn't say Kansas, bad example, because what Kansas was able to do against the Longhorns. But there's not going to be off weeks in the SEC. Outside of seeing Vanderbilt on the schedule, there just isn't. Yeah. 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 What are you hearing with Ole Miss? I mean, Lane Kiffin – he, you know how he acts. He acts like shit don't stink and everything's just gravy. And it's like, dude, you have the number one transfer portal guys in the nation, if you ask a lot of people. So I'm not necessarily saying hot seat, but there's a little bit more pressure on Lane Kiffin with his quarterback coming back than in recent years. Yeah, I think it's fascinating because you've got everything you need to win. And look, they won at a high level last year. They won 11 games. Um, I've never been a big Kiffin guy. I think he's one of the best offensive coordinators I've ever seen. Um, I'm a very immature guy. I'm trying to get a little bit better with age. Chip has hung out with me behind the scenes. He's seen it in full effect. So much fun. But I'm not but I'm not the face of a program and I just don't get the trolling. Um, he's bringing Joey chestnut in for the spring game. First of all, who in the hell cares about Joey chestnut? Um, I just don't get some of the annex. If I'm Lane Kiffin, man, I've got everything in life that I want now outside of winning championships. Let's focus. Um, I know he wants to do it his way, but there's, there's, there's ways to kind of tighten that up a little bit, but there is a massive expectation. And I think if you ask people right now, if everything breaks the right way with the 12-team playoff, I think the SEC can get four in. I think they're going to get three in. And if you were going to go with three, I think most people would go Georgia, Texas, Alabama. But if you're going to go four, I think most people over LSU would take Ole Miss. We saw a track meet of a game last year in Oxford where Ole Miss won that game, and that was against the Heisman Trophy winner and Jaden Daniels. But I think with what Ole Miss has got coming back, and you look at their schedule. I mean, I don't know if you've got it right there in front of you, Chip. Yeah, no, it's good. Uh, their schedule is so, so uh, beneficial, and they can navigate that schedule. And, um, you know, they go 10-2. and two, They're going to be in a college football playoff because I think Ole Miss is going to start somewhere between 9 and 12 preseason. Yeah. Well, what the hell is Joey Chestnut going to do at the spring game? Uh, Eat a I, bunch I, of hot dogs and – I don't know. I thought one of the, the funnier things is Kirby Smart. I think it was his first spring game. He had uh, Ludacris. And, and the writer got out. And, and this is – so I've got a good friend that owns a comedy club here locally. And, like, Pete Davidson was in town a couple of weeks ago. And I always just randomly will check in what is on their writer. What do they need to feel like a big-time celebrity? Well, for Ludacris at that spring game in Athens, and this is, hell, almost a decade ago now – 
uh, he had all this this massive list of different vodkas and and then what popped up was two boxes of Magnum Trojan condoms. And that that was on the rider out there. Yeah, that was circulating everywhere. And I'm just like, damn. So that was entertaining. We talked to Kirby about it. And he's like, I had nothing to do with that. Um, but Joey Chestnut, I don't know what he brings to the table. I really don't. I don't want to see a dude eat. It's one of the low lights for me on 4th of July, the Nathan's hot dog eating contest. I don't watch it. I like to gamble on everything. I don't gamble on that. Um, it's really stupid, in my opinion. Well, what? when did you get turned off by Lane Kiffin? Because there's a lot to pick from. But where on the timeline did you get turned off by Lane Kiffin? Uh, you know, I don't, you know, he's, he's been on the show. It wasn't Tennessee. USC. Okay. So he fell forward for a lot of these jobs. You guys will agree. Fell forward into the Oakland job, fell forward into the Tennessee job, uh, the USC job. I think he's become a really good head coach. I just don't like, and again, everybody's like, dude, you would love to hang out with Lane Kiffin. He is a guy you'd love to run with. And I know some guys that have bars in Tuscaloosa and I've, Heard some incredible stories. Uh, I don't know really what it is. I really don't know what it is. There's just something that that turns me off about him. Um, I mean, it's not going to beat me up. Be able to... Yeah, there's something about that. And uh, I did he know. get with I... Saban's daughter? Is that true? <laughs> I do not think that was true. I think I think a lot of that was embellished. Um, look, Lane had his fair share of fun. Lane was a single dude, though. You know, for a moment in time in Tuscaloosa. Um, but no, I think Joey that fresh was water. Yeah. Joey Freshwater. Um, there is some legitimacy to, uh, to that handle we'll call it. Um, but as far as Saban's daughter, no, I don't think that was ever, uh, I think that's one of those staggering rumors, you know, when you hear it on the surface, you're like, well, it is Lane Kiffin. Um, yeah. but no, <laughs> I, I don't think there's any substance at all to that. Cause he did pull the plug on Lane. He didn't even have him call the plays in that national championship game. Sark called the plays in that 2016. Yeah, I think it was, boy, I'll tell you, man, one day there's going to be like a 40 for 40 where um, it's on Nick Saban and it's internally the coaches. And I think the one coach that could push his buttons more than anyone was Link Kiffin. And Alabama fans, it, it's really interesting, guys, because when DeBoer, like I said all along, I think DeBoer should be the guy. Like if, if Greg Byrne goes out and gets him, it's a home run hire. There were a lot of Alabama fans like, we want Lane Kiffin. And I kept saying, do you not remember between the Washington and Clemson game that Kiffin got five? When have we ever seen a dude relieved of his duties between a semifinal and a championship game? And if Kiffin's calling plays, they win the national championship. I just believe they do. So, you know, um, really, indirectly, he cost them a national championship. So I don't know how you get over that. But Alabama fans, I think they like how smug he is. You know, get your popcorn ready, throwing off the headphones. That kind of shit is so stupid to me. But yeah, it's like Kevin. Well, in fairness to Sark, Jalen Hurts scored the go-ahead touchdown with what? A minute, some change left, and then the defense let – uh um, big fella, Deshaun Watson, zip, zip, zip down the field. And yeah, I, I guess the philosophy though was four seconds left. maybe Alabama has more points and Alabama fans, Chip, are going to call that a pick play all day long. That was an illegal screen right. on that final touchdown from Clemson. I really don't care. Look, uh, Nick Saban's got enough national championships. Dabo's probably got enough. Um, but yeah, I still but think Dabo's some people... still not hitting the portal. No. Yeah, I asked this to, I think it was Andy Staples we had on yesterday, the guy that you guys know covers college football. And I said, coming into this year, um, who is under more, like, they're not going to get fired, but the pressure, and it was between uh, Dabo Sweeney and Lincoln Riley. Like, you know, Lincoln Riley, really good first year, but if you watch those games, it was not a good USC team that went to the Pac-12 championship game. And then last year, they lose five games, and the defense was just as dis- disgusting as it was in year one. Um, but if you're Clemson, you're like, I appreciate the two national championships, but we're getting worse and worse. We're not even in the alpha in our conference anymore. So I think both of those guys, really interesting years coming up again. No way they would get fired, but if I'm a USC or a Clemson fan, I need to see improvement. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. I mean, what do you what do you make of the Bear Alexander deal? Uh, I think Bear probably shook them down. Like the money that's going around in that collective right now is pretty insane. And I've heard that it's had some some negative uh, repercussions as far as like guys. I want my Gucci. I want my Prada. We lost the game. We're still laughing. It's not that big of a deal. Um, but their NIO money's pouring in. I don't know exactly where it's coming from. I know Southern California, that university's got a lot of money. Um, but Barry Alexander back to him. He was an impactful guy. I think he was second in quarterback hurries last year. Um, DeAnt Lynn, who's going to be taking over that defense, needs every part available. I think they should be improved this year, and Barry Alexander is going to be a big part of that. Um, but I th think it was one of those that, okay, I can get this elsewhere. Can I get it from you guys? And until he got it, uh, he was going to test the waters. Yeah. Lance, which conference do you think is going to get significantly better with all the transition, like Colorado and Utah going to the Big 12 or the Horns and Oklahoma going to the SEC or Oregon and those teams going to the Big 10? Which conference do you think is going to take that jump to where it's going to just – compete with the sec maybe on the best conference yeah thought about this and this is an easy answer i think it is the big 10 or the sec just by this logic like if texas won the national championship next year nobody would would blink an eye really if oregon i mean with dylan gabriel if oregon won a national championship i don't think people would be shocked so i think you've got instant impact programs in those conferences like i think the big 12 is going to be better than advertised i think that's going to be a fun conference I just don't think you've got anybody there that can make really national headlines. And I do think, you know, USC probably not this year, but who knows? Um, and then we just saw Washington play for one. And then when you get the brands that are Oklahoma and Texas coming into already the biggest brand in all of football, the SEC, I mean, those conferences, again, the Big Ten is going to, I mean, the Big Ten, you still do have, you know, your Illinois and, just because they can't play offense, play on the offensive side of the ball, your Iowa's, your Rutgers, your Maryland's, you've got some kind of layup games in the Big Ten, but the SEC not so much. But I think both of those conferences really improve with who they're bringing in. LT, we'll let you go on this. Who you got winning the Masters? Ah, uh, okay. So we talked about the shortest odds to win in Augusta or Scotty Scheffler for the. The shortest odds they've had in Augusta since 1989 with the shark, Greg Norman. And Scheffler is an amazing player. I've got him winning this thing. I just don't understand how these odds are this short. We're talking about a guy that has got one major championship winning that Masters in 2022. And look, he's got a lot of runner-ups. He's always in the mix. He's almost a guarantee to, to be a top 10 guy this week. So I'm going to go with Scheffler. If I'm going to give you a dark horse, I'm going to go Cameron Young. And I haven't even seen numbers today because everything got pushed back with the weather. We were on location today. So I don't know what Cameron Young's doing right now. Dark horse Cameron Young, but I'm going to go with, like most people um, with Scotty Scheffler. You guys? Yeah, it's hard to pick against Scheffler. I'm I'm intrigued to see this, uh, the, the new guy, uh, oh, God, Aubrey Vodar or whatever. He's supposed to be the the next big thing in golf. It's his first Masters. Um, Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that pressure might bite him. Last one for me, Lance. OJ Simpson passed away today. Everybody has their opinions on OJ. What is yours? Well, you know, when I was, I'm not going to say a kid. I remember exactly where I was. Um, I remember when <laughs> this is so random. But watching Rockets and Knicks NBA Finals in an Applebee's in an old school mall here in Birmingham, Alabama, and then going to a, a festival that we had called City Stages downtown. And they had all kinds of incredible acts. And it was a four day festival from sun up to, to you know, midnight. So I went to that afterwards. Uh, there was a big screen in the parking lot. We watched the uh, Bronco chase. And I was in disbelief because I grew up watching um oj simpson from the naked gun to hertz commercials to doing you know uh broadcast on nbc and he just seemed like such a genuine charismatic guy so i couldn't believe it and then you watch the trial play out and you see the civil suit and you start to use common sense and he did some some awful things that i'm a second third fourth chance kind of guy but it's a weird moment like i brought up i follow usc athletics on twitter 
I haven't seen anything they posted, but like if I'm in charge of Twitter, I don't know what to do. You know, the guy won a Heisman Trophy. He was great for the university, but it's kind of hard to celebrate somebody's life when you think they've murdered two people. Yeah. So yeah. I don't, I, it's, it's tricky. It's, he is one of the more complicated superstars we've ever seen because I don't think, you know, Mike Tyson for a second, but Mike Tyson is beloved. I'm looking forward to the July 20th fight between Jake Paul and 58 year old Mike Tyson, but we've never seen an athlete fall in like this. When you go from being the golden boy to being a guy that, that people recognize as a murderer. I mean, we've just never seen that. So it's, it's kind of hard to categorize that guy. When's the Tyson Jake Paul fight? July 20th on Netflix. July 20th. I, I'm, I'm a, I'm a sucker for, for things like that. But my, you know, my kids are all, you know, they want to see Jake Paul fight. They're all Tyson fans from not watching Tyson fight from the hangover. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be, uh, and hell you guys have seen like Jake Paul. The one thing I will say about him, I thought he was a blowhard. I've watched, I think all but one of his fights, but he's up in Colorado training with the Olympic team right now. The guy's got heavy hands. He's got a great work ethic. And on the other side, watching Mike Tyson spar, he don't look 58. And I think in a bar fight, he would absolutely clean one out right now. So, you know, I'm in it for entertainment. I'm not in it. Like, I love the sport of boxing. I'm more boxing than MMA. Um, but I'm not going into this as like, you know, um, Pacquiao Mayweather. I'm going into this just to be entertained in the middle of the summer. Are you in on the UFC card this weekend? It's a huge card. No, my, you know, one of my, my boys, he likes to watch it a little bit just because the carnage, but I just, I can't really get into it. And it's one of those sports that, I mean, it really is unpredictable. Like you'll have a moment in time where um, Chuck Liddell looks unbeatable. Anderson Silva looks unbeatable. And those guys only get their moment for so long because these dudes are bad. I mean, just bad, bad dudes. And like, there's a, there's a local walk-ons here, one of my clients, and one of their managers is like an MMA guy. And he looks, you know, just kind of a wiry dude. He's one of those guys, like, back in the day, if I would have bumped into him at a bar and a drink spills and he looks at me, I would have looked at him and he would have beat me into the ground. And this is what I try to teach my boys. Like, you never know who's bad and who's not. And you just watch MMA. Because when those dudes have a shirt on in a bar, you don't know what they're about, but they will kill you. Yeah. Yeah, Rashad Bobino. He was a middle linebacker for Texas. He got in a fight with a little wiry MMA guy and got knocked the F out in oh, the middle yeah. of 6th Street in Austin. Well, you guys will remember this from the 2009 championship game. Former linebacker for Alabama, Eric Anders. Oh, he's yeah. on the circuit. Yeah. You know, and yeah. he's he's pretty good. You know, he's not like next level, but I mean, you know, Dana White recognizes him and he's turned into a really good fighter. So, you know, you got the combination of being a former linebacker and an MMA guy. Yeah. Uh, Ludwig Aberg, Ludwig okay. Aberg from Sweden. Now I know who you're talking about. I almost played him. I'm in a, I'm in a, um, I think there's a hundred and something of us and we put up, um, cash in advance and it's the four majors and the TPC at Sawgrass. And you can only use a player one time. I was going to use him in TPC and I ultimately didn't, but, uh, I saw him out there. I thought about it. Cause again, you can only use these guys once. So I've got Scheffler, I've got Matsuyama. I've got Rory and I've got Cameron Young. That's good. Okay. That's yeah. good. Anything for uh, Lance's lock.com, my man. Coming off a of 4 1 last night, we've got uh, NBA and Major League Baseball available now. Go to Lance's lock.com. You get a free play every single day. We are going to win for you. By the way, 3 0 in the women's tournament this year. Let's go. Nice. <laughs> yeah. I'll Come never on. watch again, but I got caught up in the Caitlin Clark <laughs> moments. And, uh, uh, yeah, we had uh, UConn against Iowa. We had South Carolina against NC State. And then we ultimately had South Carolina against Iowa. So, hey, you never know what we're going to come with. It could be him. We'll have match play. I've already – once once I get the numbers out, we'll have match play for sure Saturday, Sunday of the Masters and maybe tomorrow. So, check that out at lanceslock.com too. You get everything. It's only 100 bucks a month. There you go. All right, Lance Taylor, ladies and gentlemen, we love it. Every Thursday, 130. Appreciate you, dog. Yeah, you guys enjoy the Masters. I will uh, talk to you guys next week.
All right. Thanks, Lance. Appreciate you. Lance See, Taylor, the Lance Taylor on Twitter, lanceslock.com for the picks. Always entertaining with our man LT. Um, they would that there was a lot there. Um, oh yeah, that's why Lance lot, is one of the best. A lot there. Um, on Kentucky. He says they're going to play great defense, but you never know what you're going to get from the offense. So that makes me feel a little better about that trap game where Texas plays at Arkansas, then home against Kentucky, then at AM uh, at the end of the season. And uh, Lane Kiffin is bringing Joey Chestnut in. Just a circus. That, that, I'd rather hear Luda. Give me Luda. Oh, yeah. A little I mean, Luda, move, bitch, get out the way. Yeah. yeah. Bring, in some, bring in some Magnum condoms and Luda and and just have a good time. Have a good time. I don't, yeah. I don't want to watch Joey Chess. I mean, yeah, because he's going to give like a motivational speech on winning. Oh, is that what it is? I mean, that's what I would think. Like Lane would let him talk. And he is a winner. I can't knock him on that. You know, competitive eating. Competitive. That's the key word there. So is he going to let these guys know what it takes to be a winner? What it takes to be a champion? Okay. I guess there's something with that. But how seriously are you going to take it? <laughs> All right, go. This guy. I'm about to get my head knocked in on every single play playing offensive line. And I got to listen to this guy talk, talk about being a champion that eats a thousand hot dogs in one setting. It's nuts. Let me see what they're promoting on the Ole Miss website. No, it is going to be a hot dog eating contest. What do you oh, mean? Yeah. They're, they're having a, a contest? Like a come one, come all. I mean, really? So the fans are going to be a part of it? So Ole Miss revealed Tuesday Joey Chestnut will make an appearance at Vaught Hemingway Stadium for the Rebels Grove Bowl games for a hot dog eating contest. Kevin reach out, blah, blah, blah. Chestnut, blah, blah, blah. Um, the format, blah, blah, blah. Okay. <laughs> it, yeah, it doesn't say. It doesn't say, like, if it's just anyone can try and out eat the world champion like that's dumb all right that's annoying lane kiffin's annoying um hey do, do you have a i know we're gonna get to something meaningful that's what we do but do you have an update on trevandre sweat case i heard samaj burrell's no longer oh yeah so team uh samaj burrell's been suspended indefinitely which means please find another place so that's that's the gentle way of giving him time to find a place to transfer. So he's the one that took off. Yeah. That went Rasheed Rice on him. Oh, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're out at 440 in the morning and you rear end to Vondre Sweat, I mean, he may have been running from sweat. Um but the bottom line is Sweat was still at the scene when the cops showed up and and he's the one who ends up uh, getting arrested and charged with suspicion of DWI. Now, though, again, those cases can be, you know, if he didn't blow and they don't have, you know, th those cases can get uh, reduced down. Um, it's bad, bad timing. It's a bad headline in the month of the draft. So no matter what happens and he had meetings with the Titans, the, on Tuesday, he's meeting with the Rams, I think today. Um, so it was just a bad headline and it, but yeah, Samaje Burrell, mm. um, Deleting him now off my roster, what I got for me. <laughs> I mean, he gone. And Sarkeesian yeah. said, 
in his statement suspended indefinitely for you know behavior detrimental to the team and that's that's the first kind of isn't it the first bad headline that Sarkeesian's had with a player um yeah uh what's my man's name from came from Alabama Hall. oh oh a Jai Hall a Jai Hall wasn't he walling some he, he, he was trying to rip that boot off his car <laughs> That was funny. Oh my god! As the Jai Hall is about one seventy, and you can't rip a boot off your can't do it. Car. Yeah, he was like attacking that boot, and that is that why he got kicked off? No, I mean he was a mess. Okay, sadly, he he had an absolutely overinflated view of how good he was, and how hard he wasn't working like he he's he's that guy who looks in the mirror and sees Ryan Reynolds and he's really George Costanza I mean he's not that bad but he just thinks that he's working hard when he's not working hard mm -hmm. and I mean Texas gave him good NIL situations he has a kid they set him up they, he had a great opportunity. Like even people in his own circle were like, dude, like get it together. This is it. Do you understand? I mean, we can do, let's do a quick search of where is a Jai Hall. Cause. Yeah. And I'm sure Nick Saban vouched for him. I mean. Well, those okay. guys knew him from their time there, Banks and Sark. And, and it was a low risk, high reward gamble. Um, but yeah, I mean, where is he's, uh, yikes. Is he, yikes. Still, in the, is he still in the portal? Oh gosh. He gotta be somewhere. Gotta be, be right. NAIA something. Come on, his, man. His IG just oh no, that's not his IG. Oh. It, yeah, man, it doesn't uh yeah, that's if anyone knows where a Jai Hall is, let us know. <laughs> I should have laughed. That's that's, <laughs> that's cold to me. I should have laughed. He could be having some serious issues right now. But I mean, according to sports reference, his last season was 2022 Texas. Brutal. That so brutal, man. Um, uh oh, I didn't see this. CB says, uh, "Did you see Dane Brugler's assessment of Tavondre Sweat? It was pretty brutal." No, I haven't seen that. Um, Yo, one positive thing that I saw on T Sweat's sheet, it had him weighed in at three twenty two. Now, was that his license? He must not take that picture in a while. I don't know what that's coming from. <laughs> yeah, remember your license is good for eight years. So it's that's probably what he was at 16. <laughs> Yo, I said, what's his weight say? That's that's what I'm thinking. Like I, when I saw that, I was like, ooh, he's gonna have his weight on here. Let's see what it says. That thing said 322. I said, shit, this old. This is dated 322. We wish you that was when man. he was a spry 16 year old. Oh my gosh, man. Big fella. Big fella. Um, take care of yourself, big fella. Yeah, take care of yourself. Take care big of yourself, fella. baby. It was just um, a mistake. I don't, again, a lot of people make mistakes. Oh, yeah, man. The fact that he stayed, you know, Samaje Burrell, you wrong, bro. You, you don't be running. KB run, who knows what they were doing. But the fact that T Sweat stayed, that at least means something. You know. All right, who has Ryan Fox in the Masters pool? Ryan Fox is five under. He eagled, he eagled number eight to go to five under. What a start for Ryan Fox from New Zealand. 
He leads Bryson DeChambeau, the doucher, by uh, by Whoa. one stroke. Why Douche. gotta be a doucher? I gotta be that. He's he's an SMU he guy. He's wearing those tight shirts, but yo, he hits the hell out of that ball. All power. Oh yeah. No, All he power. he just like he thinks he knows everything. All of his clubs are the length of a seven iron and He's yeah. got like all this math and stuff. I mean, look, it's working for him. So, um, yeah. Come on, so. CB. Ain't no way he shit himself. I ain't, <laughs> I ain't believing that. CB, you my guy. You know I love you. Ain't no way. Ain't no way he shit himself. No <laughs> oh, no. Ain't no way. Which, hey, I'd be terrified, too, if that was the case. Sometimes you're scared. Sometimes, who knows? You might have the bubble guts, the beer shits, you know. A lot of things go into it. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, man. Well, let's see how uh, – let's see. You know, everyone's got a different take. Uh, TJ3 says <clears> – <throat> This might have been the wake-up call that Tavondre Sweat needed to get dead serious about his craft. Mm -hmm. And I agree. He can be yeah. special. Yo, and Tyron Matthew. Like, Tyron Matthew, he got kicked off that team at LSU. Right. And for smoking the ganja, but, you know, he kept getting into trouble and into trouble. And then Tyron Matthew changed his whole life around. I'm sure he still smokes the chronic because obviously they're – Yeah, they don't even it. test for it anymore. They don't anymore. even test for it, though, Bo. But still, that's somebody that's been the captain of a team, Super Bowl champion. Yes, you could get your life together and figure things out. Absolutely. That wake yeah. up call, facts. Yeah, this is, this is potentially nothing. Now, it could, you know, cost them some money on draft day, but he can make it up. Yeah. The timing was terrible. That's the only thing I'm. Alan Iverson kicked his baby mama out butt ass naked. Who did? Out the mansion. You remember that? When AI kicked his baby oh, mama yeah. out, she was butt ass naked out of that mansion in Philly. Was, it was, was probably a, 48 was, degrees. Was AI the uh, precursor to uh, that crazy receiver for the Steelers? Antonio Brown? Yeah. <laughs> no, Antonio Brown, he has crazy mixed in with CTE. That's a different type of nuts. Antonio Brown takes it to a whole new level. His Twitter is so unhinged, man. It's kind of sad, actually. Like, he, there's trolling, and then there's what Antonio Brown's doing. Like, he's just on a whole nother level of insanity, and he could care less. Like, well, I knew when... I knew he lost it when he posted that picture of him and Giselle after they won that Super Bowl with Tampa Bay during the whole divorce stuff. That was so petty. Uh, that was so petty. Like, come on. The only reason why you got that ring is because Tom vouched for you. Yeah, and let you live with him. Let you live with him. And, that, and he's playing into that. Like, uh, Antonio Brown, people know that, and he knows that. So he's like, oh, I'm going to make people speculate that me and Giselle had something going on when I was living in the pool house. It's like, bro, come on. Like, how just insensitive are you? <laughs> and, again, that's that CTE mixed in with that crazy. He was already crazy. But, yeah, AI – AI was bad, but yo, when it was game time, when it was time to put on that sleeve, 30 every night. 30 every night. Running around with the pistol in Philly, wilding, strip clubs, blowing money. Baby mama out butt naked, throw her out. AI what's was that? What's out. that what's that commercial that AI has about practice? Is that with Steph Curry? I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure he has a lot of. Commercials. Well, while I'm looking for that, how good is that commercial with uh, T.J. Ford and uh, Kendrick Perkins and Carmelo? That's amazing. It's amazing. I yeah. love that commercial. That. 
TJ <laughs> Ford. Class. That O3 that's... class is the best class, in my opinion. Drug oh, class. Yeah. You know, I, 84 is good, really good with Jordan and Hakeem and Barkley and Stockton. Really freaking good. But that 03 class, Braun, TJ Ford, get your Perkins. You know, Mello, Mello, Bosh. You give horrible advice. Yeah. Where does the suit end and perk begin? Yeah. Yeah. I, then, TJ yeah. Ford's oh. uniforms over the years, iconic. Like that rookie photo, him in the Bucks gear with the shorts coming all the way down to the ankles. Yo, that's one of the greatest photos in basketball history. He's got such a great smile. Yeah. That's not- okay, it's Chase Freedom Unlimited. It's Allen Iverson, Kevin Hart, and Steph Curry. Okay. Chase Freedom Unlimited. You can check it out on YouTube. Yeah, man. Oh, I- yeah. <laughs> I don't know about you. I can't move. Like that, that's inhibiting my uh, my wheels. You know, I don't, it's weird because that was just a thing growing up. It was. Like that's 90s, early 2000s. Yeah, Fab Five. Fab Five. They came in with a little they bit They came in with it in Arkansas. Everybody was going with the super long shorts. Yeah. 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 Now they're yeah. back cranked up. We got some Larry Bird short shorts out there. We got some mid mid shorts. We got some, but yeah. those are capri pants. What TJ's wearing? <laughs> yeah. Oh, we used like, to clown John Stockton's conspiracy theorist ass back in the day. We used to clown him. Now I'm like, yo, this dude Stockton was ahead of the game, or he was still staying true to himself in the early what? 2000s when he was still playing with them. With the nut huggers, nut huggers, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all right, let's uh, let's grab a couple mentions here real quick for uh, our great sponsors. All these sponsors you see around our heads on the YouTube channel, and if you're you're listening on the app, we appreciate our sponsors so much. Um, They've been loyal to us. Please be loyal to them. I mean, when we're talking about Cover 3 and Salt Traders Coastal Cooking and um, Brain Vault, I mean, the the mouth guard that's changing the game developed by Austin's dentist, Dr. Greg Eckert, Dr. U-E-C-K-E-R-T, proven, patented to reduce the effects of concussion. And all you have to do is go to brainvault.com to set up a fitting. And if you're the the team parent or the team manager of your your kids flag football team or cheerleader squad or um, basketball, lacrosse, get them in to a brain vault mouth guard. Brainvault.com um, because you want your competitor to play hard, but you want them to play safe. And of course, when you're ready, for the big screen of your dreams, only one call to make audiovisual consultations. My man Tom McKay, been doing it for 30 plus years, putting the big screen of your dreams into your home, giving you the media room you've always wanted, surround sound, electronic shades, new lighting, surveillance. They do it all. All you got to do is call 255 8678 or go to avconsultations.com. Tell them. Texas Sports Unfiltered sent you. And of course, Apple Leasing, getting you into the car you really want to be driving by leasing you any make or model of car. That's right. They don't care what car you pick. You just tell them and they'll go get it for you. And you're not paying for the future trade-in value of that car while you're driving it. You're just paying for the car while you're driving it. And that's the part that's under warranty, the brand new part. It's a beautiful thing. You've never had a new car experience like this. Um, If you leased from a dealership in the past or you had a bad leasing experience in the past, probably because you leased from a dealership, 
they're not going to let you out of your contract if you decide you want to go to a different make or model of car. Apple leasing will let you out. They have the easy lease. You want to change making a model of car? No problem. Um, everything's easy with Apple leasing. Give them a call today, 346-9977 or visit appleleasing.com. All right, Zay. I'm going to keep it on Texas football here for a minute. First of all, Quinn Ewers, good for you. Nicholas Air, private jet service. The latest endorsement deal for Quinn Ewers. No wonder he came back. Dude, yeah. every time he turns around, he's got a new deal. And, and he makes it look... I don't know. Subtle without it being subtle. Is that a word? Is that a description? Like, no, it's, that's it's, a good point. Like he, I think it's just the way he carries himself. Like yeah. he doesn't have a big head at all. He's a really humbled guy. So when you see him enjoying the fruits of his labor like this with NIL, it kind of, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It takes you back a little bit because you know, it's not going to change him at all. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess I need to go to the Nicholas Air website to see just how affordable this is. Yeah. And first trip, we're taking the wide receivers to Cancun. Whenever, whenever spring practice is over, all the wide receivers and tight ends, we go into Cancun just for about three days or so. It ain't just going to be a vacation, though, Chip. We running routes. We run in route. On the sand. We on the sand running, you know, as a team, getting better. Oh. That bond, you know? oh, I go to the Nicholas, I go to the Nicholas Air website. And uh Nicole Kidman has been a member since 2017. Tom Brokaw, Man. a member since yeah. 2015. Eli oh. Manning. Member since 2017. Okay. Yo, Programs. Nicole jet Kidman, cards. Man. Jet lease. Jet share. We can share a jet, Zay. Maybe that'll uh, cut yeah, down I, our cost some. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the Cole Kidman might be before Quinn Ewer's time a little bit. But right when I saw that she's a partner, I'm signing where am I signing? Yeah. Where's my pen? Nicole Kidman? Come on now. Come on, man. Did you ever see that eyes wide shut? No. Oh, man. Stanley Kubrick movie where she's getting pounded by some dude and Tom Cruise. Oh, man. Like this is when he was married to her and she is naked. Oh, yeah. She don't, she don't huh? care about showing a little skin. Well, they, they both said that movie screwed him up. Like, really? Kubrick, yeah, Kubrick. He he did Clockwork Orange. He's a he's a wild man. And both Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman said filming that movie messed him up. But yeah, Nicole Why? Kidman. Okay, the best movie she was in though. Oh God, where she plays the the murderous. Teacher who's having an affair with her student. Oh my God, that movie's so good. She is so good. Hold on. Sorry. Yeah, come I'm on. Terrible. I'm terrible with names of songs. I'm terrible with names of movies. Um, no, not bombshell. Um, oh Lord. All right, hang in there. Practical magic. No. Her and Sandra? Mm, no, let's see here. Come on, man. Just give me your damn movie catalog. Okay, here we go. Ready? It's a long list. It is a long list. It's coming, though. Her and uh, Big Little Lies. She was good, too. With all those other star actresses. Reese Witherspoon. I want to say Meryl Streep's in it. She was good in that. Nicole Kidman. She was getting okay. abused and stuff. She played that role well. Yeah. 
Okay, there's eyes wide shut. Um, See, Israel knows what I'm talking about. Big little lies. That's my joint right there. I don't know if they can bring him back because you kind of find out what happens. But Zoe Kravis was in there, Lenny Kravis' daughter, which she's a smoke show. She can't act though. She, she's not the best actress. Huh? <laughs> she, she's she's okay. not that name. Okay, the best Nicole Kidman movie ever to die for. To die for. Oh man, you and Jesse. Sit down and watch that. Okay. That is what I'm talking about. I, I'm i going to watch that again. Oh, so good, dude. To die for. There's the chip shot for you. That's the chip shot? <laughs> no. No. All right. So here's what I learned today. From going to, um, going down, talking to Jaden Blue, Gunner Helm, and Jake Majors. We got the offense today. Okay. Jaden Blue, we talked about at the beginning of the show. If you missed that part of the show, you need to make sure you download the podcast, go to the YouTube page, and just listen to all of it because... Jaden Blue is on a mission. Contract year. Contract year. Um, very excited about Jaden Blue. Now, Gunner Helm. I like Gunner Helm. I like Gunner Helm. Gunner Helm. So last year, he went to John Banks, his tight ends coach, and said, what do I got to do? What do I got to do to get more playing time? I do everything you ask me to do. I block. I catch. I do it. And now, now Sark and Banks are going to Gunnar Helm and saying, hey, you've earned the right to be a vocal leader. We need you to be vocal. We need you to, you know, you're a tough guy. You're a hard worker. You've earned the right. So look how everything's changed in a year. It was this time a year ago that Gunnar Helm was like, what do I got to do, man? I do everything. JT Sanders does, but I can't get no run. And Banks said, keep that attitude and you'll be just fine. And he, he was, he got uh, you know, what, 14 catches. All right. You know, it's a start, two touchdowns. Um, and he had good things to say about Juan Davis. They came in together. They're both going to be seniors. And he said, Juan Davis is doing it that he's put on the weight, he's physical, he's blocking, he wants it. And he's battling Amari Nyblack for that down the field, um, you know, catch, catch, uh, pass catching tight end role. And Jordan Washington, Gunnar Helm said, he is going to be a beast. He said he's already got the body for it and he's more than a willing blocker. Okay, pay attention. Players always know. Like, you can tell when they're given a, you know, when Anthony Hill's going on and on about Ty Anthony Smith and he's going on and on about Colin Simmons, that's when you listen because Anthony Hill's going to be a NFL player. Um, said of Martin Iblack's got great hips. Speed and great hips can get in and out of his break smooth. Called him smooth. And said Spencer Shannon's getting a lot more physical. And that, uh, you know, that he's learned a lot because his first year was the five and seven year. And having to endure that and then grind and get to this close to playing for a national championship. He said, I'm as hungry as you can be like that, like that. Um, he said that um, Cam Williams is coming. Cam Williams, he said he's, uh, you know, he's handling it 
And he said, look, our pass rushers are going to test you. Trey Moore and Colin Simmons are going to test you. They're going to, they're going to win. They're going to win some battles. So it's not like you're going to beat them every time. Cause I brought up the fact that, you know, Cam at six, five, three sixty, can he, can he handle the speed guys? And Gunnar Helm's like, those guys are good pass rushers. Like they're going to win some, but yeah, he, he, he thinks Cam Williams is, is ready to go. And then Jake majors, man said he came back cause there's unfinished business. And he said it was a tough decision because watching a bunch of his classmates walk out the door and go to the NFL was was tough. But he's glad he made the decision to come back for a fifth year. And I asked him about the vocal leadership of both quarterbacks because I'm hearing Arch is being really vocal with the with the twos. And and he said, yeah, that Arch. You can tell he knows he's one play away now and he's really vocal. He's vocal with the line about protections and where receivers need to be. And, and that's good. That's big. Cause even Quinn said the jump you make from year one to year two as a quarterback in the Sark system is enormous. And it sounds like Arch is making that, that leap. So um, he feels like uh, Neto uh, Yuma Zulu is, is ready that he gets it. And, and that the running backs are, we talked about this a little bit, developing a relationship off the field with the offensive line. Um, and you know, there's more positive buzz for Trey Weisner as well. And he talked about the interior defensive linemen and Aaron Bryant's name came up again prominent. So it's Alvin Collins, Vernon Broughton, Aaron Bryant. Like, no doubt about it. Aaron Bryant is third. It wasn't Tia Savea, wasn't Jure Bledsoe. So it, Aaron Bryant, that he is the guy playing the nose and that he's like a dog with a bone. He doesn't plan on giving that up to anybody. So good for Aaron Bryant cuz that dude is grinding and doing the right thing showing up with the right weight with the right attitude and and so yeah and the thing is like I ask about Jare Bledsoe everyone always talks about how freaky athletic he is he can do a standing backflip and the splits i want to hear that he's mauling people mm -hmm. i want to hear people that he's hard to contain that he's you know dipping his shoulder and penetrating and being a real problem in terms of his ability to disrupt things and instead I'm still hearing about the backflips and the splits so um hopefully that kicks in and gets better and I said to Jake okay when you look up who are the receivers who are catching the ball downfield the most and he said in this order Demo DeAndre Moore, John Tay, Cook, Isaiah Bond, Matt Golden. Okay. So there you go. There you go. There's the chip shot. Let's get to the right call with my oh, man. Before we get to the right call, we got time. We got time. We got time. We're, okay, we got time. Let's, let's dissect what you just said a little bit. Dissect what you just said a little bit. Um, I mean <laughs> – uh -oh. The whole Arch Manning coming into year two, like Quinn Ewers is, hasn't ever been healthy a full season, knock on wood, Texas fans. You're banking on him, hopefully, to be healthy, but, hey, we just haven't seen that with Quinn Ewers year one or year two. Missed three games his freshman year, two games last year. Yeah, exactly. So Missed a big game last year, Miss K-State. Huge game. Shout out to Malik Murphy. Yeah. Um, so hearing that with Arch is huge. And I think that Arch Manning, if he does get an opportunity, I think he's going to make the most of it. Yes, he's going to have some bad plays, but I think that dude just with the 
pace that he's been on and his mindset and not trying to get in the way just because you have the Manny name. Arch has done things the right way, and he's also put Quinn in an easy position for him to be comfortable and be himself, uh, be himself too. But, yeah, the tight end room should be really underrated. You know, those guys, they could be a big part of this team. And I still think Amari Nyblack is one of the best tight ends in the nation, especially with his versatility. But when you're hearing things on, you know, Juan Davis and how good he's playing and he's finally get getting things together, that's what you want if you're Jeff Banks and you're Steve Sarkeesian. Like, you want that versatility because last year they didn't believe in it enough. Like, again, I always refer to this Oklahoma game because, hey, I have to, but when JT Sanders got injured the week prior, you should have been confident in Juan Davis and Gunnar Helm on producing and playing in that big of a game. They weren't, and uh, it hurt them. It did. Like, JT Sanders was a liability in that game. So you never want to have those situations where you feel obligated to play a player because you don't trust the guys behind him. You never want to be that uncomfortable. So knowing that Juan Davis is coming along, knowing that Amari Nye Black is coming in with big opportunities and Gunnar Helm is trying to have his breakout season and hopefully put up some good tapes so the NFL scouts will start calling him once the season's over, you need those things for from your tight end room. They has to be deep just like the rest of those position groups. So, yeah, I like what I'm hearing with that. Like Gunnar Helm, he is a leader now. He's been here long enough. He's that guy. Like, yes, Amari Nyblack has came in to do some big things, but it doesn't take away from how good Gunnar Helm can be and the opportunities that he had last year, whether it was blocking or catching passes, he did well. Like, now I want to see Gunnar Helm catch some more balls in traffic because it seemed like a lot of his touches, he was wide-ass open, especially those touchdowns. But, yeah, I think he's that type of dude. He likes to mix it up. He's not afraid of contact. And, again, him becoming a leader this year with him being an elder statesman, that's going to be big for this Steve Sarkeesian offense. Yeah. Yeah. And I said to both Gunnar Helm and Jake Majors, how's – you know, you lost a lot of leadership. So are y'all having to really grind hard on the culture with all these new faces? 30 newcomers in the 2024 class, including, you know, 22, I mean, 18 incoming freshmen on campus right now and eight transfers. And both said, no, the, the guys who've been here are making sure that everyone knows the culture. So, and that's a, that I think that, you know, it obviously starts with the coach. And I said the other day, Sarkeesian has an edge. He's like, he's like making sure that culture doesn't change. And he said, we're going to go back to our culture building the Wednesdays in the summer when everybody meets with everybody and, Everybody on the team has a meeting with every other player on the team. And mm-hmm. that stuff matters. Stuff that matters. Yo, Quinn Ewers, we going to Cabo, baby. Right when Nick we got there, I'm off. Quinn Ewers, we've got that new jet. Take all the wide receivers and tight ends to Cabo, especially the ones that you know are going to be around for this season and aren't going to enter their name in the transfer portal because we're all expecting for – some guys to do that. Not everybody's going to be happy with where they are in this on this roster. So, yeah, we go to Cabo. We work it out in the morning. We're chasing the honeys at night, living good, bonding, and then coming back to the 40 acres ready to go. That's what – Quinn, there needs to be thousands of miles on Quinn yours, you know, for yeah. expense. He giving out to everybody. The O line wants to go by themselves. Defense, you know. If I'm John A. Barrett, I'm going. Yo, Quinn, what's up, dog? You know, you the homie. Can I can the secondary borrow the jet for a week? <laughs> We're gonna for get a week? Borrow. For a week, yeah, yeah. Were they flying oh. around the world? No, 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 no. Just you know, borrow it, touchdown, and Bora Bora or something like that, and then have it pick us up a week later. You well, know? I like that. that. That sounds great, don't it? I like that. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, Quinn, yours. What's uh, Snoop Dogg 
Say but, back in 93, it ain't no fun if the homies can't have none. That's what I'm talking about. See? You know? But I would think he'd be willing to do that for an offensive lineman. Like, Jade Barron comes to him and says, hey, Quinn's going to be like, what are you doing for me? You're gonna- what do you mean? You're the quarterback. What do you mean? What am I doing for you? I'm getting you the ball back on three and de- uh, three and outs. That's what I'm doing. Giving you right, well more then, opportunities to light it up and become the Heisman because hold we're out here getting these stops. Yeah, man. What are you Uh-oh. doing for me? Double D does not feel good about the private jet oh, endorsement. Damn. I don't feel good about it. Hope he doesn't take it to the to the games. Oh no, he won't be taking it to the games. Nah. He taking one of them big ass trucks that he has. Oh, this is funny. CB's like, does it include the fuel? Oh shit. Well, I'm sure it does because you're paying, you're renting. That's that Ohio State money. We'll use that, we'll use that Ohio State money for that. We got you know yeah, that's that's in a savings account. That's in a say, yeah, that, that's that's what he got from Columbus. We'll use that's that in, for yeah. fuel. That's in the you gas know? money savings account. Yeah, I'm sure Quinn Ewers budgeting is on point. You know, plus that NFL money gonna be good. We're banking on Quinn to be a top ten pick in 2025. So yeah, yeah, TB, we ain't worried about that. We ain't worried about money. What? Come what? on. And then you got the University of Texas, just the networking. I'm sure somebody has a home down there in Cancun, Beach House, one of the boosters. Somebody do. Bahamas for sure, I know. Baham- yeah, see, see, there you go. Bahamas for sure. Be off to the Bahamas. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. All right, let's get to the right call. All right, let's get let's get it. Before that, though, shout out to Covert BK, the Covert Automotive dealership. They've been doing it for over a hundred years. That is a very long time. The only way to go for over a hundred years only means if you have just a high quality selection of new and pre-owned vehicles. And they do at Covert BK. Go visit Dan and the family. They provide the customer with just Anything you want when it comes to buying a vehicle. You want new? Cool. You want used? Cool. Seven terrific brands to choose from. Buick, GMC, Cadillac, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. You're going to find what you want. You want that nice Jeep because you want to go up into the mountains and the hills and stuff. They got that. Or if you want to roll clean in the Cadillac because you like to go out on the town. They got that too. They got something for everyone. If you have a 16-year-old that just got their license, they need a new car. Go to Covert B Cave, hook them up, make your child's life. And Covert B Cave, they want to make your child's life a very happy one. Go to CovertBCave.com for all the latest specials and inventory. Nobody beats a Covert deal. Not now, not ever. All right, Chip. The NBA playoffs start next week, and we already have one matchup set, and that is the 4 5 matchup in the Western Conference, the Dallas Mavericks. And the Los Angeles Clippers. I can't wait for this matchup. This is game seven written all over it. And this is a rivalry. Ever since Luka's gotten into the league, the Clippers have bounced them out twice. Kawhi, Paul George, just both of those guys being top-notch defenders. They really got to a young Luka. And they beat them in the bubble. And they beat them a year after that. So now... This team, version of Dallas, Luka, is extremely better than he was those first two years, even though he was still first-team All-NBA those first two years in the playoffs that he had, which is remarkable. He's about to have five straight first-team All-NBA appearances. But, yeah, that Luka Mavericks team, that's not the same one that the Clippers are used to. And Kyrie Irving, I'll be one of the first to say I was wrong about Kyrie Irving. He has been – Great A citizen. He has been terrific. He hasn't been a problem. He hasn't been a distraction. You haven't had to worry about him off the court. Like he seems very comfortable in Dallas, and they've given him. You he know, seems like when he was in Cleveland. With yeah, yeah, exactly. He, he seems at peace with where he is. I always see his kids, you know, backstage with him and stuff, and at practice and stuff. So we could tell that him being more of a family man, like Kyrie, he's maturing. 
He really is. He's always been a smart guy, sometimes a little bit too smart for his own being, but he's always been out there too. And now he's dumbed that down a little bit. He's realized he's lost a lot of money with all the antics and things that he's been a part of. So when he just focuses on ball, he's one of the greatest of all time. Like he might be one of the most skilled players to ever touch a basketball. Like, that's a fact. The thing that he does offensively are things that I've never seen before, especially at that level in the NBA. So him in this playoffs with the Clippers possibly not having Kawhi Leonard at 100%, he's missed the last six or seven games with inflammation in his knee, and he's always had knee problems. You know, going back to those days of San Antonio and Zaza Pachulia doing that dirty shit and stepping under his foot when he was on his way up for a jump shot and tearing his ACL and all these things. So that always worries you if you're a Clippers fan with Kawhi Leonard. But Paul George, he's been really good this year. Russell Westbrook has been good as of late. Saw him drop a triple-double against the Suns the other day. This should be a hell of a series. Well, it and might you come down to coaching. The trade that the Mavs made before the deadline brought in defense. Yeah. Yeah. Which, which makes me think, I'm going to take the Mavs. Yo, I, I want to knock it. I mean, Daniel Gafford, PJ Washington, those guys coming in on a trade midseason, those were big time moves. Big time moves. And offensively, you got Gafford in a pick-and-roll game with Luka, that's money. You got Washington in a pick-and-pop game with Luka, that's money. So they're so tough to guard. And in the playoffs, the game changes. You know, you need really good half-court scoring, and that's where Kyrie Irving comes in. Like Kyrie Irving, he's that dude that he'll be able to break his man down in a half-court setting and get off a good shot to where you don't need things like the fast break for your advantage. Like that's why Russell Westbrook has struggled in the playoffs in the past, just because when the game slows down, Russell can't really showcase what he does really well, and that's pushing the ball and, you know, being the head of the snake on fast breaks. So it's going to be a good series if Kawhi is healthy I will say Clippers in seven, but I don't think he is. So I'm going to favor the Mavs. I am. Like Paul George has to be great. You know, like James Harden, James Harden's good, but James Harden at this point of his career, he's better as a more of a point guard than he is scoring guard. Like when was the last time Paul George was great in the playoffs? Oh, gosh. He was probably yeah. his Indiana days yeah. when he was taking was LeBron to game sevens and stuff. Um, he had a good – they went to the Western Conference Finals a couple of years ago. Um, I want to say without Kawhi, the, when the Suns went, 2021. He was really good in 2021. But also sometimes him being the man, he could struggle. You know, being the number one guy, he's a really, really great number two. When he's the number one guy, he's he's good, but he's a better number two. And him being able to showcase that if Kawhi's healthy, that's going to really be beneficial for the Clippers. But James Harden, that dude, he's going to have to be good, too. And we know playoffs have been a kryptonite for him at, at times, but no one's stopping Luka. Nobody. Nobody. I don't understand how cold he is. It doesn't make any sense. He's playing with so much confidence. That's all he has. And he's an asshole. Like, he he has that Jordan assholeness about That's why he signed with Jordan. Like, he's a Jordan brand athlete. And Jordan was probably like, yo, we need to get this guy because he's like a European version of me in a way with how competitive he is. And, you know, they've kind of had to teach him, like, yo, dude, you're you're a leader, so some things you which I think Dirk's a big part of this too. Like him and Dirk are really close, but Dirk's I, and certain guys have had to tell him like, bro, you can't be just cussing out teammates and bitching and doing all this stuff. Like, we get it, you're at an elite level, but you still got to be a good teammate. Like, right. everybody's been pros since they were 15 years old, you know. And I think you have to help make them better. 
Yeah, not he's done a good job this year. He, he's done last year. He was horrible when they didn't make the playoffs. When they just got Kyrie a little bit too late and the season was still over with, he was awful. Like he does not do well with losing, which you shouldn't. You're a competitor, but you still have to be a professional. And I think he's done a way better job at that. And yeah, he's having a lot more fun. And I think a big part of that is Kyrie. Like Kyrie's taking so much stress off of him because he knows that sometimes he could go down the court and just give it to Kyrie and he could just go stand in the corner somewhere and tug on his shorts to regain his energy. And Kyrie could completely run the offense because he's a Hall of Famer, you know? So I, I, I think – the Mavs, which there's a couple of games left there. I want to say one game a part of one another with the Clippers at that four spot and the Mavs at the five. I don't know how serious both teams are going to take these next two last regular season games. I would sit my players if I'm Jason Kidd, like Kyrie and Luca. There's no need to play them. Like, do home court advantage isn't that important in the NBA. It's important, but – not that important. You know, you could go in to Los Angeles and in game seven and be confident if you're the Mavs. So, yeah, I it's going to be fun. The playoffs, you know, with the college basketball just ending, the NBA playoffs starting next week, should be really entertaining. That's when they oh, get man. good. Yeah, I mean, the freaking Mavericks. I didn't see it coming. I hated the trade. I Did hated you really? The trade for Kyrie. Oh, yeah, yeah. I couldn't understand it now. Okay. Yeah. I I'm 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 watching. Well, I'm, he's he's nuts in good ways too. Like he is one of those Kobe like I'll just make any type of motivation tactic up and this one's actually valid. Everybody is now saying, me included, that Jalen Brunson was the better fit than him. And I know that pisses him off, especially with the way Jalen Brunson has been dominating the NBA this season with the New York Knicks. Like Kyrie, Kyrie in the last decade has been put on a pedestal where, like, dude, you, again, you might be the most skilled point guard in NBA history. Like, you got your ring. And some of the things that you did, kind of ruining your stint with Braun in Cleveland, that made no sense. And then ruining what you had in Boston, that made no sense. And then ruining what you had in Brooklyn, all those things made no sense. And people took away that and stopped looking at him as just a basketball player. When right. it comes to like, just you know people, Kevin Durant is looking at – Kyrie and going, where was oh. this? Where was this Kyrie? I had to get pandemic Kyrie. Yo, they played, Mavs played the Suns a few months ago or a few weeks ago or something. They beat the crap out of the Suns. How are you feeling about the Suns? Not good. Not good. That was my team to win it all when we were talking about the beginning of the year. Not good at all. I think Devin Booker is exhausted from having to play point guard during the whole season. I don't think he realized how much went into that. And they've always been just in and out of, you know, ER and stuff, IR, whatever. KD's been hurt at times or not playing. Devin Booker's been hurt at times and not playing. Bradley Beal's been hurt at times and not playing. So the big three, they haven't played as many games as you would like. Well, and Beal's been the one that's been out. Yeah. Yeah. So I I thought Devin Booker playing point, I thought it would work, but he looks tired. Like, they played the Clippers and got blown out. Well, they were down by like 40 at one point. They ended up making it a team game. But he looked so tired and just kind of like, damn, this point – being a point guard is different than just scoring. Like, your responsibilities, they change. And if you're not prepared for that or not used to it, then, yeah, it could affect you. And I think that's what he's going through right now. So, Well, guess what, Zay? What up? The doucher just went to seven under on 17. He's still got a hole to play. And Tiger Woods just teed off. He's on the middle of the fairway on hole number one. 
So on that note, we will sign off here on a Thursday. Um, we appreciate everybody for listening. And again, if you're watching us on the YouTube channel, please check out these sponsors uh, located around our faces and use them because they are the reason we are on the air talking to you where football season never ends and where you're going to get some Perse Hilton every single day and hopefully a couple chuckles. You know what I'm saying? So we appreciate y'all. We'll do it again tomorrow. Tune in bright and early, 8 a.m. Texas Sports Unfiltered. Everybody take it easy. Y'all be cool.